girl. Thanks. I want to do this again. We'll spend the night together. Yep. You're not had enough of me. No. Don't go into work today, Kev. Let's have the day to ourselves. Well, forget to open up just like that. Well, you're the boss. You can do what you like. Okay. Some other time, eh? What do you want? A day in the garage with Chris? Or a day here with me? Oh, I've got to go in. We'll take the afternoon off. Natalie. You can say you're going to see Sally. Well, and I come back here. We could go to a hotel. Oh, yeah. You, me and Rosie would have a great time. Well, ask your dad to look after her. Give him a chance to dote. He dotes anyway. Let's do it, Kevin. Please. I want to. Oh, oh at about time, too. Oh, that was the best sleep I've had in ages. Well, but in that hotel that cost me an arm and a leg. Oh, why you got there's no place like home? <laughs> I remember that the next time you want to go on a Caribbean cruise. Oh, no, I enjoyed the rest. I really did. It did me go. And you know what? Mm. You look absolutely fantastic. Liar! I'm even done my hair. Well, leave doing your hair <laughs> until you've unpacked that suitcase and done the dirty washing. <laughs> oh, and uh, don't forget to polish my shoes before you put them away, will you? Yes, old master. And then you can take yourself down to the supermarket. Not well, he won't want me in today. Who won't? Curly. I told him when I was due back and he said I could start tomorrow. Well, on the checkout? No, oh, in the manager's office is wherever he wants me. <laughs> yeah, but when I said go to the supermarket, I meant buy some food. Yeah, well, I'll bring it back with me. We, we can eat out tonight. Alma. What? I wasn't going to tell you this, but uh, before we went away, mm -hmm. I saw Curly and I told him you didn't want that job. You told him what? So there's no need to go there because he's not expecting you. See you later, then. You got your lunch? Why, well, have you made us some? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Thank you. Gary, have you thought any more about those fertility tests? I made a bit of a rush, love. I know, but... Frank will be waiting for us. Only, I could phone the doctor if you want, if you decide. Look, I've got to go. Well, shall I make an appointment? Not now, eh? I'll see you tonight. OK. No rush. I won't be late. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. He might say no. He won't. Well, let's enjoy ourselves, Kevin. Do something we've not done before. And what do I do with Sally phones? Well, tell her not to. Say you I don't know, say you're going out with the lads. What lads? The likely lads, the bonny lads, any lads you like. Well, she might still fit. In fact, she will phone if she wants to talk to Rosie. I know a hotel. It's just far enough away. No one will know us and you will love it. I can't go. You can if you want to. But the telephone? Yeah. Is that the only thing that's stopping you? Yeah. And you're trying to tell me that you can't think of a way around that. Um, uh, you're, uh, you're not thinking of saying anything, are you? Dad, I can barely speak. Well, I don't mind sitting in the back with your mum, you know, if that's a problem, I'll sit, I'll sit in the back but with her, Dad, yeah? it's all right, it's OK. As soon as my head stops thumping, I shall be my normal, charming self, all right? Aye, uh, I'll bet. Ah, well, I suppose not every day you get to finish your exams, university and all that, you know? Yeah. Honest to God, look at the cut of you. What is Stephen going to think of you? Well, whatever he thinks, he's not going to go running back his side, is he? Well, if you like, uh well, your mum and I, we can, we can go and get him, you know. Dad, don't mind going. I'm going to pick him up. I know this might not be the last time in his life when he comes out the slammer, but for now, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, all right? Right. See if you can give your mother the benefit of the doubt as well, yeah, OK? Yeah, just let her in, eh? Yeah, right. You remember what I said, now. Hi, come in. Hiya. Uh, come on through, uh, Andrew's in there. Right. Are they ready? Hi. Hello. It's been quite a while. Yeah. I, uh, I should have come sooner. And now you're here, you're early. Well, you know. Yeah, can't keep Steve waiting. Hey, yeah. Andrew, please. I wanted to talk to you first. It's not right we turn up at the prison gates like this. Isn't it? 
Steve's not going to be taken in by another happy family's routine anyway, is he, Mum? We're not a happy family, I know that. But I don't want to be cut off from you, Andy. I'm still your mum. So you are. Andrew, will you listen? It's all right. Leave him. Your mother is trying to apologise to you, OK? I don't want this to be just Steve's day. It's something for us all. I know. So can we be friends? If you like. I mean it. Come on. And today is some sort of family celebration. But I'm doing it for Steve. I'm not throwing my arms around you. No, not yet. But maybe in time, eh? Maybe. I do love you. I know. Look, I'll get me coat. Well, lots of men, you know, very sensitive about their virility. It's not to do with virility. It's just to do with how much sperm have you got. Mm. The wreck it's tight trousers and central heating, you know, it shrivels everything up. Get him to sit in a cold bath for half an hour, love. I know you're trying to cheer me up better. Oh, I'm not doing a very good job, am I? If he'd just come to dots and have the test, then at least we'd know. Well, it definitely said he won't. No, not definitely. But don't nag him into anything, lovey. He'll only resent it, whatever the outcome. But it's him who goes on about having children, not me. Just give him time to mull it over. How much time does he want? Uh, hang on, I just need a word with Jim. Hey, Willie. <laughs> uh, look, uh, I just want to say good luck, all I can say. Thanks, Bill. I know it means a lot having him home, like. Well, it means the family's back together. Well, for a bit, anyway, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what families are for. You'll be pleasing all, Andy, eh? That's what brothers are for, isn't it? Something to scrap with. So they say. I think we've had quite enough fighting in this family. It's one of the best days of my life, this Willie. Well, I hope it gets a good start. Bit of good luck. Goodwill, eh? Well, he's had a good start. And he's had buckets of goodwill off you, Willie, all right? So don't you worry about your head about him. It'll be all right. Look, if you two don't hurry up, I'm going yeah, on my own. all right. Why don't you uh, go and get in the front now, Mum? Me? Are you sure? Yeah, of course I am. Thanks, Bill. All the best. Cheers, mate. Yeah, thanks. Have an easy ride with that fella. An easy ride is not what it's all about. Yeah, no. Hey, look, I'm sorry I had to go with you the other night. Oh, I'm not bothered about that. It's just, I'm worried about Sal, you know. No reason to bite your head off. Why? What's the matter with it? Well, nothing. It's just of being away all this time, you know. Yeah. Well, we're not, you know, she's there, I'm here, and when we do see each other, all we talk about is the kids. Yeah, but it ain't got to be for much longer, is it? She'll be home soon. I don't want to go and see her. Booking at some cheap bed and breakfast, you know, just the two of us sort things out. Why don't you go at the weekend? I know I should have done. I want to go tonight. Oh, I see. And you want somebody to look after us, yeah? Yeah. Will you? Yeah, of course I will, no problem. Don't want to see you and Sally in the mess, eh? Why don't you shoot off now? Get the best part of the day with her then, eh? No, I've got one or two things I want to sort out first. Right. Leave Rosa with me, we'll have a great time. All right, hey, I'll pick it up and I'll see you later. Yeah. Cheers, Dad. And uh, did you say anything else that I ought to know about? Like what? <laughs> I don't know, just you tell me. I thought after a couple of weeks in Cyprus you'd come back, you'd have forgotten all about firm and freezers and that crummy checkout job. Well, I haven't. <laughs> You're making a fuss over nothing. I was trying to protect you. Oh, yeah, and uh, where were you when I needed protecting, eh? Oh, well, I mean, I can't be everywhere, can I? Look, if you expect me to sit in this flat for months on end and go over all the... That is the last thing. thing that I want. Well, then let me get on with my life. I'm not stupid, you know. I know how I feel. I know if I'm back to normal or not. If you were, you wouldn't take a job in a duff firm like that. I just need something easy that'll occupy my mind. I mean, I know that Curly Watts isn't all that high up in the retail world, but right now he's got the job for me. <laughs> You'll be bored stiff. Mike, I need something to do. I mean, 
I don't care if, in your opinion, it's tedious and lonely, and I don't care if it's rotten bay. I just do not want to sit in this room and look out of that window at that canal. Alma, I understand. No, you don't. You haven't got a clue. Hey, hey, you mustn't leave upset. We must talk this over quietly. Well, you already have talked it over quietly, haven't you? Unfortunately, not with me. Well, it's nice to see you've all made it. Well, we're your family. You can't get shot of us that easy. No, you can't. You go back in there, mate, and we're all coming with you. Hey, nothing's going to get me back in there. Nothing, mate, I tell you. Right, well, let's get you home, eh? Home for good. House. I tried your shop. Should have tried here in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Alma, you're back. Yes, I am, Curly. And look, I don't want you to feel embarrassed. Uh, how do you mean? Well, I know that Mike spoke to you and said that I was, uh, you know, having a breakdown, couldn't cope. No, he, he didn't say anything like well, well, that. Well, it doesn't matter whether he did or he didn't. I do want the job. I mean, I could start tomorrow. Now, if you like, I, mean, I could go straight there. Well, I'm sorry, Almy. No, no, it's uh, not your fault. He was just, you know, trying to be helpful. No, no, what I mean is, you see, um, I've already taken someone else on. There we are. Oh, thank you. Don't you think this holiday's done the other world a good? I don't remember when she looked so well. <laughs> Curly, you said the job was mine. Yeah, but you see, the thing was, I, I was a till no, down it was and... my job. I came back from holiday last night. I'm sorry, I can't just go and sack her. Yes, but you sack me. I don't need another checkout girl. Yes, but you took me on. No, what I said was you could have a job. Well, what's the difference? Well, now there isn't a job. Well, there was till you, till you talked to Mike. I don't need any more checkout staff. Well, what about a holiday cover? It's organised. All right, all right. Listen, I've finished my lunch hour now. Why don't you come back with me now and I'll, I'll check through the list and maybe, maybe I can find you something, all right? Go, go, go. Hey, Stephen, get a move on, will you? Well, Stephen, he wants to have a look at the street. Oh, he was here a few it? weeks ago. It's not the... changed that much. Yes. Well, it looks good to me. Yes, I'm sure it does, Stephen. Now, come on, get a move Give on. Give up, but he's had enough for doing us this tour. Oh, yeah, you're not Your door's open, Kev. It's all right, I'm in here. Hey, you all set? Yeah. Hey, look, I've got a problem. The uh, phone's not working. I've rung them up on my mobile, but the engineer can't fix it till tomorrow. Ah, oh, that's OK. I've got my own mobile if I want to talk to anybody. Look, um, have you left me the uh, number of your bed and breakfast? Uh, no, we don't know where we're staying yet. Huh. Anyway, you've got my mobile number if she starts playing you up. Yeah, she'll be fine, Kev, she always is. Yeah, I'll pick her up. Look, I can pick her up, you know, no trouble. She likes me too. Oh, yeah, better take these as well, Anna. Hey, do us a favour, eh, Dad? Don't say anything to Rosie, will you? I'll tell her it's business, I've got to go to the car auctions or something. I just don't want to pester the Sally till we've sorted things out. No, I won't say a word, trust me. Yeah. Cheers, thanks. Hey, Kevin, do your best. You've got a good last there in Sally. Yeah, I know. Your Judy's not so good, is she? That's you're OK this morning. We were down in the dumps when she was in here. She'll be all right. Go home and give her a cuddle. She can do with that. You told him that I was mentally unstable. I didn't. Yes, you did. I wormed it out of him. Keep your voice down. No, I want, I want them to know what sort of husband you are. I'm the sort that doesn't want you sitting on the checkout all day for Curly Watts. I 
well, then your wish is granted, because I won't be on the checkout. I'll be stacking shelves instead. Stacking shelves? Yes, well, that's all there was left. Oh, give me strength. Oh, yeah, well, give me a double and you can pay. I'll have to, won't I? You can't afford it on your wages. Large scotch, please, Betty, and a large gin and tonic. OK. Is this not him? Ken Barlow. Evening, ladies. Oh, hi, Ken. Was I short with him this afternoon? No. Ken, have you seen anything of Fred Elliott on your travels? No, sorry. Why do you keep going on about Fred Elliott? I was so keen on my Eccles cake, I didn't give him the acknowledgement that he deserved. Well, I'm sure he's not bothered. Well, why are you so keen to know who's entering and leaving this pub? I'm not. You are. You've been on casters ever since we got here. Look, after a long day in the shop, Mother, I'd just like someone other than you to talk to. That's all. So would I. That's all. Don't ask what the smell is, cos it's your dinner. I thought you'd be home early. You usually do when... Then I go off in a huff. You weren't really in a huff. I'm worried. Will you still love us if there's not a couple of miniatures knocking about? Little miniatures are you. Did you have somebody else in mind? No, not from round here, anywhere. It won't come between us, will it, if we can't have kids? No. Of course it won't. Go on, then. Phone that doctor and make that appointment. Friday, 10 o'clock, OK. Well, if it's not, will you take somebody else? No. I'm not interested in anyone else. So, shall we pop upstairs and have another run at it, then? Might as well. There's no to eat. You burnt that tea on purpose, didn't you? No. Yes, you did. No, I yes, didn't, did. Gary, honestly! Yes, get him! Get him! Get him! Seems like a nice place. You look nervous. Yeah, well, I haven't done anything like this before, have I? Well, you will again. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to try and do my best to persuade you. Yeah, well, the way I feel at the moment, you're going to have no trouble. <laughs> well, all you have to do here is relax. There's nobody knows we're here and there's nobody will. Uh, just hope I say the right thing. Don't worry about it. Come on. Hi. Hi. We've uh, got a room book for... Mr and Mrs Kevin Webster. Okay. I'd like to propose a toast to freedom and new beginnings. Freedom, freedom and, and new, new beginnings. beginnings. And to the family. You've all stuck by me and I don't deserve it. Of course you do. Mm. We quite enjoy visiting that place anyway, mate. <sighs> Hey, I tell you what, I'm going back there again. Not if I can help it. No, you certainly will not. You've had your last day in there. Take it from me. Yeah, it's going to do his best from now on. Aye, indeed, and I'm going to help him, which is why I'd like to propose another toast. To... Another toast? Oh, absolutely, to MacDonald and Son. Which son? Him. You find your own work. MacDonald and Son. Cheers. Yeah. Work? What are you talking about? Well, I suppose, actually, it should be MacDonald and Webster, but I've spoken to Willie and he agrees with me. You start work with us on Friday, see, do you? Start what? Well, just with the farm. I mean, you can start doing whatever you want, like you can be a labourer or whatever. Whatever takes your fancy. Hold on a minute. What, you want me to work with you? Yes, of course we do. Look, I'm too... we're dead busy, you know. Oh, I thrive in small business. Willie and I both agree an extra pair of hands. Well, I've been more than welcome, so what do you say? Hey? Hey? Whoa. You don't think you should have given the receptionist a false address, do you? What? You've got nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, are you sure about that? I don't know. I'll tell you in the morning. What do we do if we bump into someone we know? Well, we won't. I never have before. Look, if you're really worried, we don't have to go down to the restaurant. Room service is very good here. There's something I'd like to do before we go in here. <laughs> yes, right. and so would I, but we've got plenty of time for that. So, have you been here a lot? Occasionally. There's a good golf course. A golf course? Yeah. It's only about a quarter of a mile away. I'll take you if you like. Hey, never had you down as a uh, golfer? I'm not. Paul was. Who's Paul? My boyfriend. We had an affair for about 12 years. Split up just before Nick dumped me. I think it's marvellous. Yeah, so do I. Well, I, I don't. Why not? I mean, what's the matter with it? Nothing. Except it's you bailing me out again, isn't no, it? No, 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 I'm not bailing you out at all. I mean, you're going to have to work hard for your money. Yeah, well, it's still charity. No, it's not charity, Steve. 
it is. I can stand on my own two feet. Well, I think you might find that a bit hard, mate. Well, what do you know about it? Nothing. I'll keep my mouth shut. Hey, listen. You're not going to be working with your dad forever, you know. Eventually, you're bound to move on. Yeah, I know, but I want to move on now. Well, of course, if you can find something better to do. Yeah, but at my age, I should be able to, Dad. Mm-hmm. Well, your record. It's bound to work against you. You're not just going to walk into some executive position, you know. I bet even Andy won't, with all his qualifications. Oh, we'll give Andy the job, then. <sighs> Stephen, listen. Look, Can Dad, we... I'm sorry. I appreciate it, I really do. But I just don't want to be dependent on you. I've got friends, I've got contacts, I'll be fine. Yeah. Well, you could at least think about it. I did think about it. When I was in there, there was nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. Could be a new start, though. That's the difference. Yeah, but it's not the start I need. I know what I want, and I'm gonna get it. But I'm gonna get it in my own way. What difference does it make? You've been here with somebody else. It was before I met you! You was with him for 12 years! On and off! So, have you only just split up? No, it was months ago. Anyway, what does it matter? Why does it bother you so much? Because I thought this was special. It is. And that's why I'm telling you the truth. Would you rather I kept it a secret from you? I don't want to hide things. It's no use unless we're straight with each other. So did he finish with you? It doesn't matter what he did. It's over. It's run its course. And will I? Kevin, I don't want him anymore. I want you. Yeah, well, you can't have me. Take the money and pay the bill. Oh, don't go! Look, you carried done all that time behind your husband's back. How can you do a thing like that? It's quite easy once you get the hang of it. Have you not found that out for yourself? Did Tony know? Does Rosie? Oh, God, let me out of here. So it wouldn't have mattered then, would it, if I'd taken you to a different place? Look, I've never done this with anyone else. I thought you was the same. Well, that's your mistake then, Kevin. Yeah, you're right. It's my mistake. And one I'll never make again. This is Coronation Street. I told you, you're not going to Furman. Yes, I am. I don't want to be late on my first day. Um, well, why are you doing this to me? Look, you get out. I'll take the car. I need the car. I'm going to bake up. Well, suit yourself. Where are you going? Curly! Uh, can you give me a lift in? I, I won't make a habit of it, I promise you. Right, yep, get in. I'll seat Doc to see if he can swing it. You're paying pound notes, he'll fall over backwards for you. It'll cost a bomb, but we've got to know, Gary. I mean, Tess might find there's something wrong with the both of us. Oh, neither of us. Get it done, Sherry. I'll have to go to the van's picking up at the end of the road. I'll see you later. Hiya! Hiya. You lost your ball! <laughs> I tell you, I might lose my bottle if I stand there long enough. What do you think? The flat. For you? Too close to the enemy? Oh, Ken's the least of my worries. Depends what Sean Skinner's asking. Well, I'm sure he offers a discount for unattached females. Have you seen it yet? No, Sean's going to show me round when he turns up. Hey, uh, I don't suppose you'd fancy... I would love to look round with you, but I can't. Jim's had to fall out with Steve. Oh, it didn't take them long, did it? No, well, it's nothing drastic, I hope. Hey, I'll tell you what, give us a knock when you're going back. Will do. All right, I'll see you later. See you, love. Hey, what are you two doing here? Oh, we're reporting for work. No chance. If you two are after a job, then... We've got jobs, thanks, in here. Did you not know, Mr Baldwin? Your partner took us on. 
Ms. Freeman. Come on, Janice, and make us late. <laughs> and by the way, what do you want me to tell Willie? What do I say to him? You're not interested in making a future for yourself, is that it? Well, tell him the truth. Oh, Steve, do you truth. mind or what? What Shall exactly I... is the truth? I'll tell you. You think the job isn't good enough for you. That's what the truth is. He's a bit swift, isn't he? Not been out in the next five minutes and his family ain't done already. I'm just trying to talk some sense into the boy, that's all. Hi, you two. Hi, Hi. Mum. Steve, your dad's right. This is the best offer you're going to get. Look, we did discuss this inside. When you were in the big house, we discussed it. I wish you'd told me then you weren't interested. Yeah, well, would you have listened, Dad? Yes, I would have listened, actually. Jim, because no, we're... no. Why don't you ask him again in a week, eh? Let him get the system out of his system. Oh, brilliant. We're on psychology now, are we? Is that it? Just give it a rest, eh? Go on, what were you going to say? Well, I mean, look at him. When was the last time you saw him polish a pair of shoes? And what time was he up this morning? Six o'clock, was it? To slap out? Well, that's my contribution anyway. You can take it or leave it. Makes sense, Jim. Yeah, I've just come from the garage. Kev's not there. No, he's not back yet, love. I thought he might have come back last night, that's all. Oh, from Scarborough? Why? Oh, no reason. <laughs> Who can blame him? I mean, he sees little enough for Sally as it is, eh? Hey, up. Oh, hi. I was, um, just checking your whereabouts. You've checked? I'm here. Anyway, look, uh, I'm off. Rosie, get your stuff, love. I'll drop off at school, yeah? Yeah, cheers, thanks, Dad. Cheers. So, where did you sleep? You look a right mess. In the car. Just been back for you, but you checked out. Yeah. Took a taxi home. Well, I'll pay for that. Oh, don't bother. I'll put it down to experience. Oh, what were you saying to me, Dad? Nothing. Well, I didn't want Daddy panicking as well, did I? It's a big responsibility, you know, Kevin. Taking a little boy away for the night and losing him, eh? So, how did you go on with Steve? Well, sort of settled. Hey, what did you think to Sean's flat? I was impressed. Oh, don't tell him that. I'll put the rent up. Oh, not likely. I've told him I'll let him know. Oh, uh, did I tell you? I've heard from John. You know you didn't. <laughs> Oh, not the back. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, never mind that. John, I'm meeting him at your hotel tonight. There we are, my son. You keep the change. Did you have a good trip, Jack? Oh, oh do you know it was brilliant, Did hey. you want to say, Jack? Did we? Trip of a lifetime. I'm thinking of writing to Sunland as a congratulator. Uh, no, don't, Jack. I'm just glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's really good to see you back. Right, come on, you. Chapter and verse. Oh. <laughs> it's a nice ticket travelling. Oh. But it's awful to come over here, isn't it? Well, no. Come, come on. on. I know you're both members of the Weatherfield Association of Retail Traders, but have you ever thought of taking a more active role? Well, we pay our dues, Fred. We've got all the literature. Anyway, we've got a shop to run. Mm. All work and no play, Maud. No, the truth is, I were talking to the on sec of warts only yesterday and he's as worried as I am that we're losing the social side. Well, we entered the Christmas raffle, didn't we, Mother? Aye. And didn't win. <laughs> oh, there's a lot more on offer than that. I mean, there's the... there's the... Warts Midsummer Ball to start. Grand who is that? I say, Grand who is that? Gives us all a chance to get together and... Handle the produce. <laughs> uh, just a bag of sugar, Maud. Thank you. Well, if it isn't the retired Mr Gilroy, surprise you're not wearing your carpet slippers, Alec. Oh, I'm having them sold and healed for 70p, please. Oh, thank Were you. Were you ever a member of Warts, Alec? Oh, no, love, ab to me. Oh. You know, being a travel agent, much bigger organisation. Large and unwieldy. Ah, talking about yourself again, Fred. <laughs> I'll be seeing you, Maud. <laughs> a sad figure, is that? No joy in his heart. Now, as I was saying... Dancing's out for our Maureen, anyway. She tried it with Bill Webster and it didn't work. Mother, Fred isn't here issuing invitations. He's merely exploring possibilities. Abilities, yes, exactly. Um, no, it would be a tragedy if we lost the social side, you know. Perhaps I'll see you later. Bye, then, Fred. Exploring possibilities, my foot. 
exploring you. That's what he's exploring. Don't be daft, Mother. Fair enough. Even you wouldn't be that desperate. And that one's Satan and me and Jack outside the Mirage. Oh, do you know the shows there, Audrey, that knock your eye out? There were two fellas there, you know, made an elephant disappear. What? Just vanish like? Yeah, now you see me, now you don't. I wouldn't have a word with them, actually, you know. See if I could do the same to our Jack. <laughs> Soon got to know me at the tables. I think it was the eyes that could go away. <laughs> the bloodshot, brother Jekyll. No, like 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 lasers. Could see right through the deck. Hey, we could do with a fella like you working with us. A man that can see through floorboards, eh? No, oh, no, no, no. Love the cards. You see, it's a matter of concentration of knowing what comes next out of the shoe. Whose shoe would that be, Jekyll? The dealer. Well, I've heard about cards up sleeves, Jack, but cards in shoes. <laughs> You'll be telling us you won next. I did. 400 quid. <laughs> well, we know what they thought about Vegas. The thing they didn't say is what Vegas thought about them. Oh, well, I'm glad they're back, Betty. Running a pub is murder. Oh, no, you were very good, love. Look, don't quote me. Them pair could have stopped in America for all I care. <laughs> did he show the photograph of me and Dolly Parton? Oh. Well, you only thought it were Dolly Parton. It looked more like Wendy Butterworth to me. Imagine I've not brought my glasses. You know, who works at the chemist in Rosamond Street? <laughs> Audrey, you'll never guess what they used to call me in casino. What? Nick the Brit. Nick? Short for nicotine. Oh. They kept asking him to put his fag out. Yeah. Right, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm right. Hey, come on, Jack. Right. Now, it won't take long, cos I've got it all written down. All right. Better do. Yeah. Just going to do the official handover. Right. See Gary Cooper's back in town? Yeah, worse luck. You'd think he broke the bank the way he's going on. Irish, is it? Uh, yes, fools and their money better, you know. No, no. He reckons he's won 400 quid at the tables. <laughs> Jim. Right. Now, last Thursday, the drayman left two great stout short. Yeah, anyway. this is a good one, isn't it? Me and our Jack with a stretch limo. Can we leave that, please, Vera? I'm trying to give a report here. <laughs> oh, all right, I'm listening. Anyway, I chased after them, Jack, and got them to drop off the other two. Good girl, I. Eh? <laughs> Do you know you've been ever so efficient, love? I'm really proud of you. Ah. And then on Monday the 26th, I had all that business with the envelope. But you said you knew about it, Jack. What envelope? The one for Alec Gilroy. You know, the one with the money in it. Money? Yeah, some query about the raffle. What query? From what I could gather, it seems Mrs Bishop hadn't been given enough money. Do you know, I knew it'd stink from this end. That Alec Gilroy's a rat, Jack. And you wanted to bring him a present back? Luke, 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 I'll sort it out with Alec. It'll be something and nothing, Samantha. Is that all, my love? No, no. Last week, the uh, VAT people rang as well, wanting to make an appointment. VAT people? Yeah. So I said tomorrow will be OK. Well, you're back, aren't you? Anyway, that's it. So I'd better go and help Betty. Tomorrow? She'd no rights making an appointment that quick. Like you said, Vera, dead efficient. <laughs> Jack, the FBI interrupting your little sojourn to the sun with a pair of handcuffs? Yeah, it wouldn't have gone that far. Well, it didn't, thanks to me. I had to hide that envelope in your back room and then just pretend I've found it. Why? You and Vera had to be protected. Thanks, Alec. Thanks, Alec. It's about the best you can do. What else? Compensation. Rather large bird tells me you got lucky in Vegas. No, 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 that was our fear as anyway, anyway. We blew it, didn't we? Yes, but you're not a man to ignore his obligations, are you? You owe me, Jack. Do I? And I'm sure you'll tip up when you consider the possible consequences. The job's not good enough for him, Jim. There's not a lot more you can do. It's not that. It just needs time to adjust. Ah, chapter closed, eh? You offered him and he turned you down. 
Well, let's keep that note of celebration out of your voice for a wee while, William. Come on, Jim. It's hard graft, isn't it? And Steve fancies a softer ride. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just keep the place open for a couple of weeks, eh? I mean, you never know. He might change his mind, eh? Blow the gaff, Alec, and I'll deny all knowledge. What? That you're a fake? You got the holiday on a scam? They wouldn't believe me, of course, but I could try. Come on, you're in as deep as I am, and you know it. You mention out, and it'll be me and thee knitting mailbags together. Come on, you. You've got to get them invoices sorted. That man's coming at nine o'clock. That man? Tomorrow, I. Oh, this is a first inspection, Jack. So? A word of advice. Don't smile too much. And don't wear your Stetson. Even he won't be convinced you're as daft as you look. Still, it's not till tomorrow. Sleep well, Jack. I keep telling you, Angie, you design. I do the hiring and the firing. Admit one thing. The timing of your holiday was inconvenient. Not that inconvenient that you hired two bullshit machinists. Good machinists. There's nothing wrong with going on holiday, Mike. The trouble starts when you get back. It'll take me ten minutes to clear my desk. All right, I tell you what, we'll leave it for now, OK? Good. Won't be long before you want them sacked, anyway. Hello. Hello. Oh, Mr Baldwin. <laughs> my ears are burning, aren't yours? <laughs> How'd you go on about getting a holiday around here, Kev? <laughs> Why, you don't want some already, do you? I might. That's Mrs. Oryx. Here you go. Uh, well, I was just going to go for a butter. Do you fancy a stroll? A stroll? Well, a walk, a chat, you know. Come on. You're weird sometimes, you know that, don't you? Still crazy, I think they call him, innit? But if I go back in there, I'll get the shakes or something. Now, it's not much, so don't get excited. Look, you shouldn't have bothered, I told you. Your phone now, Betty. Look. Yeah, I'm going to get Billy's tea. <laughs> hey, your Billy would have loved it over there, you mm -hmm. know, eh? Pulling the bandit with one arm, steak butty in the other. Oh, it's a wonder you didn't get indigestion, love it. <laughs> Ta-da! Now, I said it won't much, oh, didn't I? Uh, uh, and I know it's bright, but everything's bright over there, isn't it, Jack? Oh, I mean, without your shades, you can't see a thing. Right. Thanks, love. <laughs> yeah, but summer's there, isn't it? So yeah. it won't look a mess. No. I better get myself a pair of shades. Ah. <laughs> anyway, thanks, dear. I'll see you tomorrow, Jack. Right, love. See right. you See, I told you, it pays to keep them sweet. Oh, ah, she was chuffed, I could see. You see, you have some of the money just cannot buy, Vera. Huh? Taste. Talking about taste, can you get us a scotch, please, love? Oh, no. I want you sober when you're doing them books. 120, please, Maxie. Ta. Ta. It amazes me they still manufacture them that way, but there you are. Sorry? Fridges with the little plastic grooves for your eggs. I mean, I never use them myself. I prefer my herbs straight from the carton. Cook better. Here's way of saying the sandwiches are fresh. Right. <laughs> Do you still see your little boy, Ken? Daniel, when I can, oh. yes. I'm hoping to see more of him once school's finished. Oh, of course, you have all these long holidays, don't you? Well, this one's going to be a very long holiday, Maureen. I'm finishing for good. Up. Oh. Oh, just a thing. Get another job, won't you? You're offering? Well, I meant with your qualifications, there's bound to be something. <coughs> Who was it? Oh, nobody. Uh, 2 35 please, Ken. No, I'll spend the, uh, the first couple of weeks assessing my situation and trying to get my life back in some sort of order. Bye. Bye. There's your chairs. Cheers. <laughs> How's it been? Strange. In need of company. Mine, even. Not exactly buzzing in here, is it? Too quiet for you? Mm. A bit. Do you uh, want to go and sit down, mate? Yeah, if you like. Over there, suit you? Yeah. Go for it. Two of them. Go on. Hi. Hi. <laughs> is John not here yet? No, not yet. Hey. You look knockout. Oh, thanks. I should do. I've been sticking and pasting for two hours. Well, go sit yourself down and I'll bring you a G&T over. 
Uh, do you think the boys would mind if I sat with them? Oh, no. John might get the wrong idea. Oh, well, I'll just stop here then, shall I? No. No, I wouldn't. Some men don't like to see a woman propping up a bath. Should I go out and come in again? <laughs> go sit down on your own and I'll bring you a drink over. Oh, I'm not used to this. <laughs> so you reckon these VAT people are quite human, dear friend? Depends how you play it, Jack. Offer no strong drink, just cups of tea and a few fancies. No problem. Right, right. Evening, Jack. Usual. Uh, for starters, telling me earlier about Vegas. What kind of pudding spends his time gambling when there's all them wenches about? Do you have to keep talking about it? Can't you tell me about your day? I'm just telling you about mine. You let it slip. You're working in a supermarket and bang goes my credibility. You mean they're calling your overdraft? Oh, dear. That is not funny. 120. Thank you. In the great. Yeah. All right. Yeah, mate. Mm -hmm. Hiya. Um, how's Vicky? Look, I'm, I'm interested, Alec. I, uh, I want her to do well. She's done very well since she ditched you. Look, there's no ulterior motive here, Alec. I, um, well, I just wanted to know that I'm sorry for what I put her through. Something you said? Obviously, Jack. Two pints here, please, mate. Coming up, son. He's not coming, is he? I'll fetch you another drink over. I've had three. Well, have another. Oh, go on, then. Might as well get sloshed as sit here wishing I had. Deirdre, I can't apologise enough. He's laughing now, have we? Sorry? You and Chris this afternoon, telling him about me. Oh, don't be so stupid. Look, I've come to explain, OK? Not just about this morning, but about last night as well. Can I sit down? Suit yourself. Yeah, well, maybe I should explain. I don't like listening to you going on about your ex-boyfriends. Because if you can dump them like that, you can dump me the same way. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen, is it? Oh, that's right. Have a right good laugh. I'm a scream, aren't I? No, you're not. You're lovely. Look, I'm sorry if I upset you. I didn't mean to. Yeah, well, you don't look it. Listen, whatever happens, I want you to promise me one thing, right? That you'll never stop being jealous. Because do you know why? I love you for it. Give us a kiss. To tell you the truth, I was half hoping you wouldn't be here. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm delighted. It's just that I had no idea how I was going to entertain you. <laughs> but you're doing all right so far. I'm not the world's best conversationalist, I know. It's got worse since Linda and I split up. Linda? My wife. Ex wife. So you've been married then? Briefly. There was no one else involved, thankfully. Apart from my work. And no children either, which was a blessing. Even when I was there, we didn't have much to say to each other. Come to think of it, I haven't got that much to say to anybody. Stop knocking yourself. The divorce was amicable enough. We exchanged Christmas cards. Where is she now? Devon, with her new bloke. He works in a bank, feet firmly on the ground. There's me yawning on and there's you drinking from an empty glass. Same again. Thanks. Hey. Alma gone home? Yep. She needs a rest. Keep the change. I'll tell her. Michael, you know as much about management as I do, don't you? More. Yeah, well, then you'd be able to tell if someone uh, is happy in their work. I mean, take Alma, for example. She looked today as though she was enjoying herself. Stacking shelves. <laughs> Give her a week, she'll be sick of it. 
Yeah, well, in future, I'd really appreciate it if you uh, refrained from undermining my workforce. Unlike you and your lot, I run a happy ship. That's another. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, mate. Okay, floppy. Hi, Ellie. Hello. How are you doing? All right. Uh, huh. We're uh, just going, actually. All right, I was going to buy you a drink. Some of the time, eh? See ya. See ya. Oi! Are you uh, playing hard to get or what? Something like that, yeah. I want back. Fiona? She's engaged to a copper steed. Well, this isn't the time or the place. But I'll get her back. Watch me. Way first, can't no, you? I can't. Said he'd be here by nine. Want to show William? Look as though we're ready for him. Probably. It's a lot of fuss. Andy, Andy. Morning. Oh, morning, oh, Lord. Oh, thank God you're here. I. Am I glad to see you now? Now, what, what we're going to do the, with these? Are we just going to leave them as they are? We're going to sort them out? Well, I think you'd appreciate a little bit of sorting, Jack. I mean, they're all in bundles with dates written on them, aren't they? Right. It's probably best if you let me have a look at them. It probably is. Right. Right. Hey. Except, it's not down to me if he tells you you've done your sums wrong. All I did was keep everything in order. Payments are down to you. No, oh, it's not in my name, neither. It's out wrong. It's down to all the other. Oh, aye, and how do you make that out, eh? It were you that did all the adding up. I just signed whatever you put in front of me. Exactly. You're always going on about being the licensee, your name over the door. Well, you, madam, are legally responsible. Well, he's not going to find no, is there? Not as far as I'm aware, Vera. Everything's here. I think he just wants to make sure you've been keeping proper records. Yeah. Right. 7.80, please. Very good, Sam. Thank you. Hiya. 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 Have a pint of milk, please, Maureen. Did he turn up? <laughs> he certainly did. <gasps> and we had a lovely time. <sighs> Where's this done? <laughs> Airline pilot she's met. Two twenty change. <laughs> oh wow, you don't get many of them round here, do you? I know. Oh, God. See you later. <laughs> I'm under that. Hey, how are you doing? Fine, yeah. I'm uh, chatting up a couple of our old mates today, see if I can persuade one of them to give me a job. Don't you think you'd be better going to people that don't already know you? <laughs> Thank you. No, Steve, no, I didn't yeah. make. Excuse me, you gang way. Thank you. Anyway, I'll tell you all about it tonight. You better. <laughs> Hi. Got you on your own at last, have I? Well, not really. Oh, I know. It's you again. Don't you have a shop of your own to run? I have minions to do that for me. No, I just want, uh, uh, one of these. Oh, uh, 43p, Fred, please. Uh, I'll meet in the Rovers at half past. All right. Well, I'll try, but... What were he saying? Speak up, I can't hear you. Can you not? Hearing going a bit, is it, dear? Yes, it is, and so will yours when you get to my age. I'll never be your age. I'd shoot myself first. Here you are. Here was a ring if you can't make it. What? Ciao! What was he saying? Just... what a nice day it was. Ready, then. Why are we doing this? Why? Yeah. Because it's what you've always wanted. It's what you kept going on about. We're going to find out if one of us is infertile, right? It's a general idea, yeah. And if we are, well, say it's me, are you going to be leaving me for somebody else? How many times do I have to tell you? No, of course I'm not. Well, I'm not going to be leaving you, neither. So what's the point? At least we'll know, won't we? So we won't keep getting our ropes up at the end of every month and then getting all disappointed. And that's good, that, is it? Not having out to walk for. Well, we won't go, then. Oh, come on. And they're gonna charge us whether we go or not, aren't they? Might as well get our money's worth, you mean? Yep. They fancy themselves, don't they? <laughs> but why ask them? I mean, they could have got us to battle them. <laughs> we can all do that. <laughs> I didn't think you'd have been interested. Of course we would. 
Hey, you speak for yourself. I'm not parading around in my undies for nobody. <laughs> but you do like the look of the garments. I mean, you'd be happy if some man bought you a set. Oh, I would. Especially if it weren't me husband. <laughs> <laughs> Any man that bought me that would get back of my hand. <laughs> What's all this? Having a little conference, are we? I was just showing them the photographs we had done. You should have taken one of the job centre and shown them that. Then they'd realise how lucky they were to be here. Can have a word with you? What? Listen, working with this lot, I wouldn't be too pally if I was you. And they see that as a form of weakness and then they take advantage. Be a bit uh, standoffish. Let them see who's boss. I don't think I need a whip. My advice is based on years of experience. Just because we're employing people doesn't mean we have to shout at them. We can treat them like human beings. <laughs> we can. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> hey, Mr Baldwin. What? Why don't you come over here and fold in a pair of these? <laughs> Show us what you've got to offer. <laughs> It's all your fault, this is encouraging them. Right, the party's over. Oh. Let's get back to work, shall we? Please. So, uh, who took the call? Well, Samantha. Only, you see, I stood there so I heard her ask them what time they'd be here. And they told her nine o'clock. Because she wrote it all down, you see. Well, it's a funny nine o'clock. Oh, yeah, this home. way. Uh, Vera, okay. th this is Mr Brown. He's, he's come to check up on us VAT. Ah, oh, hello. Uh, my name is Mrs. Dirkworth. I'm the licensee. Oh, how do you do? Well, uh, I'll just take these away. <laughs> right, we've got everything set for you here. Make yourself at home. Thank you. And I do apologise for being late. I was up at the usual time, all set to leave the house. And would you believe it, we get a phone call to say our daughter's had a baby boy. Our first grandchild. Ah, oh, oh. smash it. Well, of course, we had to go and have a look at him, and that's what's done it. I am sorry. You haven't to be. No, no. No, I mean, me and our Jack had a little grandson three months ago, so we know you feel. Born in this very room. It was. It was. <laughs> well, well, look, this is our little lad. I just took a few snaps with the Polaroid. Hey, the light wasn't too good, but I think you can see. Yes. Oh, it's lovely. Hey, he is. Yeah, hey, Jack, mm. get the photo album. Show Mr. Brown our Brad's photograph. I will, yes. The wife says he has a look of me, but I don't know. Oh, he has. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. Oh, oh. yes. Oh. Yes. Hey, I could fancy him if I were after a tie by. <laughs> you wonder if you knew him, he's just come out in jail. A bit of rough. Just my time. Well, well, well. Look who it is. Well, I just thought I'd pop in. See what you've done to the old print shop. Well, made a few changes in this place since you rented it off me. So are you working for him then? No. We're partners. All right. Almost equals. We're getting there. What are you doing with yourself these days? Ah, oh, I've been looking around, seeing what's on offer. So if you want me, mate, you'll have to be quick. No, not in your league, this small tin pot operation. Though I knew you'd probably want to be up there with the big boys. True, true. Still looking out me out for a couple of weeks. Just for old time's sake. I'll bear that in mind. Right then. Right, best be off. I'll see you then. Help us out. We'd have to be as desperate as he is. Do you think he really was after a job? Oh, definitely, yeah. I'll tell you what. He'll still be after a job this time next year. Sorry to be a uh, barker tonic yeah. and a white wine and soda, please. OK, love. Thanks. All right, Vera, two pints, please. You look like you've had a day off, are you? <laughs> no, we've just been... Yeah, we've just been doing a bit of shopping. Yeah, shopping. A little spent up, then, eh? Uh... Well, we've got a bit left. Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's due back tomorrow afternoon, but knowing Alan, means I'll be lucky if I see him before midnight. But have you missed him? Yeah, I suppose I have. <laughs> right, we've now ten people, please. There we are, right. Thanks, Monday, Betty. Wonderful. Thank Tyler. you, love. Oh, will you just excuse me? Yeah, of course. I'm Dave. Hello. Um, right, you're going to see Steve, aren't you? Yes, I am, yes. Right, we do you a favour? Mm -hmm. We just say that I'm sorry about what I said this morning. I, I, I didn't mean it to come out the way that it did. And he'll know what I'm talking about, will he? Yeah, I made some joke about him looking for a job and it, well, it just came out sounding a little bit nasty. Betty, love. Yeah. Have you got any hot pot on? Usual amount, yeah. Red cabbage, all the trimmings? Yeah. Good girl. Oi. Have you offered Mr Brown anything to eat? 
Well, no. Well, it's time you did to look at offer him some hot pot or drink. Out he wants. Smile while you're doing it. Ask him about his grandson. Unless you should keep him in with us. Would you like me to offer him my body? No, hot pot. He needs something warm and tasty. Not deep frozen. How was it for you? Well, they couldn't have been much nicer, could they? No. I mean, from the minute we went in. Fantastic. That magazine they gave me with this month. I'll be glad you're a man. Cos if you're a woman, it doesn't matter how nice they are to you. You still end up feeling like a piece of plumbing that's not working. Results in two weeks. Yeah. Hey, what did Dot call you back for? Oh, yeah. He wanted to check if we were doing it right. You're joking. No. Did you have to tell him? In words of one syllable, yeah. And before you ask, yes, we are. <laughs> Just a small portion, you know, keep your strength up. Well, thank you, but I don't normally bother with lunch. Yeah, but it's a special day, isn't it? You've just become a granddad. Oh, I suppose I have. Well, go on, just a small one. Champion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, will you get Mr Brown a hot pot better place? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and a drink to go with it, what do you fancy? Oh, no, no alcohol or I won't know where I am. Well, I won't tell. Like I say, it is a special day. Well, perhaps, uh, just an orange juice, if you wouldn't mind. I won't mind, love. You'll just sit there. <laughs> Have you offered him out? Yeah, he's having hot pot and an orange juice. Oh, right. And he seems all right, does he? Oh, he's really nice. And he's still got that photograph on the table of his little grandson. Great. I think we've cracked it. Yeah. Keep this up. Will be giving us a refund? <laughs> <laughs> There's a side for sore eyes, eh? Come back after a hard day's graft, and there's my two wee boys waiting for me to cook them supper. Well, I didn't know what you wanted doing. Well, neither do I. Go and see what there is and knock some chips up with them, all right? Use your imagination. Right. So. How's it going? Got a job yet? Uh, I've had one or two offers. Uh, nothing to get excited about. Like what? Well, it doesn't matter, cos I'm not interested, but... I've still got some contacts, so I can uh, chase them up tomorrow. Mm hmm Well, in the meantime, why don't you go in there and help your brother cook some food while I go and get washed, eh? Yeah, come on. I've been institutionalised. I'm not used to doing things for myself. In which case, I won't tell you what Fiona said. What? I'm not telling you. No, come on, what? She said she's sorry for what she said this morning. She didn't mean it to come out as nasty as it sounded. Right. Was, uh, he with her? PC plug? Uh, no, he's away, I think, on a course somewhere. He's away and sort of... Mm-hmm. Mr Brown, a cup of tea. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I shouldn't be in your way much longer. Only I thought it best if I hung on and got it finished rather than coming back tomorrow. Oh, no, take as long as you like. We're all right in the kitchen. Mind you, I dare say you want to get home to see your new grandson, eh? <laughs> yes. Can I just check while you're here? Yes. When you first took over this pub and you made no payments in the first quarter. Ah, now that's because we, we didn't know. You oh, see. no, I understand that. Uh, and we suggested interim payments of 1,500 a quarter till you caught up with it. And I think you will find that we paid that on the dot. 1,500? Every time, yes. I just wanted to be sure, thank you. Oh, that's all right. Anything else you want to know, just, just ask. I will. Rosie. Hello. Listen, your daddy thinks I've come to see him, but really I've come to see you. <laughs> How's school? All right. Good. Well, do you uh, want to go and watch one of your videos now? Yeah. Well, do you want to go and choose one then? There's uh, no point in me putting her down yet. She'll only be shouting and screaming for stuff. And I wouldn't blame her. No, it's my fault. I'm early. Well, help yourself to a drink, anyway. I'll go and settle her down, and I'll be right with you. Well, no rush. Got all night. Hiya. 
Yeah? Oh, I got your message from Andy about what you said this morning. Yeah, right, um, I'm sorry about that. Well, that's all right. But just to show there's no hard feelings, I thought we could uh, both open a bottle together. I mean, uh, the three of us, you know, Alan as well. Alan's not here, he's on a course. Oh. Not oh, just two of us, isn't he? Uh, Steve. <sighs> no, look, as soon as you want me to go, I'll go. I, I just thought we could uh, have a chat and just catch up on things. Like that. Will he come in? No, look, just leave it. It'll go. Hey, hello, Rosie. Hello, uh, is your daddy in, sweetheart? Yeah, you don't know. It would have just wanted a chat. It won't be out. Well, hey, Dad. Uh, come in. Uh, Rosie, let me in. What was you knocking? We didn't hear you, did we? Hiya, Bill. Hiya. Uh, no, I. Bobbed in to see how things were like. Yeah, yeah, fine. Look, do you want to sit down? We're just, just talking about the garage. Which I find a very boring subject, so I'd be happy to change it to anything else you like. No, 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 no I won't disturb you. Uh, I'll get going. Okay, suit yourself. Night, Rosie. I can't believe it. What? Look, what did he see? Us two sat here. Yeah, holding hands. Look, I don't think he would have seen that. Look, and anyway, even if he did, relax. I can handle me, Dad. <laughs> No, I think where I went wrong, it was um, it was well before the whiskey thing and that. It was when we were living together in the cafe flat. I mean, that's when I blew it. That's when I uh, walked out on you. No, as I remember, I threw you out. Yeah, well, let's not argue about it now. It's um, it just shouldn't have happened. That's all I'm saying. How's Vicky? I've no idea, but that was the best time for me. I know they say you can't turn the clock back, but. I think you can if you really want to. Steve, if you're talking about where me and you are concerned, then I don't thank you very much. Strange, though, isn't it? What? Well, you live with me, I end up in the nick, and, uh, well, the next thing you do, you get engaged to a copper. Oh, if you're going to start bad mouthing, Alan, then you can just leave right now, okay? No, I'm not. I'm just saying it's strange. What, do you think I did it to get back at you? Is that what you're saying? Oh, Steve, you're mad. I didn't even know Alan was a copper when I met him. So you're going to marry him? Well, we're engaged, so that's the general idea, yeah. But you're not sure? What, who says I'm not sure? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just the impression again. Well, you're wrong. OK, I am going to marry him, yes. Here you go, love. One for please. Cheers. No, I wish you all the luck in the world, mate. Me and Raquel often talked about having a baby. Mind you, it's a good job we didn't, the way things turned out. Do you want another pint? Aye, go on. Mind you, having said that, if she had a baby, then she might not have left. Two pints, please, Jude. Right. I'm just saying I'm wishing you all the best, you know, for your tests and that. Are you telling everybody? No. Oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just chatting with Curly. Look, I won't breathe a word to anyone, I promise. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, friend. Now then, ladies. <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry, I'm only keeping your seat warm. <laughs> I was told I'd have to move as soon as you got here. I didn't say that. I hope not. In fact, I insist you say, let me get you a drink. What'll it be? No, no, I'm going, honestly. I was going anyway. Well, another time, perhaps. Maureen, red wine. Yes, please. Shan't be a moment. Yes. Um, good luck with John. Look, keep me up to date, won't you? Well, as long as you keep me up to date. It's not the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, what's he said then, Jack? Don't know. Still in there, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think he's finishing off. Got on like I was on fire. Been happy about everything I've shown him, so I'm not expecting any problems. Oh, well. Very good. <laughs> Hi. Oh, well, hello. Hello. Um, let me get you a drink. I know, no, it's all right. I've had enough. I was just wondering if word had got to you about the new man in my life. Anybody I know? Well, it depends. Do you know many airline pilots? 
You live the most exciting life of anybody I've ever met. <laughs> well, it's not deliberate. So what, uh, you married through the travel agency, then? Would you believe a singles night? Oh. Andy, uh, see me again when you have a minute long, please. OK, Rita. <coughs> oh, hello. Oh, I didn't see you there. Now, what are you having? Oh, nothing, thank you. I, I don't want to interrupt. But you're not. Uh, you might not think so, but Gail has to put up with me all day. I'm sure the last thing she wants is to see me in the evening as well. Are you having a drink or not? A bit of lemon, thank you. I'll talk to you any time, Roy. Good. Because when these drinks arrive, you can talk to Gail while I go and talk to that gentleman over there. this afternoon, you see, and everyone was like, oh, how are let's go to the pub. I thought, hang on a minute, I could be home in about three hours. Oh, I have missed you, and you will not believe <laughs> how much. I am very pleased to hear it. Um, uh, are you hungry? Do you want me to make something quick? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's have a drink first, though, okay. shall we? Oh, looks like you've started already, mate. Yeah, it's just uh, Max came round. She's feeling a bit down, so I thought I'd uh, cheer her up. Well, you can cheer me up now. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Oh. Mm. Now, have you ever been to Bali? Well, not for a very long time. No, only I'm quite fond of it myself. Yeah. It's not so much abroad, because these things can be misunderstood. I said they can be misconstrued, but I do go. And I was wondering if you'd care to accompany me. Oh, well, any particular night? Next Friday. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but I've already got the tickets. Oh. Well, I better say yes then, haven't I? <laughs> oh, I was just shut in the shop and I saw you go into your Kevin's. Yeah. Well, a minute later I saw you come out again. And I was just wondering, was that because he already had a visitor? A car were outside, probably still is. Uh, his business partner, you mean? Natalie. Yeah. Well, you can call me uh, an Aussie old woman if you like, Bill. I don't care. But I do care about that family. And I don't think that lady's visits are doing it any good at all. Well, best not jump to conclusions, eh? There's nobody done more than me to avoid conclusions. Well, then. But I can't avoid them. Because I know for a fact her and Kevin have been having an affair. Well... I think that's about it. Hey, you work hard, love, don't you? Hey, don't forget your little lad's photograph. Oh, oh no, thank <laughs> no, you. No, no. <laughs> oh, now I'd better tell you my findings before I go. <laughs> Though I will be sending you a written statement, and if you want to appeal against that, you'll have 30 days in which to do so. Well, no. Oh, I don't no. think there'll be any need for that, do you? Yes, the problem is, you've continued to pay the 1500 a quarter we initially assessed. Well, yes, yes. Ah, but the problem is, that was only intended as a temporary arrangement uh, to stop you falling further behind. Did you know this? No. So, in fact, there's been a growing shortfall every quarter. And adding those together, plus the surcharges I've had to impose, means that as of now, you owe Customs and Excise the sum of £17,650. <laughs> I don't know how you could be so stupid. They said send a cheque for £1,500 every quarter, which is what I did. Yes, and the VAT returns as well. And they also said they'd be in touch as soon as they worked it out. Well, how can they do that if you don't send the forms in? Oh, so you're the expert now, eh? How come you didn't think of that before? Because it was you that was signing the cheques. Well, even I know you have to send forms in. They're called returns. Because you return them, you don't stuff them in a drawer somewhere. And his fault, this is. He's supposed to be advising us on this. Oh, don't go passing the book. He's only a student. 3,000 short every quarter. What have we been doing with it? Oh, soon goes. Oh, yes. On vet bills and race meetings. Hey, now don't start, please. 
Well, it's all right for you. It's my name above the door. It'll be me that'll end up in debtors oh, clean. Come on, there's nobody going to jail. Look, you heard what he said. There'll be no appealing. Luke, and he also said the worst thing that can happen is they will make us bankrupt. Oh, and that makes it all right, does it? Well, I'll tell you what, you'd better get a good result from that bank, Jack. Look, leave it to me, V. I've got to go to work. It's important. I'll come straight to the point, Kev. I don't like saying this, but I've got to know. You and Natalie, there's something going on there, isn't there? What? Hang on. Is this because of last night? Well, what do you think? No, you've got the wrong end of the stick. So there's nothing between? No way. And there never has been? Look, we're business partners. Then why did you tell Rita that you'd had an affair with her? I think you'd better come clean, don't you? Gail, there's something been bothering me lately. Oh, yes. I should have mentioned it before, really. Well, what is it? It's, it's the knob on this cooker. It's, it's missing. Is that it? Well, I thought you were going to say the roof had fallen in or something. Well, but you say, is that it? But, but, but these things are important details. I mean, look. Four knobs here, only three knobs here. Well, that's not right, is it? I mean, it puts the balance out. It upsets me every time I look at it. We'll put another one on. It, it, it doesn't bother you. Oh, well, I'd rather it was there, but I mean, well, it's been missing for that long now. It, it only works the little ring at the back we hardly ever use. Yeah, I, I realise it has very little practical value, but it is what it represents. It, it's as if somehow things aren't complete. If you want to put another one on, you have my blessing. Oh, yeah, easier said than done with an old cooker like this. It's unlikely they make the parts anymore. But then you have a problem. Look, it's Sally and the kids that I'm worried about. I couldn't give the monkeys what you do otherwise. I'm not having an affair with her. Then what was all that about last night? Look, I was tempted, OK, a few weeks ago. That's what Rita's talking about, but it's over. Look, not that it ever started. Then why are we holding hands? She's like that. She flirts a bit. Look, Dad, do you honestly think I'd do something with Rosie in the next room? Then why didn't he answer the door? Because we didn't hear you. Oh, come off it, Kevin. I wasn't born yesterday. I know what it's like. You take all kinds of risks in a city. <sighs> Look, Dad, I work with a woman. She hangs around a bit more than I'd like. I can't get rid of her sometimes. But if people want to draw the wrong conclusion, that's their lookout. Hello? Uh, yeah, can you bring it in, Alec? Uh, this morning. Yep, all right, cheers, thanks, see ya. The phone's fixed, then? What? So the phone's fixed? Yeah, they fixed it. What was wrong with it, Kev? Look, I don't know. They did it from outside. Now, if you don't mind, I've got a business to run. Do you know, it's not so long ago this would have been a decadence for me. What? Paying one thirty for a cheese sandwich. <laughs> I'd have been at home doing it myself to save money. Well, it's certainly all going your way at the moment. And I've just confirmed with Sean I am going to take his flat. Oh, good. Hey, you'll have a man to take back there soon hey, as well. Hey, don't <laughs> jump the gun. <laughs> You're not thinking of getting rid of him, are you? You what? He's a peach. Some women would. They're called lemons. See ya. Yeah. Bye, love. See you later. Hiya. Hiya, yeah. Mum. Can you lend me 20 quid? How much? Well, they're uh, 15. Any luck on the job front yet? Well, I'm seeing someone today. That's why I need the money. You can't ask someone to buy you a drink and give you a job, can you? What, are you drinking? Champagne? No. But you don't impress big players with a half a pint in the rovers, do you? You don't get back on your feet with ideas above your station, either. Yeah, don't burn it. Rose return. Who should I say wants him then? Thank you, Betty. Thank you. All right. John Dubworth speaking. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, right, yes. This afternoon. All right, Mr. Wilkinson, thank you very much. You tell him I'll be there, yes, sir. Oh, well, why? That with the bank ringing back. I'm going to see him this afternoon. Hey, that was quick. Do you know, I'm sure we're worrying about now, Vera. I mean, look at all the junk mail that comes through that flaming door every week with banks and what have you begging you to take out a loan. 
I'm sure they're chucking it away, aren't they? You know? Well, they are. I mean, we've kept up the repayments on the other loan we've got. The bank knows that we're a good risk. They want to get me in there quick, before me and you go somewhere else. You know? Hey, you could be right. Mm. But can we afford it? Oh, why, it's just a few quid a month. We, we can soon absorb that, love. So we might be OK. Mm. I think somebody up there likes us, Vera. I think we've landed on his feet again. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a nice collection, Roy. You mean swapping your cigarette cards? I am trying to find a replacement knob for this cooker. I have been to the junk shop on Victoria Road. He didn't have an exact match, needless to say. Well, you never use that ring anyway, so why are you going to all this trouble? Spoils the symmetry. Three china ducks on a wall don't do anything, but if one of them falls off, you replace it, don't you? Well, I have no idea, Roy. We don't have china ducks in the Roberts residence. There. That won't fit. Doesn't look right, though, does it? In fact, it looks better without. I know. Take them all off. Have none on either side. Then you'll have your symmetry. Can't use the cooker, of course, but, I mean, that's a small price to pay. Why don't you ring the manufacturer? Yeah, I think I will. I'll uh, I'll do it now before we get busy. Ooh. Well, you know what I've always said, girl. He's an knob short of a full cooker. I mean, this proves it. <laughs> Didn't believe a word. I could tell. Did he see us holding hands? Yeah, of course he did. Well, how did you explain that? With difficulty. Oh, tell him I'm a vulnerable woman. I've needed a lot of reassurance since my husband left me. Look, this isn't funny. You can't prove anything. No, but we have been seeing a lot of each other. Yeah, but we're business partners. I know, but you know what this street's like? It's a flaming goldfish bowl. So what then? We start avoiding each other. That's just going to make people more suspicious. Anyway, you said you could deal with him. Yeah, but I didn't count on him telling Rita. So who's caused all the problems. He goes in the rovers at dinner time, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, usually. So? Just to prove we've got nothing to hide, we make a point of being in there together. We just go on as normal, Kevin, as if this never happened. Tallow, thanks. Right, I'm off, lovey. Oh, good luck. <clears throat> Where are you going all dressed up? A uh, bit of brewery business, Betty. Why not Vera? She's licensee. Men only today. See you. Everything all right? Yeah, of course it is, man, shouldn't it be? Well, there's a lot of whispering going off and toing and froing. Always oh, same. He's going to the licence big meeting instead of me. I uh, think he was going to the World Summit. You know, it's going to be donkey work. Little things please little minds. <laughs> you said it better. <laughs> yeah. Well, get you a bit. Join us if you want. No, another time, lad. Wouldn't want to disturb you. Look, I'm going to need you to lie for me. Why? Right, you can't say a word, OK? Yeah, go on. Steve came round last night. Look, don't even think about it, OK? He had a drink, he stayed about half an hour, then he left. That was it. Well, he can't have if you want me to lie for you. Yeah, well, Alan turned up before I had time to clear all the glasses away, didn't he? And you know what he's like about Steve, so I just said that, that you come round. Oh. So if he mentions anything, you, you know what he's talking about. So Steve's making the play for you, girl? Well, if he is, he's wasting his time. Oh, Max, come on, he's just come out of prison. I can hardly just slam the door in his face, can I? Well, I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> oh! What are you doing now, Roy? I've got to get the serial number off the back. They need that to see if they can get the part. Be down here somewhere. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, L C F C ninety seven. Yes. Right. I'll just push this back, and we'll be back in business. Well, I just hope it's all worth it. That's all. 
It's not as if it's a Persian rug, Mrs. Robertson. No, no, there is that. Well, they, they have to put mistakes in them. <laughs> Otherwise, they'd be perfect, like God, which it would be uh, blasphemy in their religion. See, on that principle, seven knobs would be all right because it would be an imperfection. Well, could you not think of it like that? It, it is not a rug, Mrs. Roberts. It is a cooker, and it meant to have eight knobs. And eight knobs it shall have. All right, I'll go and make the phone call. Uh, can I turn it on now? Yes, yes, I'll finish now. I'll just have some soup, Gail, okay, love. Then I'll go if that's all right. Yes, fine. Ooh. What? The... Oh dear. <laughs> So, what have you been doing yourself? Oh, looking around. I've got a couple of irons in the fire, you know. Yeah? How about you? We're having a good year. Opened on the club a few months back, you know, in the old market. Oh, I know, yeah. Tell me more. Well, uh, look, I'm around now, so, you know, if you want any help with anything, like. Doing what? Well, whatever. You know, PR, new ideas, hustling. You had the t shirt business, didn't you? That's right, yeah. <laughs> I've still got the contacts, you know, where... Uh... Right, sure. Problem is, you might find the landscape's changed a bit since you've been away, Steve. Yeah, well, that's why I want to get back into things. You know, I'll see the damn you don't know, mean. Also, the business I'm in, there's lots of competition. I have to keep my investors happy. If they thought I had someone on the payroll with the wrong kind of CV... It stinks, I know, but... No, I understand, mate. Anyway, you've got other things on the go. Maybe six, nine months' time we talk again, eh? Good. Now I've got loads of things I can be doing. So, how's business, Mr. Duckworth? Oh, good. Well, the uh, the books all seem to be in order. Um, November '95, we last saw you. Ah, that's when we bought the Rovers. Huh? So, what can I do for you today? I was just wondering if there was any chance of increasing the loan. Well, let's see. Um, we lent you nine thousand towards the purchase of the property. And another 20 to set up the business. You've kept up the payments, so that's good. Uh, how much exactly were you wanting? 18. And why do you need that? Well, general expenses, a bit of refurb, you know. And have you got estimates for this? Not with me, no. Oh, well, um, perhaps you could be a bit more specific. Does it matter? <laughs> well, I'm afraid it does. I mean, 18,000 doesn't sound a great deal, but... Uh, it is a 70% increase on your existing loan. 70%? Yes, you see, you've only paid off 3,000 of the original 29. Most of the repayments in the early years go towards the interest. Uh, that leaves 26 outstanding. And uh, you're how old now? 50. 62. Three years off retirement. Well, I'm not saying it's out of the question, but uh, if you could give me a little more detail, then I'll see whether we'll be able to help you. Belonged to an old uncle of mine. He had a cottage in Wales. No electric. There we are. Thought it might come in handy one day. What's what's going on here? You're not trying to raise that dead ant of yours again, are you? No, we've had a, a power failure. Oh, well, I came seeking a cup of tea. Am I out of luck? You and about 40 others in the last hour. I, I could do you something cold. No, no, don't bother. You should have an usherette on that door with a torch showing folk to the seats. Well, I've got this. Oh, yes, yes. Very nice. Yes, a spotted anky round your head. You could wash up in Pirates of Penzance. They're auditioning, you know. Alec, if you haven't got any constructive suggestions to make... Have you tried an electrician? They're very good without electrical, I'm told. Hey, yes, thank you. Jim MacDonald is on his way. Right. Well, I shall leave you to it then. <laughs> Brighter times. Still, one thing, uh, they think they might be able to get me the knob. It still seems a lot for the things that you've mentioned. Well, the other thing being, as well, is 
We've had a slight misunderstanding with the VAT. Uh oh. Well, you see, when, when we first took over, they said that we, we should pay a certain amount every, every quarter, which we've done. And now they won't tell us they've underestimated it. By how much? Uh, Something around um, 18,000, by any chance? No, not that much, no, no, no. 17 and a half ish. And they just let you go on paying without telling you? Well, that was it. ridiculous, weren't it? You did send in your returns. Ah, well, that is where, you see, we had a misunderstanding. But you completed them? Oh, yes. No problem. And you never thought, looking at your figures and their estimates, that you weren't paying enough? And now you mention it, it did pass through my mind. Yes, but, you see, I expected them to get in touch with me. The thing is, Mr Duckworth, if you get something as basic as this wrong... It doesn't exactly inspire confidence in a lender. No, well... See, I shouldn't mention this. Bruce, the wife insisted on doing the VAT. I mean, just to prove that she could do it. I did the books. You've seen them. Them are OK. You see, look, I assumed that everything was going well, but I've told her. I have told her from now on, I do the lot, I've said. Yes, but the loan would still be in your joint names. Yes, but there'd be no interference, I could promise. And then there's your age. Now, if you were ten years younger, or even five... But we're doing well. You've got the books. You're keeping your heads above water. I wouldn't call these figures remarkable. This, this VAT thing, just a blip. I don't doubt your good intentions, but I think, all told, it's a risk we can't afford to take this time, Mr Duckworth. I'm sorry. Wait you in a minute. Right. Well, you can whack the juice on now, right? Yes, yes, right. Uh, oh, and uh, say a wee prayer while you're at it, eh? Uh, really? Oh, thank heaven. That's you. Is that it? Aye, you're sorted now. Yes, right. Now you can twiddle with your knobs till your heart's content. Cheerio now. Thank you. Is Rosie in? This is it, mate. I'm going to pick it up in a bit. Look, Dad, I'm getting sick of all this. Look, just tell me one thing. The night you stayed with Sally in Scarborough, when the phone was out of order, you did go, didn't you? Yeah, of course I went. Where do you think I went? Then where did you stay? Why did you give the number of the mobile phone, yeah, but not the number of the bed and breakfast? So you could get in touch with me if I was out of the room? If I was out of the room? We! Oui. And where were it at, this place? Look, Dad, I'm not going to be interrogated like this. And remember the night you went to Oldham when I sat for you? Where did you stay then? Look, I'm sorry, Dad. Look, if you've got nothing to hide, Kevin, you can tell me. Hey? Eh? I want to believe you, but I want some proof. Look, believe what you like. I'm a grown man. I run my own life. And the only person I answer to is Sally. And on that, my conscience is clear. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, not at all, Bill. I've only just come in myself. Yeah. I take it this is about Kevin? Yeah. I just don't know what I'm going to do, Rita. Sit down, Bill. Yeah. Well, how did he explain last night? Well, he says there's nothing going on. Do you believe him? Well... I asked him where he stayed in Scarborough with Sally. He said it's none of my business. It is if he's cheating on her. I mean, they're your family, Bill. Well, he's hiding something. I'm sure of it. 
So what are you going to do about it? <sighs> Got any work then, Steve? Early days. Mum said he was seeing somebody at dinner time. Yeah, yeah, it went quite well. What about you, you're looking at? Well, we're always on the lookout, you know, for management talent, and you did look well in that suit of better buys that did you? Thanks, Kelly, but uh, I'll get my exam results first. <laughs> white wine, yeah? Uh, yeah. Pint and uh, a white wine, please. Right. You, you remember Steve? How could I forget? Congratulations on your release. You said I don't yet? We're working on it. Well, like I told Faye, I wish you all the best. I bumped into him in the, in the street. Well, it looks like we've all got something to celebrate. Come on, let me buy you a drink. One for the road. Eh, Steve? Well, it's bad enough dealing with the staff. Without having to fight her. Oh, she's committed the cardinal sin, has she? A woman actually speaking her mind and standing up to you. It's got nothing to do with being a woman. It's about management styles. I should have stuck to being the lone wolf. It's what I know best. You're wasting your time there, you know. You think so? She's engaged to a copper, Steve. Yeah, well, I went round last night. We shared a bottle of wine. Are you sure this is a good idea? I mean, they seem quite happy to me. Why mess things up? <sighs> I'm not doing anything she doesn't want, on me. It takes two, it's anger. Hello. How are you, Trisha? How are you, love? Oh, I'd love to, but... Oh, hang on, I'll just ask our Jack. Jack, it's Trisha. She wants to know if I want to go to Morecambe next week, you know, with her and Brad, but yeah. it's a bit short notice, isn't it? No, you go, I'll manage. Oh, are you sure? Oh, aye, aye, aye. Hey, uh, have you sorted out with the money at the bank? I don't want to be going and worrying. Duke, it's all sorted out now, lass. You go and enjoy yourself, eh? Hey, Trisha, guess what? I'm coming. Sally. <laughs> Hiya, it's Billy, eh? Uh, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Uh, listen, Sally. Now, I know this is none of my business, right? But I think you should come home. Thank you. It's about time or not. I've been waiting 20 minutes. Betty, love, I'm sorry I'm late. I got stuck in the traffic. Oh, taking our beer at some station, you see. Well, where's she going? Morecambe. Morecambe. Oh. Cheers, you, Chris. Thanks. Tea, Kev. Oh, I'll just put it down, thanks. So, Sally's back tomorrow then? Yeah, tomorrow afternoon, yeah. Looking forward to seeing her? Looking forward to seeing Sophie. And Sally. You can say it, Kevin, I don't mind. Look, we'll talk about this later. But when after? Just keep your voice down, okay? Well, what about tonight, then? My place. Please, Kevin, it might be the last chance we get. Look, I can't get a babysitter. I've got a load of things to do. Oh, yeah. Getting the house all ready for your wife coming home. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It's just I really do want to see you. Yeah. And I want to see you, too. You know I do. You working all day? No. Just till dinner time. What are you doing this afternoon? I put Rosie up from a pal's house at three o'clock. Three? Well, if you close this place down about one, that gives you two whole hours to yourself, doesn't it? Uh, Ray, we're checking Trisha and the kids. He'd give us a ring, see if we fancied going, but I couldn't leave this place again. Mm -hmm. So I sent her on her own, you see. <laughs> All right for some, isn't it? Just got back from one holiday. Uh, wish we'd have stayed in Las Vegas, Betty. Sure, I could have found work, you know. I could have, I could have got my singing career going yeah. again, couldn't I? Because they love out English, you know. No, you miss your home. You know, your friends. This place. What time is it, Betty? Dead on 11. Open door for us. Right, will do. Oh, by the way, the milkman passed us is waiting for you, love. He says you owe four weeks. Tell me again the queue. Why? 
Who asked your money to? Don't ask, Betty. You've never forgotten the brewery again, have you? They'll stop delivering, you know. The vat man. I owe him £17,000. Is the course clear? Well, she's gone to play whist with her friends in Alton. Fred, you mustn't let her put you off coming to see me. I get the distinct impression she doesn't like me. She's old. It's just a way. Mm. Are we still on for tonight? Oh, yes. I've been looking forward to it. Do you know, I've always wanted to go to the ballet. Oh, <sighs> you start vacuum pack chicken pieces. Do well, do they? Well, reasonably well. Quite apt that we're going to see Romeo and Juliet, what with your mother's hostility, me having to sneak in to see you. I'll be standing under your bedroom window next. <laughs> you think I'm joking, don't you? I say you think I'm joking. I think you daft. <laughs> Listen, Fred, what time do you want me to be ready for tonight? It's a very impressive range of stuff for a little shop, Maureen. Oh, thank you. Very impressive. Uh, Fred? Fred? Oh, I'll pick you up here at about seven. Very <gasps> impressive. I'm beginning to wonder now if I did the right thing for dinner. Of course you did. But, I mean, it's their marriage, isn't it? I mean, who am I to interfere? Well, it's the marriage you were trying to save, Bill. Yeah, but she was coming back soon, anyway. I don't want to put in two and two together. <laughs> Sally would never suspect Kevin of having an affair in a million years. Well, that's half the problem. She's too trusting. How did you manage to run up a bill that size in the first place? Oh, well, it seems we've been underpaying them ever since we moved in this place, Betty, and it just mounted up. £17,000. I mean, where will you find that kind of money from? <sighs> you tell me. I've got to find it, though, Betty. Well, if you can't. Betty, I'm a duck with. There's oh. no such thing as can unless it comes down to swimming. Don't let on to anybody, though, Betty. I don't want the vultures circling, not just yet. Yes, Alec. Uh, I'll have my usual Betty Love, please. Right. <laughs> Hi. Not back too early, am I? Gonna be long with us, Chris. Would you mind if I carry on tinkering for a bit? I nearly got it started a minute ago. Be my guest. Be okay to lock up? Yeah, sure. See you then. Yep. Yeah. See you, pal. Bye, Chris. A bit of a word, I'm after a bit of advice. Jerry, do you see a small sign on this table which says Ken Barlow's surgery, free advice on all matters? No. Then why come to me? I'm not your MP or a doctor or a social worker. I'm just a redundant school teacher. Yeah, but you're a man of the world, aren't you? I've lived here all my life. Yeah, it's a financial matter. I've, I've, I've got a bit of a problem. Join the club. Yeah, come on up. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, I just wondered if you needed a hand. Oh, that's really kind of you, Liz, but actually, John's already offered. He should be here in a minute. Ah, I see. Bringing along a few knickknacks of his own, is he, you know? Spare toothbrush, clean undies. He is doing nothing of the sort. Told him I was moving flats this weekend and he offered to lend a hand. So it's full steam ahead then, is it? It's nothing serious. Hey, have you slept with him yet? No, I have not. Are you going to? Look, let's just take it steady, shall we? Right then. Well, I'll put the kettle on. That's if you can tell me which box it's in. Are you sticking around anyway, are you? Well, yeah, yeah, just to sell her for the sake of being friendly. <laughs> Do you want to go upstairs? Yeah. Is something wrong? No. Hey, are you sure? Soon as Sally comes through that door, you and me are finished. 
No, we're not. Oh, come on, Kevin. Why don't we just face up to it? Look, I could never stop seeing you, even if I wanted to. <laughs> Look what happened when I tried. We just end up back together. Yeah, because it was easy. It's not going to be so easy with a wife wanting to know where you've been every minute of the day. Well, we just have to be careful, that's all. Kevin, you'll soon get sick of all the creeping around, lying about where you've been. Yeah, well, I'd sooner that than stop seeing you. A week from now, you'll look at me and you'll wonder what you were playing at. No. Kevin, you only started seeing me because Sally was away. That's how you justify it to yourself. She left me in the lurch. I was entitled to a bit of fun. How are you going to justify it when she's sat at home waiting for you? I mean, you haven't even got the excuse of being trapped in a marriage with a woman you can't stand. You love her, and she loves you. Are you right? I do love her. And I love my kids as well. I just wish I didn't. That way you could pack a bag and leave a note on the table. That's what you want, innit? No, of course it isn't. Yeah, it is. You want me to leave me wife and kids and you won't be happy till I do. All right, I should never have started this. You're right, we'll think of something, so don't worry. Anyway, we've only got a couple of hours together, so let's make the most of them, eh? Come on. Leave it. Just leave it. to Coronation Street Garage. We're unable to come to the phone at the moment, but if you'd like to leave your name and a telephone number, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. Hi, Kevin, it's me, Sally. I'm at Piccadilly Station. I thought I'd surprise you. I was hoping you were going to come and pick us up, but oh, well, we'll get a taxi, not to worry. See you soon. <laughs> get to fly all over the world then or is it just domestic? Oh I go wherever the airline tells me. Two days ago I was in Cape Town. Tomorrow I'm doing the shuttle to Santa. Oh, must be ever so excited. Never met an airline pilot before. Not really, no, you're just a glorified bus driver, really. <laughs> oh this looks like it'll probably do the trick. Get off then. All right, I'll show you out. All I can say is, if you ever get bored, send him my way. <laughs> bye bye, Elizabeth. See you. Bye. Uh, bye bye, John. Cheerio. <laughs> oh, thanks ever so much for doing this. It'll take two seconds. Then I'll put that curtain track back up if you like. Only if you let me take you for a pizza later. Deal. Popular today. Hello? Hey, it's Ken. Can I come up for a moment? Ken, um. Yeah, I suppose it's all right. Oh, hi. Oh, I'll well, look in, see if you need any help. Oh, that's the third offer I've had this morning, but thanks anyway. Right, well, my door's always open with anything you need, you know that. Oh, thanks, Ken. In fact, I was going to suggest, uh, why don't you go have a bite to eat at my place? I'm sure you won't want to be cooking. Thanks very much, Ken, but I've already made plans. Oh, right, well, sure there'll be plenty of other times. Yeah. Done. Oh, great, thanks. Uh, Ken, this is uh, John. I think I told you about him the other day. Oh, hi. Neighbours are very friendly around here, aren't they? <laughs> Actually, I'm Deirdre's ex-husband. Oh! Oh, I see. Hello. You on your own? Kevin and Natalie are over the road, working on the books. You mean they're, uh, in Sally and Kevin's house? That's disgusting. Poor Sally. Yeah, well, that's marriage for you, isn't it? Cynic. Realist. You're not working today, then? No, I'm off up the road to get a vid out. Oh, well, hang on 20 minutes. I'll come with you. Get a few cans. Make an afternoon of it. 
Yeah, all right, you're on. I'll see you back at the house. Kevin Webster, who'd have thought it? I thought I'd surprise you. I was hoping you were going to come and pick us up, but oh well, we'll get a taxi, not to worry. See you soon. Um, I, I've, ju I've just been I've just been reading your advert, and, and I and I was wondering how how we go about getting a loan. <coughs> Seventeen thousand pound. It's the flaming door, will you? What do you want? Kevin, mate, you're not going to believe this. Sally's on her way back from the station. She's going to be here any minute. What? In a cab. She phoned up looking for you. Well, why don't you talk to her? Tell her to stay put. I didn't hear the phone go. I've only just got the answer machine message a minute ago. You what? How long ago did she ring? I don't know. 20 minutes, half an hour ago. Oh, flaming heck. Look, do us a favour, eh? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Natalie? Hello, you two. Oh, we weren't expecting a welcoming party. Come on, Sophie, mind the cab. That's it. I phoned from the station, but there was nobody there, so I just left a message. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We've been on a job. Yeah, I thought you might have been. Here you go. Cheers, you can keep the change. Yeah, we just got back just this minute. Oh, right, is Kevin in the house then? Yeah, he is. Good. Here you go, I'll take those for you. No, it's all right, I can do no, it. No, 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 I'll do it, go on. Oh, you're a gentleman. <sighs> right, come on, Sophie, let's go and see what your daddy's up to. Now, where's my keys? Come on, Natalie, she's outside. All right, just wait till I get my shoes on, will Don't you? Don't be up. No, 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 the back. One in the front, the other out the back. Right, see you whenever. Come on, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go. Hiya. Oh, yeah, oh. Sophie, give us a love. <laughs> ah, yeah. I wasn't expecting you home till tomorrow. Well, I couldn't bear being parted from you for another minute. Now, come here. <laughs> oh. Whereabouts was he from? Well, his family are from Tisnet, but he was living in Agadir when I met him. Hmm. Agadir. I know it well. So, um, he was husband number two, I take it? Ah, uh, I'm sorry? I mean, you were married to him after you got divorced from, uh, Ken, was it? Ah, uh, as a matter of fact, he was number three. My first husband, Ray, Tracy's father, is living somewhere in Holland. Ah. You and Ken married long? Um, 11 years. Uh, by all means, tell me to mind my own business if you think I'm prime. Uh, no, no. Ask what you like. Have you ever thought of getting back together? Well, I have entertained the thought in the past. I mean, sometimes it's just the easiest option, isn't it, to drift back into something familiar. But that's all water under the bridge now. Only you seem quite close. Well, we're friendly with one another, just like you are with your ex-wife. <laughs> what? Well, I'm civil with her, yes, but I wouldn't move into a flat across the street from her. Look, I took this place because it was convenient and cheap, not because of the neighbours. Yeah, I'm not saying you did. The fact that Ken was living across the road nearly put me off. Yeah, I'm sure. You think there's still something between us, don't you? No, no, I don't think anything. I hardly know you. I'm just, uh, interested. Look, me and Ken are ancient history, believe me. <sighs> Look, I think I've done enough of packing for one day and I'm starving. What do you say we go and get that pizza? Well, now you come to mention it, uh, I still haven't quite got over that long haul. I think I might go and get some sleep. Oh, all right, fine. Are you going right this minute? Yeah, I've got an early start tomorrow. Oh, well, OK, maybe we'll do the pizza another night. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give you a ring. Bye. Bye. Oh, you should have seen his face, though, Ange. Well, I think it's despicable. Despicable and sordid. Yeah, well, if you've been there... You're on Kevin's side, aren't you? You don't even think what he's doing is wrong. I'm not on anyone's side. What Kev does is his own business. Not Sally's. Not mine. 
Men always see affairs from the man's point of view. That's why you went running over there, innit, to save your mate. I ran over there to prevent World War III from breaking out. And for your information, I just don't think it's up to me to tell Kevin how to live his life. Anyway, probably fire me. I haven't had a chance to tidy around or anything. I wanted to move it up for when you come home. Oh, Kevin, just listen to yourself. I'm not going to go around inspecting everywhere. Mind you, you could have made your bed when you got up. No, I was going to strip it down. Uh, there's some clean sheets in the drawer, actually. I'll do that now. Oh, sit yourself down. You've been working all morning. I'll do it. No. No, I'll do it. It'll only take a minute to. Hey, Rosie, your dad's picked up some good habits while I've been away, hasn't he? Yeah, all right. Oh, you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not bad. <laughs> well, you're back. Well, you told me to get home, so here I am. Yeah, but I didn't mean catch the next train, like. <laughs> hey, Sophie. Well, to be all honest, right. Bill, I've been in two minds about coming home anyway. In fact, I've been in two minds about whether I should have gone in the first place, leaving poor Kevin to cope with all this all on his own. Yeah. How is she, your mum, like? Oh, she's a lot better. Apart from a bit of hand holding, there was nothing more I could do for her. When I got your call, it just spurred me into action. It's here I'm needed most, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you didn't mention to Kevin that I'd phoned you up, did you? No, of course I didn't, no. Well, best not, eh? Because uh, he might think I'm, you know, he's like interfering. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dad. What are you doing here? Bill's just been telling me what you've been getting up to while I've been away. Where have you been? That was a long company ringing me back. I rang them, you see, see if they'd lend me some money to get the Batman off me back. What did they say? Same as the bank did. Too old. Hunt to his neck in debt. <sighs> what are you going to do, Jack? I don't know. Maybe if I write to them and explain how we fixed, maybe they'll give us time to pay. Well, <laughs> if you say so, love. Well, Betty, it's not as though we're trying to wriggle out of pain. No. It, I mean, it was a genuine mistake. I mean, the, the, the fellow they sent from the bank, he were very reasonable, yeah. you know. Well, well, they are these days, mm. aren't they, Mike? What's that? I mean, you must have had some dealings with the VAT. I mean, they're not bad fellas, are they? You know, as long as you're dead straight with them. You've got to be joking. They're a law to themselves. Hey, you don't owe them any money, do you? No, no. Why? Well, don't, because they're bankrupt you on the spot. I've seen it happen. Oh, come on, you're exaggerating. Oh, no, I'm not. They're the nearest thing this country's got to the Gestapo. Correction! The Gestapo showed a bit of compassion. Hiya. Oh, hi. Hey. Are you not going out on the town with we'll Loverboy tonight, then? No, Liz, I'm not. Something happened, was shock? Well, I thought everything was going fine. And Ken popped in to say hello, popped out again, and everything went downhill from then on. I don't understand. Well, I'm not sure I do, really, Liz. But I could see John was not impressed by the fact that I was living across the road from my ex-husband. Oh, sounds to me like he might be a bit jealous. Well, I don't think so, Liz. Anyway, he was off like a shot as soon as Ken had gone. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the last I ever see of him. It's crap, this film, innit? Yep. Does he talk to you about him and Natalie, then? Not directly, no. Do you talk to each other about women in general? I don't know. A bit. Did you tell him you'd slept with me? Well, why would I want to tell him that? Well, that's what blokes do after a one-night stand, innit? Brag about it to their mates. So it was a one-night stand, then? Thanks a lot. At least now I know. Well, it's not as if you've been making passes at me ever since, is it? Bombarding me with red roses every day. Doesn't mean I wasn't thinking about you. Great, so I'm supposed to be a mind reader, am I? Well, you haven't been exactly giving me the come on, either. Anyway, it's not my style, all that full-on red roses lark. I prefer a more subtle approach. I do nothing. I bide my time, wait for the right moment. Like a nice quiet afternoon in, with a video and a six pack. And then I make my move. Are you asleep? For now. Kevin, there's something I want to say to you. Yeah? I don't think you've been completely honest with me. I feel so guilty. What for? 
Well, for leaving you to cope all on your own. I know how tough it's been for you. Well, we got by. Not that I'd like to do it again in a hurry. You're just putting a brave face on it. I should never have left you in the first place. You didn't have a choice. I did have a choice, Kevin. I put my mother before you. And I know that if a shoe had been on the other foot, you'd never put anybody before me and the girls. Yeah, well, you're back now. It's all that matters. I promise I'm never going to leave you ever again. You're a brilliant husband, Kev. You're a brilliant husband and you're a brilliant dad. Oh, now come on. You like them in the shop. <laughs> hey. Look, let's just try. I them. forgot what little madam you was. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's squeeze your little toes in here, look. Oh. Yeah, sorry to bother you, Kevin, but I've forgotten my set of keys. Um, yeah, sure. Look, I'll be over in a minute or two, OK? Who's holding some? Oh, Natalie, she forgot keys to the garage. Does she work at the garage every day now, then? Yeah. What does she find to do? Ah, bits and bobs. Hey, I'd watch her if I were you. What do you mean? Well, she calls herself a sleeping partner. If you ask me, she's keeping an eye on what you're up to. <laughs> no. And also, to be honest, she gets under our feet. We could do without her. But her husband's left her. I don't think she sees much of Tony anymore. You know, I think coming over there just fills a gap in her life. Mm. See you later. Yeah. See you, kids. No. Oh, look, the sun's come up. I enjoyed last night. Thought you did. I did. But something's obviously bothering you. I suppose so. We just seem to have drifted into going to bed together because we live under the same roof. Well, we fancy each other, don't we? Of course we do. And we like being together. I mean, we're mates. Yeah. So what's the problem? I don't know. It's just all a bit convenient. We're in danger of becoming a couple. We'll be going out in matching anoraks to choose a new bedroom suite next. What are you doing? Oh, it's these new boxes. I've got XXL for maximum movement, but it's left me with minimum support. Oh, I hate doing all these things we have to do. And doing them to order as well. It's like living in a flaming biology textbook. Don't bother me. Ready and willing, 24 hours a day. Morning. Oh, I was delighted to meet the new man in your life. Uh, John, was it? You know his name. In fact, the amount of time you hung around, you should be able to write his flaming biography. You let him know who you were in no uncertain terms. <laughs> you think I was behaving maliciously? I know you were. On the contrary, doing the man a favour. He's helping you to move into a flat over the road from your ex-husband, and you obviously hadn't told him. I thought it was very adult of me, actually. Yeah, well, now he thinks I was covering it up. And I'll probably never see him again. So I hope you're satisfied. Why did you have to come in? This morning in particular. We shouldn't take risks. I missed you, Kevin. Oh, talk about playing it close to home. I'm practically on my own doorstep. I've got a wife across the road. I know. And I can't stop thinking about it. Wondering what you're doing, what you and Sally are doing. Yeah, well, it's not easy for me either. I'm just thinking about you all the time. I don't pretend that I'm not. That everything's OK, everything's normal when it's not. I just need a bit of space, please. A bit, a bit of time to come to terms with a situation. I'll find a way of handling it all. Well, I haven't got much choice, have I? I want you, Kev. I want you so much. And I'll just wait as long as I have to. Sorry, mate, was I interrupting something there? No, he turned perfect, as usual.
What have I done to deserve these? You don't have to have done anything. Only I, I would have understood if you'd wondered why I didn't tell you about Ken. It, it wasn't a secret. I, I just haven't got round to mentioning it. No, I'm glad I found out. When you meet someone important, you want to know all about them. You feel cheated you weren't part of their lives before you met them. I know. Let's find out some more, shall we? What about dinner tonight? It'd be a kind of flat warming. Yeah, fantastic. Half seven? I'll be there. You don't mind doing the honours here while he stays clean me out again, so yes. No, no probs. Ah, you're a good man. Do you think it's wise, though, Jim? What? Well, I'll give any money every time he asks you. Hey, listen, behave yourself. I don't want him going back to his old games, eh? Hey? He showed every sign of turning over a new leaf, and that's the way I want to keep it. Cheers, Jackal. Tip 73, please, lad. Thank you. Two. 60, 70, 80. Good man, Molly. Hey, our girls. OK, darling. Yeah, I've seen that. I think. Bill Webster also taking lemonade bottles back here. Isn't that exactly full of big spenders this street, is it? I don't know. At least no one will lend us the odd £17,000. <laughs> Mike Baldwin, I suppose. No, he won't lend you 50p in a man about 17000 Just that, oh, he called him. Who? Mike Baldwin. Reckons the VAT will bankrupt you as soon as Luke at you. Go ask Rita. Peter Sullivan. Yes, I mean, there was a time, you know, when young Kevin and Sally were in dire straits. She helped him out. Well, that's what folks say. Bring us all over. Hmm? Judy, come in. Sit down. Sit down, please. I was just wondering. Well, the test results aren't back yet. It's a bit soon. All right. Was there something else? It might have naught to do with it. What might? Well, I haven't told anyone, ever. You won't tell Gary, will you? Why don't you tell me? Well, when me and Gary came to see you before, I wasn't 100% straight with you. I mean, I was only 16 at the time, and you don't know old then, do you? I was scared stiff about telling anyone. And loud, well, you weren't that keen. And anyway, we'd finished a long time before I found out. I just felt so alone. I don't even know whether I wanted it. I was just so frightened they had to get shut of it. And now here I am, ten years later. And a baby is the most important thing in the world to me. Aunt Gary. And how can I tell him that the reason I can't have his baby is because I got rid of some other fellas? Could it be, Mr Hutton? Could the abortion be the reason why me and Gary can't? I mean, is it me? You've got to tell me. Termination, Judy. Were there any complications? Uh, well, I had an infection afterwards. But I took a course of antibiotics and it cleared up fine. Well, I have to tell you that an old infection is only one of a number of factors that could be causing a problem. I think we'd better have you in. Oh, don't worry, it's only for a morning. We'll just have a look inside. And will you be able to tell? Oh, yes, straight away. One way or another. Oh, and, and a packet of 20, too. And that's all you heard? Yes. Oh, well, you see, that's the trouble with gossip, isn't it? The important bits are always missing. That's what makes it so interesting. <laughs> no, look, the Duckworths have obviously got money problems. Mm. I mean, it's something to do with VAT. I, I knew they didn't have the wherewithal. They couldn't run a paper stand, never mind a public house. But I thought that they were quite flush. I mean, they must have been to buy the Rovers. Yeah, I mean, they inherited 30000 for a start from their cliff, didn't they? Look, I'm not bothered what they had. They've obviously blown the lot. 
I mean, some people are just not destined to have money, Rita. They're not responsible enough. Duckworths are a prime example. Well, you can't have much to think about either, Alec Gilroy, if you're spending your time revelling in other folks' misfortune. <laughs> hey, and talking of money, they go and pay for them fags. Oh, don't have a slate so here, you know. It's a three, uh, 3 Thank you. Right. Thank just you. right. Rita! <gasps> <Sorry. laughs> oh! I heard you were back. Oh. Well, that's lovely to see you. Hey, it's great to be back, Rita. I'll have to go away more often. Kevin is all over me. Anybody think I've been to North Pole? Never mind Scarborough. <laughs> really? Oh, well, he's not the only one that's missed you either. Oh. Welcome home, love. Thanks, Rita. See ya. I was thinking for your birthday next week, why don't you have a party? I'm so busy, Chris. I won't have time to make all the preparations. Look, you have to make space in your life for things that are important. Anyway, I'll do my bit. You're only 30 once. I don't need reminding. I've been trying to ignore it. I reckon if I make a big deal out of being 30, I'll feel 30. If I take no notice, I'll feel like I do now. No age at all. Let me think about it. Let me think about it means let me think of a way out of it. No, and it's settled. You want to watch that, Fred Elliot? I know what he's after. He's after nothing. We went to the ballet together once. He's after your hand. He'll oh. be popping the question in no time. You mark my words. Why would Fred Elliot want to marry me? It's nothing to do with you, Maureen. It's the shop he's after. He's got his own shop. He'll say it's a business alliance. In truth, it's a takeover bid. Oh. Don't tell me he hasn't broached the subject. Look at his last foray into romance with Rita Sullivan. It was the cabin he was after last time. All he's done is cross the street. Romeo and Juliet, my foot. So, did you have a nice weekend? It was OK. Why? Well, obviously you slept in the same bed, so did Look, you... Look, if you're going to ask what I think you're going to ask, don't. It's out of bounds, OK? Fine. Sorry I asked. Ah, careful. Just come on. It's about you and your Sally. What about me and Sally? Didn't Rita Sullivan? Hey, get lost, eh, Jack? I'm sorry, Natal. No, it was me. I was just being stupid. I'm sorry. It's just I've tried, Kevin. I've really tried, and I just can't stop feeling the way I do about you. And it's no good fooling yourself into thinking that you can. You're going to have to make a choice, you know. Me or Sally. Sally's got the advantage, hasn't she? Why? Because you're with her all the time. I'm married to her. Listen. I can manage not seeing you if you can just give me some, I don't know, some hope or something to look forward to. You've got no idea what it's like just sitting at home every night on my own, all weekend with nothing to do and no one to see. Look, we'll have a day together this weekend, I promise you. Well, how can you get away? I don't know. I haven't a clue yet, but we will. I promise you. I didn't mean it about leaving. Of course you did. You all right, love? Regularly. Yeah. Just you haven't spoke since you come home from work. There's not been trouble at the arcade again, has there? If it's you, Gary, if the tests show it's you, I want you to know that I'm not bothered. Eh? The fertility tests. I won't hold it against you, honest. Oh, you've got to get away from this blaming, Jude. It doesn't have to be somebody's fault. Well, it might be. And it might not. Now, these things are complicated. The doctor said in some cases that they don't know the cause why it's not happening. It's just, just the way it goes. It's just one of them things. You've got to get on with it. I'm frightened. It might split us up if... Oh, get away. You know. No. It often does. The people are that desperate. They'll find someone who they can have kids with. To a very happy time here. Oh, I don't know. Champagne and flowers all in one day. Hey, I hope you like Mexican food. I've never cooked it before. 
I've never eaten it before. I thought pilots had tried every cuisine going. Hotel food is much the same whatever country you're in. Oh, still, there must be compensations. A woman in every port. Oh, as opposed to an ex right across the street, you mean? I'm sorry, I asked for that. Look, I told you, me and Ken are finished, and it's true. There's a big age gap between us. It didn't really matter until recently, but now, well, some people age quickly, don't they? I don't mean physically, but mentally, in their attitudes. The only feeling I have for him now, and it sounds awful, but it's true, is pity. He's facing redundancy next month and all. What does he do? His teacher. He's tried his hand at a lot of things in his time. Taxi driver, journalist. But he's taught most of his life, and now that's all going to end. Let me ask around at the airport. <laughs> I can't see Ken landing a jumbo. Oh, I have a lot of contacts there. I don't know if you've been there recently, but it's huge. It's like a city in its own right. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Do you play Good Samaritan to everybody's ex-husband? Only if they're very special, Deirdre. Hi, Bill. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bill, have you a minute? Yeah. Um, I had Sally in the cabin at dinner time, singing Kevin's praises. Oh, yeah. Ah, do you think they settle him in? I think it's a bit soon to tell you, Rita. Oh. I was wondering if there's anything we could do. You know, I mean, it'd be nice if they could get away for a weekend without the kids. You know, or give them a chance for a fresh start, if that's what Kevin intends. Mm, good idea. I'll, uh, I'll drop the hint, eh? Well, I can babysit. Yeah, so could I. I'll keep you posted. OK. See ya. His job interviews, then, Stephen, are they, um, what, are they common to Alan, you know? Well, uh, not as such, no. You think this might have something to do with your attitude? What do you mean? Well, you know, coming across a bit cocky. Giving them the impression that you think you can do anything. Well, you've got to be confident, Dad. Make them, uh, make them know you're up to what you've applied for. Yes, I think you'll find there's probably a fine line to be drawn there, Steve. Well, the fact of my convict seems to be down in the interviews, I must say. They say that it doesn't make a difference. I reckon that it'll chuck my application form in the bin as soon as I walk out the door. Well, look, I know you're not keen, but um, that job with me and Willie is still there if you want it. Yeah, thanks, Dad, but I think I'll keep on looking. If you need someone to talk to, you know where I am. Thanks. There's not a lot to say. I just feel like I'm being ripped down the middle. It's that simple, really. Right. I've been making tracks. I've been pouring it off. It's just a pretending. That's what I can't stand. Yeah. Hey. Sorry, Jack. Sorry. Sorry, management can't clock off, you know. He looked a bit grim. Oh, yeah, he is. You know, maybe somebody should tell Sally. Oh, come on, Angie. I've got to work with the guy. Well, he's got to find out sometime. And I've been in these situations before. The wrong party finds out you knew all along, and then you get blamed for being an accessory. Yeah, well, when that happens, I don't let I told you so look written across your mush. As if I'd even think it. Uh, Rita, I, I wouldn't mind a word. Well, go on. It's something of a personal nature. Jack! Can you give us a lift over here, love? Personal nature? Oh, what can it be? Perhaps he's going to ask you out while beer is away. Give over. Jack Duck was philandering days are long gone. Anyway, he's got other things on his mind. Oh, that's been brilliant. That's been really good. Only me. Hey, Kev, we're in here. Oh, that'd be smashing out if you'd ask me. That'd be great mm. Hey, Kev, Bill just said that he'll have the girls free this weekend, so we could go away on our own. Thanks. Would have been nice to have been consulted. I can't even think about it. Oh, Kev. Look, we've just got that much work on, Sal. It's middle of the holiday period. Everyone wants the motor service in at the same time. Yeah, but you could have a weekend, Kev. I mean, come on. Sal, isn't it rough lately? Look, I don't need you pointing that out, Dad. My name Rosie hasn't exactly been easy. We both had it tough. So both of you go away? I said no. Oh, well, I'm sorry I spoke. But the offer's there if you want it. Thanks, Bill. I'll see you, sir. Yeah. Ta-da. Trying to 
to do us a favour and you bit his head off. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's too late now, innit? He's gone. It's the money. It's not. Does it have to be this weekend? Please say we can go. Okay. <laughs> what would you say to an early night? I'd say. I'm not in the mood. It's not to do with you, Gary. It's not to do with us. But if we don't, we'll have absolutely no chance, will we? You know, we've been that desperate to have kids, we haven't stopped to think what it'd be like with them. Well, we won't know that until we have them. Yeah, but we've got plenty of mates with them. Oh, kids. They make a noise, they keep you awake, they stop you from going out. And the responsibility, well, that's with you forever. Kids are forever, not just for Christmas, you mean? Exactly. And what sort of mother am I going to make? A brilliant one. I loved my mum, but she was a terrible mother. And what sort of father are you going to make? I'm good with Scamper. Scamper is a dog. He likes walks and fetching sticks. It seems to me like you're trying to talk us out of this for some reason, Jude. Why? I'm just trying to look at it from all sides, that's all. No, no, it really is excellent, Deirdre. A talented cook as well. As well? Well, as well as, um, as well as everything else. <laughs> no, I really can't believe my luck. Oh, you are right. It's just a bit spicy for me, that's all. <laughs> it's all the chilies. They didn't tell you how many to put in. <laughs> You know, um, you never did answer my question about a girl in every port. Uh, they're called stopovers. Oh, it doesn't have quite the same ring, does it? No, there hasn't been anybody at all since the divorce. Why did you get divorced? A flight out to the Far East with a two, three-day stopover, you can be gone for the best part of a week. And uh, when you're on call, you're off at short notice. I just think she got bored. Have a drink? Oh, no, no. Better not, I'm driving. You don't have to. Not if you stay the night. I don't want to, um, rush into... Well, before we're ready. Well, I'm ready. I tried to get to you before you left, Rita. Oh, well, go through, love. All right, right. Sit down. No, I'd, I'd, I'd rather stand. By gum, you've got this nice, haven't you? It's like a, a girl's bachelor pad and the wallpaper. Very relaxing. Jack, I can't imagine you've taken a sudden interest in interior decorating. No, no, no. So? So, we, we've got a deficit at the Rovers. It's because of an error with the VAT, you see? Yes. I had heard a rumour. Well, I don't want to put any money in the bank's pockets or any loan shark, so I was wondering, I, I thought, if I give you the opportunity of, of giving us a loan, I mean, naming your own interest rates, of course, I mean, how you want. How much do you owe, Jay? Seventeen. Hundred? No, a thousand. Seventeen thousand pound, Rita. It's Nigeria, one of the long-haul flights we do an overnight, so uh, it'll be a couple of days before I see you. Oh, well, I'll be thinking about you. As soon as I get back, I will do that. Bye. Take care. Well, Grandpa wants you all to himself. That'll be fun, though, won't it? Look, are you sure this holiday's a good idea? Of course it's a good idea. Why? Because 
course it is. I know, but you've only just got back. It seems daft to be going away again. Yeah, but I'll be going away with you, won't I? Just us on our own. Anyway, we're going and that's it. Come on, girls. Let's go on a shop today. Uh, no, tomorrow I am. I've just got a little bit of catching up to do today. I said I'd go shopping with Judah Mallet. All right. See you later. See you later. Come on, then. Cup of tea for you. Unless you've started on the beer already. No, I was just going to taste it myself. Right, we'll get this down you first. Aye. Got any breakfast this morning? A piece of toast. First thing your Vera's going to say when she comes back, you know. Have you been looking after him proper? Made sure he's fed himself? Oh, come on, Betty. If she was worried about what I was eating, she wouldn't be going on flaming holiday, would she? <laughs> Some holiday. Knowing Tricia, she'd have your Vera looking after them kids while her and that Ray go out enjoying themselves. Aye, I dare say. Look. Look, between us. Will she have a pub to come back to, love? Don't fret, Betty. I've got it all in hand. You keep saying that! No, I didn't think it's all right. I reckon I've, I've got it sorted now. Just, just keep your, your fingers crossed. It'll be all right. Right. Go on, or you'll be late for work. I'm going. Are you going to eat that or what? No, I'm not that hungry. I made that for you special. Well, nobody asked you to. It was supposed to be a treat. Well, if you're not going to eat it, don't chuck it in the bin, give it scamp. I'll eat it. I'll eat it. Just go. Hey. When you get pregnant, you'll have to eat proper because then you'll be eating for two. Gary. What? Ooh, hang on. Hi. Hey, come in. Thanks. Good morning, Judy. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? We're going shopping. Oh, right. Well, I'm just off to work. Sally, see if you can talk some sense into her. Get her to eat that breakfast. See ya. See ya. Yet. No, that's why he keeps mithering me about eating my breakfast. And doctor said I couldn't eat anything after 11 o'clock last night. Oh, yeah, cos you're going to be having an anaesthetic, aren't you? I do think you should tell him, Judy. I mean, it's like a proper operation, this laparoscopy, do they call it? Yeah, laparoscopy. <sighs> you ought to tell him, Judy. They put you right out with this, don't they? No. I keep hoping I never have to tell him. I mean, Gary's dead keen on having kids. If it turns out that I can't, because of me, because of my abortion. You mean you haven't even told him that? No, I haven't. And I hope he never has to know. Well, it's your decision. But if it was me, I know what I'd do. Kevin and I tell each other everything. We don't have any secrets from each other. Why not? Chris won't walk in. Maybe not, but Sally might. Well, what about my place? <laughs> when? Whenever. Can you get a few hours away this weekend? Say you're going to a match or something. Well, you know my dad's on to us. Just got a box clever at the moment. And what are you saying? That he'll tell Sally? No, not if he thinks it's over. But I've got to watch what I'm doing. Well, all right, then. We'll be extra careful. Someone else as well. My dad's gone to Sal. Said he'd have the girls for the weekend, so she's geared up to a weekend away. What, just you and Sally? Just the two of you. What, like a sort of a second honeymoon sort of weekend? Look, it wasn't my idea. No, but you didn't have to agree to it. Oh, no, so what am I supposed to say? Sorry, the girlfriend won't like it. Oh. Hey, Natalie! I'll uh, sort your invoices out after. You do that. Get on me, with Does he work for a living or what? Steve. Can't get a job, so I'm told. Hmm. Well, that's his own fault. He's going to end up inside again. He's exactly the type. I suppose you feel sorry for him, don't you? Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. Why? Because he still fancy him? No. You used to fancy him now, didn't you? Yes, Alan, that is history. Good. Let's just keep it that way, OK? There's no need to worry. Laparoscopy is routine these days. For you, maybe. And it should tell us what we need to know, what the problem is. 
if there is a problem. I think I'd be best off not knowing. Oh, no, no, no. It's always better off to know what you're dealing with, good or bad. Yeah. All right. OK, let's get it done. Is your husband in the waiting room? No. He's at work. My friend is, though. Shall I tell her to wait? Come back or what? Whatever suits her. But if she's here at about two o'clock, you should be ready to go home. And by then, we should have a lot more information. OK, I'll be there, right, Monday. Yep, see you. Success. You got an order? No, but I get to see the buyer on Monday. Orders are harder to come by. So I see. This it? I thought you were supposed to be the super salesman. I am. You're supposed to be an ace designer. And what does that mean? It means don't shoot the salesman. If the gear is right, I can get rid of it. If it's not, the best speeder in the world won't shift it. The gear is right. Yeah, most of the time, but it seems to be an uphill struggle trying to get it off the ground. Listen, why don't we try an experiment this weekend? Eh? I'll take the stuff to one of the markets and... Oh, yeah. And I know what sort of market you're on about. Down market. That's what you're talking about, isn't it? Cheap and cheeky. Cheap and cheeky. Hey, a good sales line, that. Yeah, not bad at all. Mike, I'm interested in a quality product, not a pile of jumble on a market store. Yeah, well... Think about it, that's all. Oh, hello, Sunshine. You looking for me? Uh, no. Ange, she fancy some lunch. That's right, we're yeah. You don't have to ask his permission. He's my partner, not my boss. Come on. Just, uh, think about it. Sure. I've been thinking about the horse. Ours, you mean? Betty's art shot? No. If you've got three shares, I've got two, eight all together. What about it? Well, I know you'd love to have a majority share all You've only been begging me to sell my shares for long enough, haven't you? So, all right, go on. You've talked me into it, if the price is right. See, the horse ain't racing, is it? It stood standing in a stable, stuffing its face. I'm buying enough of its dinners already. I say, I'm paying enough already. Now, when the horse starts racing again, then I might be interested. Well, when it starts racing again, I might not be selling. You might be selling for less. I hear you owe the vat man. Who told you that? Alec Gilroy. Why don't you get yourself a good creative accountant? Rita, what can I get you, love? Um, no, I just want a quiet word. Right, understood. Yes, Betty, you're in charge. Will it come through, sweetheart? Right. Don't you like a drink anyway, vodka, landlord's bottle? Uh, uh, no, thanks. It's just a flying visit. Right, well, come through anyway, love. Right. Now, well, come into the living room, love. Right. Right. You go and sit there down. Thank you. Jack, I've been thinking hard about what you said. I have an all. Now, say I was to pay you back this loan so much a month, on the dot, regular as clockwork, Hang on. then... Jack, we're friends, I hope. Well, of course we are, as far as I am concerned. Good. Because one thing I've learned since I've been in business, and it's this. People who lend money to friends sometimes end up losing it. Sometimes they don't. But what nearly always happens is they end up losing the friendship. No, that, that wouldn't happen. Not, not with me and Vera. Oh, Jack, that's why banks are best for borrowing off. Keeps everybody's feelings out of it. If I lent you this money, I'll tell you what had happened. We'd end up falling out. No, we wouldn't. We would. No. We would, because every time I come through that pub door, I'd be weighing up trade, worrying, wondering whether you were making enough to pay me back. You and Vera be standing there thinking, oh, God, she's here again for her money. Or worse, if it weren't for her, everything would be lovely. No, Jack, that's why it's best left as it is, with you being glad to see me when I come in, knowing I'm going to be spending my money. I am sorry, Jack, but the answer's got to be no. Hi. <laughs> That's it, Betty. I'm finished. I've tried everything I can think of. Now tell us. I'll have to sell the pub. Oh, Jack. I don't have that kind of money put by, lovey, but... Well, if I did, I'd help you. Aye. Right. Rita would be last up. There's nobody else round here got that kind of money. Hey. What about him at the cafe? That Roy... What's his name? Cropper. Cropper, yeah. They say he's got plenty. Yeah. Sister Judy Mallet's notes, please. Thank you, sister. 
Hello. How do you feel? Okay, I think. Oh. Yes, you'll be sore for a day or two. Do you feel at all groggy? No, I'm all right now. Well, you can go home whenever you like. Your friend's waiting. And if you come back and see me next week, we can discuss your results. Mr. Hudson, can you tell me now? Well, we do need a full consultation after I've had the results of the tests. Can't you tell me something now, please? There's a blockage in the tubes. Are you still collecting those labels? I am. And they're mounting up quite nicely. I should have known. You're the type. The sort of person who collects things. Oh, you're quite right. When I was a small boy, I, I collected all sorts. Foreign coins, stamps. I had a wonderful collection of jam jar labels. You mean the labels off pots of jam? What was the appeal of that? Well, I mean, at this moment in time, looking back, I, I, I couldn't honestly tell you, but I, I was very keen at the time. I had a green gauge and apricot. It was quite a rare item. Hello, stranger. Don't often see you in here these days. Ah, oh, well, you know, it is. Trade's just that good at the Rovers, you know, that busy, it's fantastic. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear somebody's doing well. Oh, hi, it is. It, 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 it's like a little gold mine. Do us a cup of tea, love, will you? Now then, Roy, my old butt, how are you? Oh, very nicely, thank you. Do you see, with, with you not being much of a drinker and not coming in the Rovers much, you, you wouldn't understand how, how, how well we're doing, would you? By the way, what are you doing there? Oh, I, I'm collecting these tokens. It's on the chicken chunks and turkey trenchermen. I'm after the free holiday weekend in Paris. France, you know. Holiday for two, isn't it, Roy? Who are you taking with you? Do you know, I, I, I hadn't considered that. I shall have to give that some thought. Well, I thought with all your money, you wouldn't be going after free trips like that. Well, my mind, you, I mean, I suppose, that, that's how you, you get all your money to build up, isn't it? Oh, I haven't got money to chuck around, Jack. Oh, it's all gone into this place. What, all of it? Oh, every penny. But seeing as you're doing so well, I hope you'll come in and give us your custom regular. Well, it's, um... For, it, for, it's... for five pounds, Jack, not four ninety-nine. I could do you a mixed grill like you've never had. Now, can I tell you? Ah, well, uh, I, I've got to go and see the, the doings. Uh, see, you, see you, Royal, I'd I. I'm going to have to go soon. Yeah, kids will be coming home. All right. And thanks for coming, Sally. Are you going to go up to bed? No. Gary comes home from work and finds me in bed, he'll start asking all sorts of questions. Surely you're going to tell him. He's entitled to know. I don't want to. I know what it'll do to him. I know what it'll do to both of us. But Judy, if he cares about you, and I know he does, this could bring you closer together. He wants kids. And if I can't give him kids, then maybe he'll find somebody who can. Gary's not like that. Look, it's better to tell him yourself than letting him find out because he's bound to sooner or later. Will you stop pushing me? Sorry. Listen, you won't tell anyone, will you? Not even Kevin. Don't tell him where you've been today. I know exactly what he's after. Who? Who? Him. Old liver and lights, Fred Elliot. He's after this shop. Don't be ridiculous, Mother. Oh, yes, it's the same with all the men that go for you. It's the shop that attracts them. Oh, oh am I glad to see you, Sally. I'm being nagged to death here. It's for her own good. Are you all right for working tomorrow, love? Oh, yeah, I'll be fine. I just had things to do today, you know, catching up on things. Just need a tin of baked beans for girls' tea. Hi, Sally. Oh, hiya. Glad to be back. Oh, yeah, I really missed Kevin. Have you been working at the garage today, then? Yeah, doing the invoices, but I've just finished. I'm off home. Just thought I'd better get some up for me supper. Mm -hmm. Bottle of vodka, please. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you come and have your tea with us? No, I couldn't. Yeah, of course you could. Well, that's very kind. You sure I wouldn't be in the way? No, will yek. Hey, Maureen, you better make that two tins of baked beans. You see, if we try to gear around a couple of markets, we've got two benefits. Such as what? Well, one, cash in hand, and don't knock it, sweetheart, it's what pays her wages. And two, we get to know what the punters like or dislike. Uh, call it market research, if you like. Mike, you're just taking us down markets. I'm interested in the top end. All right, don't get emotional about it. It's a trouble with you, will you? Right, girls, won't I? 
And am I ready for it? I didn't see that, Janice. You good? How many are you nicking? Oh, just odd one or two. I try him out on me block. See what turns him on. Up to now, they've all worked a treat. Well, you want to be careful, because if Baldwin catches you, it'll be your knickers in a twist, not his. Follow me. Hiya. Hey, Dad, Tom. Hiya. Hi, Dad. Uh, Natalie's just come round for a tea. Oh, yeah. Poor Kevin. He has me all day at work and now he's got me in his house as well. Well, I'm just glad that you two get on as well as you do. Cos Kevin, he might be quiet, but he does like to get his own way. Him and your Tony, they were always falling out. Well, I must be easier to get on with. Cos me and Kevin, we normally see eye to eye, don't we, Kev? Yeah. Hey, listen, I was just telling Natalie about us going away this weekend. She knows a really nice hotel. It's the, the Bell up near Borland. She stayed there once. She was just telling me how great it was. It was wonderful. Dude, I'm home. What's up? Nothing. Hey, didn't eat that breakfast I made you. Hey, you're off your food. You're not pregnant, are you? No, I'm not pregnant. All right, all right, I'm just asking. Well, it's a waste, is that? If you didn't want it, you should have given it to Scamper. Where is he? It's in the backyard. He was getting on my nerves. Have you been out for a walk? No. Oh, blimey, Jude. Oh, will you stop nagging me? I'm not feeling very well. Well, you were well enough to go out shopping with Sally Webster. You're quiet in here tonight, Jack. Mind you, Vera's not in, is she? That lowers the decibel counter fair way. <laughs> Have you got those books of yours straightened out yet? My books are always straight, I think. Oh, not what I heard. Look. I'm only trying to be helpful. If you want me to cast an eye over your accounts for you, just say the word. If I said the word that comes to mind, Alec, you wouldn't like it. You see, you just can't help oh, some hey, people. Well, oh, don't say I didn't offer, That's and I'll right, tell you this, it? there was never any trouble with the vat man in my day. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. You heard from Tracy lately? No, no well... Not for a week or so. No, me neither. Oh, well, I suppose she'll write when she wants something. Yeah. Have you told her about the current boyfriend yet? No. Oh, I just wondered, since uh, the judge by where he evidently spent last night, the friendship seems to be blossoming remarkably quickly. Ken, if you keep your opinions about my friends to yourself, I'll do the same with yours, OK? As a matter of fact, he's very nice. I told him about you, about how you were going to be needing a job, and he said he could ask and see if there's anything going at the airport. So, and what did he have in mind? Baggage handler? The aggravation I've had from my mother today when I told her I was meeting you for a drink. Why she objects to me? Well, I can't fathom. It's not just you, Fred. It's any man that takes me out. You see, <laughs> she claims that they're only after one thing. <laughs> Fred's not interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you what? What gives you that idea? I said, what gives you that idea? I may be past the first flush of my manhood, but I can assure you, Maureen, everything's in good working order. I say, good working order. No, no, Fred, I didn't mean, um, that. You see, her theory is that any man that shows interest in me will ask me to marry him to get his hands on the shop. Oh. Well, I said friend's got his own shop. I see. I mean, I know it's ridiculous, but she's so infuriating. Well, this time she happens to be right on button. Pardon? Not about being up to the shop, no. Oh. But, yes, I want to marry you. Oh, Fred, you don't. Certainly, you're a very handsome woman. Oh, Fred, come on. Anyway, I've been married twice before and both times were a disaster. They say third time lucky. Fred, will you stop it? Marriage is out. I just want to be happy. Right, come on, girls, let's get you back. And I'll do the washing up. No, Natalie, leave it. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Anyway, I'll get Kevin to help me. Oh, what the hell do you think you're playing at? I'm not playing at anything, Kevin. I thought you knew that. Look what are you doing here. Are you trying to split us up? Sally invited me. I accepted because I wanted to see you and I thought you might want to see me. 
What was you doing telling her about that hotel we went to? You're playing games, Natalie. It's doing me head in. If I can handle it, so can you. Look, you might want to live dangerously, but I don't. Yes, you do. Fred, are you sulking? Sulking? Not in my nature, no. Anybody who knows me will tell you. I am known for my sunny disposition. Well, good. Because I don't want you to think that I'm rejecting you. But you see, I don't like to be hustled and, and pushed into things. I just want to leave things as they are. Ah. Well, if you say so, we'll try that way, for now, any road. Hiya. Hiya. I'd uh, offer to buy you a drink, but all I have is the price of a pint. Correction. Uh, half a pint, please, Jack. Will you make that a pint, please, Jack? I'll get these in. Right, Louis. I'm not looking for charity. Good. So how's the job wanting going then? Lousy. Round here, anyway. I've heard of something in Birmingham, though, where a bloke called Harry Bell uh, runs a big T-shirt business, which is up my street. I hear he wants someone. In fact, he's asked me to go and see him. Oh, well, that sounds hopeful, doesn't it? Thanks. Well, I haven't got the fur. I'm skint. How much is it? Well, 30 quid would do it. Right, I'll tell you what. I'll, uh, I'll lend you 30 quid. You pay me it back when you get the job. All right, you're on. Evening, Jack. Hi, Harry. I'd like a large vodka and tonic, please. Right, right. And will you have a drink with me? I will, all right, right. Good. No hard feelings, then? No, no. I suppose I'd feel the same way as you do if I went in your shoes. About lending money, that is. But suppose it was a different arrangement. How do you mean? Now, suppose I said to you, how would you fancy buying a piece of this place? Like a partnership. Hang on, let me get this straight. You're offering to sell, what, a half share? 50-50? Could be, yeah, yeah, 50-50, yeah. You interested? You might be. Yeah, well, all right, there's no might about it. I am interested. Tell me more. Now we're talking. Go get a drink. Well, I'd like to help you, but I can't, can I? If I don't know what it is that's wrong. Who says it's out wrong? You don't have to say it. You just have to look at you sat there. Honestly, Kev, I don't think I've seen you smile since you got home. Come on, Rosie, let's get going. Sophie, let's put this coat on. And Rosie, don't forget to take these yoghurt pots in, my dear. What have I got to smile about? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, don't matter. Yeah, it does, Kevin. What is it? Is it, is it work? Is it me? What? Look, forget it. Leave me alone, can't you? Leave you alone? Yeah, sure, I can leave you alone. The mood you're in at the moment. And does that mean leave you alone this weekend and councillors going away? Right, right, well, we'll just stay here and carry on as usual, shall we? Whatever that might be. Come on, girls, let's get going. Come on, round, hold Sophie's hand, lamb. Swipe. Come on, Sam. Come on in. Hiya. So what time's this coach, then? I don't know. You don't know? Great. Well, there'll be plenty. I mean, it's Birmingham. There's about to be loads, isn't there? No, there isn't. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, good luck with the job. It's today, isn't it? I'll be fingers crossed for you. We're going then, or what? Hiya. Hello. Better look a right mess. We've all slept in. Oh, couldn't if I tried. Half past six, I'm up. Cup of tea, everything a white round. Hey, we'll soon change all that. You want to do what I do? Take home some of this sexy underwear we've been making. Mm, no thanks. Oh, no, honest. It's magic. One look, Les can't keep his hands off me. <laughs> but his diet's night last night. When I showed him what I had on, he came home early. <laughs> and that's never happened. Uh, which one were it? Them little frilly ones over there. You know, with knickers that cut you in half. Go on, stick a pair in your bag now while there's nobody about. Uh, excuse me. What was all that about slipping a pair in your bag? She didn't say that. Yes, she did. And it sounds like it wouldn't be the first time. She were only joking. Yeah. 
Ida, I'm not stupid. I heard what you were saying. You've been taking sets of underwear home, yes? Only one. Uh, that one a reject. Really? Well, let's see it then. Well, I haven't got it here yet. It was because I saw it. Sizing were all wrong. Well, even if it was a reject, you don't just go taking things without checking first with either me or Mr Baldwin. I'm sorry, I, I weren't thinking. She'll be pleased, really, because their Les definitely approves, doesn't he? Oh, yes, he thinks they're fantastic. I mean, it's like market research, really, she's doing. Uh, in her own time? Yeah, well, no more, OK? Yeah. I'm glad it were her and not him. Thanks very much, love. ta -da. Are you on your own, Rita, look? So far. But I was just wondering if there was out a good do to get things moving, you know, like a, get our solicitors together, you know, drawing things up. Because you know what they like, these fellas? They don't like rushing, do they? No, they don't, and neither do I, Jack. I mean, I did say I wanted time to think about it. Oh, yes, yeah, of course, of course you did, yeah. Yes. Of course you do, yes, yes. How much time, love? Well, a bit more than I've had. Right, well, I've, I've got to be honest. I got a letter from the VAT this morning saying I've got 21 days to pay up. Oh. Well, look, I promise you, Jack, I'll let you know in plenty of time. Right, fair enough for you. I mean, because, I mean, from what you said, I mean, we're always there, aren't we? You, you were keen. I I'm interested, yes. In, in fact, you, you'd almost made your mind up, hadn't you? Almost. <laughs> Just don't rush me. Morning. Oh, morning. Oh, morning, love, Hello, morning. Jack. Yes, right. Now, don't forget anything you want to know. You give it a shout. I will, I right, will. Right, girls. Bye, bye. Anything you want to know about what? All will be revealed when you come back off your holidays. Look, why don't you take the day off and get your packing done? Oh, because I've already done it. Several times. Right, I'll see you tonight. Yeah. Monday. I'll need some time off. Well, that is when we're going to go and see the doctor again, get our results, innit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, I'll tell him I'll be in after lunch. But we'll want a chat on that afterwards, won't we? So I'll take day off. I'll just tell them I won't be in. What mind? They can mind all they like. This is important. This is a little Judy or a little Gary we're talking about here. Right, I'm definitely going now. Bye. Bye. Hi, it's me. I'm ringing from the shop. No, nothing's happened. Except I can't stop thinking about this morning. Well, when we cancelled us going away, don't tell me you've forgotten. Now then, hold me out, stocking. How are you this morning? You're wasting your time. She's gone to the old sailors. Which one? I can't remember. Did she say when she'll be back? I haven't the faintest idea. Well, has she, has she got anything on this evening? No. Well, you've been extremely helpful, Maud. Thank you. And it's no use leaving a message, because at my age I can't be relied on to remember. Yeah, Maury, let, oh. me. let me... Oh, sorry, it is heavy. Oh, Sally, can you come and help me with the unloading, please? Oh, right, yeah. It's just that I just need to pop on for ten minutes because something's come up. Something needs to happen. A chain store to give us a big order, or a feature in a woman's magazine, or... Well, I, I don't know. Well, they could always quote Janice. She took a set home for road testing and gave them ten out of ten. How do you mean? She wore a set she said were rejects. Apparently the sight of her turned her husband into a gibbering idiot. I should imagine he's that already. <laughs> Did you give her permission? Well, no. Oh, then she's sacked. Create it, please. There you go, sweetheart. Cheers. No, Mike, please. But well, you think we're being too lenient? Should we prosecute as well? I don't think we should do either. Oh, come on. I've said she hasn't to do it again. Angie, the minute you let the employees start taking the product, you're finished. She's sacked. If only for the lesson it was set to the others. There you are, love. I'll get it. Thank you. That's it, love. What? I think our worries are over. You won't have to go sell anybody now. <laughs> That's a relief. I've got a new investor standing by, ready to come on board, and don't be asking me to name names, not just yet. Anyone asked if it's Rita? I'm to say no, am I? Yeah. How did you know that? Oh, come on. You took her through to the living room yesterday. Not hard to guess what that were all about. Well, don't go telling anybody else, will you? Nobody's liable to be asking. Please, Mike, don't. They'll know it's me that's told you and I'll feel awful. So what do we do? Let her get away with it? Well, I've said to you she hasn't to do it again. 
Yeah, but have you really told her? Have you laid it on the line what's going to happen to her if she so much as takes an inch of material through that door? Well, I will do if that's what you want. Yeah, but not just her. I want a lot of them to hear it. They will. Thanks. This can't take long. We're snowed out over there. Kevin, what's happened? I know I've been away a long time, but now I'm back, it's like you're a different person. I just can't get through to you. But we need time just to get used to each other again. Which is why I said we should go away. Yeah, and then you said, no, we shouldn't. Yeah, well, if I said that, it's because of the way you were. The way I were? I'm exactly the same as I've always been. Oh, no, you're not. And I'm not the only one who says that. I wasn't going to tell you this because he asked me not to. But your dad phoned me last week. Said how much you were missing me and that I needed to get back. That's why I'm back sooner than I said. He rang you? Yeah, but you don't have to get mad at him. He'd obviously seen what I've seen now, that you've changed. Look, I haven't changed. And he had no right ringing you either. I just want us to be able to talk like we used to do. What do you think we're doing now? Kevin, you're doing it again. You're pushing me away. Yeah, well, happen I have to, Sal. I'm a working fella. I haven't got all morning to discuss what you're feeling, what I'm feeling, and work to do. Now, if there's nothing else, I've got to get back. Right. I'll see you later. And they really will give you a trip to Paris if you collect. And how many is it? Uh, Eight hundred. Well, it's what, it's what it says, and I've no reason to disbelieve them. Well, you see, they base their calculation on the average housewife who has no chance of collecting that many, whereas uh, we have. Hi. Hi, Liz. I'm not too late for a bit of dinner. No, you can join your son if you like. What's he doing here? Hey, I thought you were on your way to Birmingham. Ah, uh, no. I, uh, I changed my mind. Decided not to bother. I'll just order something to eat and then you can tell me why you decided not to bother. Right. Something I want to say to you. Something me and Mr Baldwin have been talking about. Now, I'm not accusing anyone of anything, all right? This applies to everybody. And it applies to some of you more than others. Nobody is allowed to remove anything from this building. Not a piece of cloth, not a thread, and certainly not a finished garment. Anyone found doing that will be sacked on the spot. And there'll be no exceptions, no excuses, and no second chances. If you found removing anything, you'd be out. Got that? Have you, Janice? Yes, Mr Baldwin. Carry on. Well, I think I've said it. OK, thank you. Get on with your work now, please. I thought you were leaving it to me to say it. Well, I did. Oh. Apart from a bit of support. I thought you did very well. Sounded like the voice of authority. Sounded like you, you mean. From what I gathered, this were a really good chance of a job, and there won't be so many of them. I know. So why didn't you go? Were it because of Fiona, or that you just couldn't be bothered? Well, mostly because of Fiona, yeah. I just don't want to go anywhere until I know for sure it's over between us. She's engaged to somebody else, Steve. Most people would take that as a pretty clear sign. Yeah, but I wasn't around then, was I? Now I am. I think she's having second thoughts. Has she said something? Oh, it's just an impression again. Like last week, when the boy in blue was away, she invited me round for a drink. Honest? Mm -hmm. Well, I do like Fiona. I always have done, but... Well, why she bothers with him? He nearly had me killed over that Fraser business, you know. And he wouldn't have cared if he had. Yeah? Well, see, I think deep down Fiona knows that. She knows what he's like. She's just refusing to admit it to herself. I know what's going to happen. I shall be the one nobody wants to sit next to on the coach. 
Oh, you will if you talk like that. Ah, just the fella. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, one of these, please. Uh, Mavis, well, um, could you just go and sort that stock room out? It's looking a right mess. Well, I only did it yesterday. Did you? Well, could you just go and do it again today? Thank you. No, only I'm thinking of making a financial investment in an institution you know more about than anybody on this planet. I do? Well, you used to be the landlord. Oh, I see. Jack Duckworth's been round again, has he, with the begging bowl. Look, well, I'll give you the same advice as I gave you before. I've nothing to do with it, not a thing. And if you see him coming again, buy your door. Hang on. You don't know what the deal is yet. Deal? What sort of deal? Well, I'm not just lending it to him. I'm buying into the business. Rita, no. No, no, on no account. Oh, I wish I'd never told you now. That's not proper advice. You're just prejudiced against Jack and Vera. Listen. Have you committed to yourself? I mean, is there hope down on paper? No. Well, I'll keep it that way and we'll have a little chat later. Oh, go on then. Uh, so you're seeing him again tonight? You know I am. I think you've taken leave of your senses. Mm. Right, see you on Monday. Yeah. Oh, no, um, I've got to put a note through Bill's door. Have you got anything I can write on? Mm. Have you? Oh, great, thanks. It's just that, well, we've changed our mind about going away this weekend, so we don't need him to babysit. Oh, what a shame! Yeah, Kevin would rather stop here and get on with his work. You oh. know what men are like. No, she doesn't. She hasn't got the faintest idea. Well, maybe you can go out for a nice meal together instead, eh? Yeah, I hope so. Nobody knows less about men than our Maureen. Well, I mean, you've only got to look at them she takes up with. <laughs> All right, see ya. Yeah, bye then, Sally. Bye. Right. I'm going to phone for your taxi. And you can go home early. I don't want to go home early. And I don't care. I said that I work tomorrow. That won't spoil out, will it? No. I thought I should, seeing as I'm having Monday off. Barry, there's something I've got to tell you. What? And you're going to hate me for it. I know, cos I hate myself. Well, go on. Well... You know when you thought I went very well? Well, that was because I'd been back to see Mr Hutton and I'd had what they call the laparoscopy, which is where they look inside you and check that your tubes are clear and everything. Why didn't you tell us I would have gone with you? Yeah, well, never mind. Point is, they're not clear, which is probably the reason why I ain't got pregnant. Well, is there out they can do? No, wait. I haven't finished. I've got to tell you everything. I've got to. What? Well, the reason this has happened is... ..because I had an abortion when I was 16. And I got an infection and that's what did it. And I'm really sorry I didn't tell you. I don't know why I didn't tell you. Abortion? Yeah. Before I met you. I'm really sorry, Gary. I told you you'd hate me. But, uh, you're all right, aren't you? There's no um, long-term complications. No. That's the main thing. But it means we can't have a baby. And it's all my fault. Oh, yeah? Nothing I can do about that, is there? Look, stop worrying. I'm looking after all that. All right, all right, if you must know, I am talking to someone who's good as said they're going to lend us the money. Right. I'll tell you when it's all done and dusted. Look, it, it, it's somebody we can rely on. No, it's not a money lender. So will you just give all worrying and get on with your flaming holiday? Hey, come on. Would you like to yes. sit down? I'll get us a drink. What would you like? Uh, I'll have a vodka and tonic, please. Right. I'll sit here. All right. Uh, evening, Jack. Amazing, isn't it? Our wives can put the fluence on you, even if you're here and she's in Mulk. By gum, you must be doing well if you could afford to send her on holiday. Oh, we're not doing badly. What can I get you? I'll have a large Irish and a vodka and tea, please. Hi, mate. Uh, pint, please. OK. How did it go? I was wasting time. 
He said he'll consider me, but uh, there's nothing this year. You want reasons? Yes. Number one, he's been running this place how long? 18 months? And he's already that many thousand in debt. That's because he didn't understand the VAT. That's reason number two. Reason number three is it's Jack Duckworth. Number four, he's married to Vera. And number five, you're not the first person he's asked, are you? No, that's like I'm saying. No, he it... went to the bank. They've obviously looked at his income, taken into account how much he already owes them, and they've said no. Come on, Rita, how many reasons do you want? Did Joyce know about this? She helped arrange it. And then you wonder why I didn't tell you. I suppose at first I were ashamed. And I thought, well, it didn't matter. Why should I tell you? And then, when it did matter, when we started to try for a baby, then I were too scared. If you want a divorce, I won't fight you. I'll let you go. Did he say that you you couldn't ever have kids? Not ever. Was he as definite as that? He said it wasn't likely. Not without treatment. And even then it might not work. Well, we wanted to know, didn't we? Yeah. But I knew already. Deep down, I knew before we ever went. So what happened then? Hey, uh, another pint, please, Andy. And uh, what are you having? I'll have a white wine and soda, please, but I'll get these in because you can't even afford your own bus fare. Anyway, how's it get on? No good. Right. He's a mate of mine, so uh, he says he'll try his best. But I don't think I'll be moving to Birmingham in a hurry. All oh, right. Yeah, sorry. What? Sorry, I won't be moving. No, sorry you didn't get the job. But you don't mind me staying? Steve, I don't mind where you are. Why should I? No. I hope I didn't offend you by, um, talking about looking to be wed. Oh, no. Only, I'm not going to be proposing every other day. It's just that... Well, I, I, I like to think that it might happen sometime. Anything might, mightn't it? So, it's not put you off seeing me? No, neither has my mother. Though she's tried hard enough. Oh, Good evening, Rita. Hello. Can I get you two something? Yes, uh, we'll have another large Irish and a large vodka and tonic, please. Right. Yeah. Table service now, is it, Jack? <laughs> Only for special customers. Well. You've talked me into it. Or should I say out of it? I'm only thinking of your own good reader. Well, I can't tell him tonight. It'll have to wait till tomorrow. You have to be firm. Make it clear it's your final decision. Otherwise, he'll do everything he can to make you change your mind. Well, he'll be wasting his time. <sighs> Sorry. Upstairs, get to the kids. Look, I've just found this note from Sally pushed under my door saying that you don't want me to babysit because you're not going away. Yeah, well, why not? Well, I hope this has got nothing to do with that tart that you call your business partner. Look, we're not going, Dad. That's all you need to know. No, Kevin, it isn't all I need to know. I need to know whether you've come to your senses or not. I need to know whether you remember the vows that you took to that woman who's upstairs now, seeing to your two kids. Yeah, the one you phoned up in Scarborough telling her to come home. Don't deny it because she told me. Why should I deny it? Yes, I did. And do you know what, Kev, I'd do it again. I'd do anything I could to save this marriage. More than you, by the looks of it. Just leave us, can't you? Anything what needs to be sorted out, me and Sally will do it. Nobody else. Yeah. Do you know something, Kev, you're probably right. Yeah. Give us a call, eh, if you want me for babysitting. Hello, Bill. I had voices. See you. What's all your dad? Now, why should they be? They just seem peculiar. Yeah, well, we all do to you, don't we? This morning it's what's up with me, now it's what's up with him. 
Have you ever thought it might all be down to you, all this? Me? You go away to look after your mum. Your sick mum who never raised a finger to help us. Not just for a day or two, no. You go for weeks and weeks. Leave me to look after Rosa, the house, and trying to run a business and going down a twist in the process. Then you come home when it suits you. How should we have all a day away? Catch up with one another. We'll catch up with this, so. Anything what's happened to this marriage has happened because of you. Because you cared so little about it, you couldn't even be bothered to be here. He's happy. Oh, put him outside. It's filthy. Where's he been? In canal. Canal? On this carpet? Here, Val. Here. Here. Oh, not in here, Gary. Out the back. You leave him. Might bring some life into this house. Why didn't you wake me? Didn't know where you'd gone. You'll have to get used to that, won't you? Huh? Not being told. Well, first, fair, you started it. Gary? Gary what? Gary, be nice. Gary, don't make a scene. Well, that'll walk, not in front of poor dog. Come on, scamp. Save your ears. Gary, please, we've got to talk to each other. Talk? You mean honest and open? You don't know how. Well, what do you want me to do? Bore me eyes out? Make me feel like my dad would have made me feel if he'd have ever found out? Like a dirty little scrubber? I'm not your dad. Oh, you men have it so easy. You've got all the names for us, haven't you? Scrubber, tart, like I bet you have, Gary. You can bet what you like, but I never left a girl in trouble. And how do you know? The lad who left me didn't. But you did, though, didn't you? And you deliberately didn't tell me. That's what chokes me, Jude. All this time pretending. Having me worry. Thinking all sorts. I'm calling you a liar. You're a liar. Which video did they choose? Back on babe again. Oh, heck. I was going to do them pork sausages for the tea. I'm going to have to do them pizzas now. Look, Sal, what I said last night, I was just worked up. I didn't mean it. Yeah, you did. And you were right. We shouldn't have to put my mum first. She should live down the road like your dad, and then there'd be no problems. Anyhow. Mind you, I say that, but from what I heard of you two last night, why was he on it, yeah? Ah, same as last time. Why not spend less time working and more time with you and our girls? <sighs> we can't win whatever, can we? You know, maybe we should have a break. You really not want to go away. It's not a question of wanting, is it? We can all of us want more cream on our cake, but it's practicalities, isn't it? Well... I'd rather wait until you've got on top of things. Well, that's what you'd rather. I was thinking of you. Then that's marriage, isn't it? At least we both know what we're working towards. Yeah. Anyway, if you're not going to be late tonight, why don't you go and tell the girls that we'll take them out for a pizza? Did I turn the grill off? Uh, no, you didn't. I did. You did? Yeah. Well, if off means off on your cooking switch. Right, so it's, it's definitely off then? Yes, unless you turn it back on. No, I only turned it on once. Well, I turned it on. So it's off then, yeah? Right, it's off. Come on, so should we be? We should be off. Who's the winner, eh? Yeah, done a massy. Hey? National Trust, it's out all the way. Ah, see. Lovely walk, lovely lunch, you know. See you then. Bye. Bye. Hang on. Look, I said all my face to you last night. Yeah, well, before you chip in again, I wanted you to know... Yeah? ...about us going away. I asked Sally this morning and she said she's happy or not. Did she? Ask her. Oh, well, that's your conscience clear, is it, Kevin? Now, don't kid yourself. You'll only make it right with Sally when you pack in the other one. Five. 
What are you doing? I... Jenny, me! She had to give me heart failure. I thought you'd get popped off. I believe we could have done it all. It's one of the biggest killers is stress, you know. I suppose all you got to do is wait and worry. Just read me number two out of that boot there, Billy. Eh? Hey? Hey, well, I've finished me number one, aren't I? Where'd you pick this up? Never mind. Hey, it's for pregnant women. Betty, just read it. Oh, right. Uh, number two. <gasps> Let pleasant thoughts flow through your head and freely associate. Richard Sullivan. 17,000 quid. Our Vera smiling. Oh, I just saw her in the street. Who you just seen now, Vera? No, not Vera, Rita. She said to say she's coming in later. Ah, oh, right. When later? She just said to say she's coming in later. Well, how did she seem? Did she seem worried? Keen? But it's, it's just normal. No, what's flipping normal, Betty? Well, normal, you know, herself. Oh, dear Lord. Hiya. Oh. Busy giving it a coat of uh, looking at. Hey. Look, I'm off for a pint. You ready for one? Still got a load of paperwork to do. You look like you could do with a large scotch. Yeah. Not now, thanks. Kev, are you alright? Yeah, fine. I'm just. Just tired, that's all. And I drink won't help. Try talking about it then. I'm your mate, aren't I? Yeah, maybe if you wasn't, I wouldn't be in this mess. Probably wouldn't be, would I? Still be boring family man, Kev. Hang on. What are you saying? Forget it. No, no, just a minute. If you're talking about what you're up to with Natalie, that's got nothing to do with me. All right. You told her I was going to a club with you and Ange. What? Why did you do that? Kev, I told her because she asked me. He knew what she was after, as clear as day. You know, I never thought she'd get it, did I? Not from you. I thought you'd soon suss that one out. Yeah, well, why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? Why did you come across the road to warn us Sally was coming home? To stop Sally from getting her, Kev? And you? <sighs> Look, what you do is your business. But you're making a big mistake if you think I'm in favour of this. If I were you, I'd drop Natalie like a shot. Yeah, easy said when you're not me. But you can't think anything of her. Not compared to what you got with Sal. I can't compare them, can I? What do you mean? Natalie's something else. I never felt like this with Sal. Kev, don't be mad. You've got a whole life with Sally. You've got kids. Natalie's not worth risking all that for. I might not feel that. Think about it, eh? Well, you've still got a choice. Go for your pint. Yeah, well, I might see you later. Hey, our lovers. I hope she comes in soon. I'm wearing earplugs. 140, please, son. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'll have a pint of bitter, please, Betty, and some change for the machine. Oh, you're feeling lucky. No, just wild. <laughs> What's the most important thing, eh? It's getting a job, innit? Yeah, but I can get a job and get her back as well. Oh, this is classic, this is. I bet you that if she was waiting for you when you got out of it, you'd be bored of her by now. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, you would. It's the allure of the unattainable. It's a complete waste of time. I tell you what's a waste of time, her being with that plunker. Okay, well, if I had your record, mate, I'd watch myself. Well, don't worry, I'm not going to start a fight, am I? <laughs> you have to, will you, eh? Wave your rag and he'll stitch you up backwards. Look, well, I know the law. And they know you. Look, well, you don't get it, D. Andy. I'm not going to take her off the smiley face, kid. He's going to give it to me. That's the plan. I hope the door's going. Is it? No. <laughs> Afternoon, Alec. Ah, uh, hello, Betty. Love her, me usual, please. That all up. Very spruce, Jack. Hey. Or are you setting new sartorial standards in this house, which I must say is not a bad idea? Kind of it's a comment, Alec. We aim to please. Same again, son, is it? Yeah, and a couple of packets of crisps, please, right, Jack. Right. There you are. Oh, thanks, Betty. Yeah. A lovely Rita not been in yet today, then? No, no, not yet, love. Uh, <laughs> may I ask why you ask, Alec? Why? Do I need a reason to hope to see her? Just wondered. You seem a bit jumpy, Jack, a bit mithered. Do I? Yes, not your usual mellow self. Missing the other half. Oh, of course, yes. Uh, dear Vera, the hand on the rudder. <laughs> hey, oh, the door. Ah. 
retail of... I was just saying, I hope I hadn't missed you. A uh, large vodka and tonic, is it? Uh, no, thank you, Alec. Oh? Uh, can we have a quiet word, Jan? We certainly can, Rita. Come through. Come on round, love. Après vous. <laughs> <laughs> Sit yourself down. Hey. Old Gimlet Eyes Gilroy. You know, he reminds me of, you know, the old cartoon in the war years. You know, the nose over the wall. What? No tidbits? You haven't told him anything, then? Me too, I am certainly not. Or anyone else. About me, I mean. Even our Vera doesn't know about you, lovey. Good. I'm glad. Of course, till it's all signed and sealed. But you hardly look as though you've come to disappoint me. Well, I always did make a good entrance, Jack. What? You mean you're still having to think? I've had a very long think, Jack. A very serious think. And I mean this. You and Vera have done a grand job here. Much better than people expected, if you don't mind me saying. What are you saying, love? What I'm trying to say is... I've been tempted. I have. And I want to thank you for giving me the offer. You're making me sense of a, a butt. A very big butt. Well, for what reason? It's just me. I just can't be sure it's what I want right now. And I'd have to be, wouldn't I, for all our sakes? Well, it, 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 is that what you want to ask me? I am sorry, Jack. I hate to let you down. But it just doesn't feel like the right move for me now. Right. Well, that's it. Back to square one. Is there anyone else you've got in mind to ask instead of me? I've only got one thing on my mind now, love. It's a big bottle of scotch. I just can't win with you, can I? Mike. Well, what is your problem? I mean, explain it to me. Just explain. It's not a solution. I think it's a peach of a solution. It's not a good design solution. Just one moment. When did I ever mention about changing your design? Mike, polyester is not a cotton jersey. I said a polyester mix. Which is not what I've designed for. Well, OK, it's not PVC, is it? I can't see the difference. Where's your argument? I'm getting a bulk deal for a, a pinch of the price we're paying now. Why say no? Because I care about quality. And what if I can't find a market for that? Well, try harder, Mike. That's your job. Oh, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. Thank you. Maya, guess what? Just won the jackpot on the pub fruit machine. Chris, we're busy. I've hardly won a cent before. I wasn't even trying. I'll be making a cup of tea when you finish chatting. Yeah, I must have about 50 quid here. I thought we'd go for a spree. Please, Chris, I'm in the middle of a meeting. Yeah, well, hurry up and finish it then. Well, for God's sake, listen, will you? I've said I'm working. OK, there's no need to shout. Well, don't come in here hassling me, will you? I've got enough on without having to amuse you. Fine, well, I'll go then. Well, what the hell don't you think? What's up? What are you doing here? Can I come in? Please. Hail the chief. How did it go? Not now. A little Irish in there, Alec. Is Rita joining us? Rita, no, no, she just got out of the back way. Huh? What did she do that for? Alec, who am I to question a lady's whim? Is it a large one or a small one? Uh, no, no, I think I'd best be off, Jack. Cheers. How do you? Must be a bit cloudy, that then, will you, mate? Eh? Hey? Well, you make an awful heavy weather, haven't you? Oh, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. What's on your mind? It's me and my memories. Did you tell Gilroy about my deal with Rita? Hey? Well, he knows some of it. What did he say? Me? I said no. Well, I swear Betty someone else. Well, what is it to tell? I mean, what did she say? She's pulled out. I'm wondering now if she's been nobbled. I don't know how other blokes cope. They must get a kick out of it or something. It just gives me a headache. Well, that's probably because you're nicer than most. I'm not. I like to sell a lie to me, Dad. I'm 
just as bad as the rest. I hate myself. Then maybe we should stop. What? Maybe we should put an end to it. Or I should end it for you. Well, I'm the problem, aren't I? And I'd rather give you up than see you tear yourself apart, if that's the only choice. Evening, ladies. Oh, hello. Um, chocolates. Something special. Oh, lucky Deirdre. <laughs> uh, they're behind you on that shelf, look. Okay. So you're our new fella, are you? Is it true you're an airline pilot? Oh, I'm just a glorified taxi driver, really. Oh. Away with you. I bet you look a right dream in your uniform. <laughs> Don't you, Maureen? Oh, yes. Ooh, that's £5.50. <laughs> Dearest Swiss. Thank you. Yes, well, they're worth it, though. Shall not snip at them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You, what do you like? I'll ask you the same. Me? But here you are with Deirdre in that hotel. She comes away with an airline pilot. All you catch is that fat Fred Elliot. Honestly. At least we'll know we took our chances. We had some good times. Don't forget them, Kev, will you? I know I won't. It's funny. I remember as a girl watching old weepies. I could never understand why the lovers had to give themselves up. I used to think, what for? Why don't you just run away and stay together? It's not as easy as that, is it, Kevin? It's what you put your heart into. Your family, your friends, your work, your home. And then you can't just run away without leaving yourself behind. You know you've got to go back to her, don't you, Kevin? You lose your kids. You lose who you are. So just flame and well go, will you, while I'm still in one piece? I love you. I don't care what it costs, I want to stay with you. No, thanks. Did you spend your winnings, then? I gave them to the first beggar I found and I hope he's having a good time. You find it easier to be nicer to strangers, you, don't you? Look, Chris, you came in at a terrible time. I had a fight on. Mike's messing with one of our lines, cutting corners and botching my designs. And I've told you before, when I'm working, I'm working. Why can't you grasp that? Maybe I can't take underwear as seriously as you. Oh, is that it? Well, designing is what I care about, Chris, no matter how trivial the product, because I happen to believe bad design trashes people's lives. Please. We are talking knickers here. Yeah, well, you join Mike Baldwin then, cos all he cares about is a fast book and never mind standards. Yeah, well, at least he's honest. Oh, I must have read you wrong from the start, then. I stupidly thought you had ideals, too. Did you? Yeah, or were you just in Africa to see the sights? Oh, stop trying to justify yourself, Ange. All you care about is your own ambition. People don't matter to you unless they fit in with your plans. Well, fine. You do what you want to do. Just don't try and kid yourself you're doing the world a favour, will you? When did you land? Touchdown just after six. How come? I thought it was going to be tomorrow. Are you complaining? No, no, I'm just in a whirl. Well, I had the chance to change flights and see you sooner, so I took it. Here, for you these. Oh, John. I've really missed you, Deirdre. I've missed you too. There you go, Bobby Lad. So, Alan on the job front then, Stephen. Alan on the horizon. Well, it's harder than I thought. Well, have you been down the job centre yet? Eh? Hey, what? Part time? Two quid an hour? Yeah, well, any job, like it's a start for you, isn't it? Yeah, well, not if I'm still as worse off. It's just getting me down, Dad. I just want to, want to earn a decent lifestyle. Decent lifestyle, I see. Is that, the, is that the new phrase for decent living, is it, these days, eh? Look, I, uh, I don't suppose that 
Job offer with you and Bill would still be open, would it? Large scotch, please, Jack. Yeah. I'll have half with you. Oh, day off, eh? I've forgotten what that feels like. <laughs> what, you be sharing the load? Now you've got a, a partner. More like doubling the aggro, if you ask me. Hello. I hear you're having a dose from the customs and excise. Bad news, travels fast. Well, you've got my sympathy there, mate. At least with partnership problems, there's scope for a bit of give and take. But the fat man, oh, it's a case of cutting your vein and letting them suck. Have you any idea what you're asking me now, Stephen? <sighs> well, just tell him I was still adjusting. And what's the guarantee you're not going to walk out again, eh? Because I'm not that, I promise. Do you know, you don't have to wind me up, Stephen. Honest to God, you do. Oh, look, Dad, give us a break. You want us to go straight, don't you? I pleaded with a man to give you a chance to go straight. Look, I know I'm what you've been on in the past. Yeah, then. yeah, right, OK. But if you let me down this time, honest to God, I lump you, Stephen, so well. Oh, I didn't want to worry you. No, that's all right. You're worried, aren't you? It's just that he said he wouldn't be late on tonight. Mm. We're going to take the girls out for a pizza. Have you rung his up, or? Yeah, I did, but there was no answer. No, he must have gone on a call out. Yeah. I just wish he'd rung me to tell me. Hey, uh, I bumped into him earlier today. Said you'd knocked him back over going away. Yeah, well, he's got too much on at the moment. He wouldn't be relaxed. Well, it might make him realise how much he's been missing, eh? Maybe in a few weeks' time. Mm. Anyway, look, your babysitter's ready whenever you want him, love. Thanks, Bill. Sorry, Sal. How did a breakdown come up? I was worried about you. I'd phone your dad to see if he'd seen you. One of my old ladies got stuck at her sister's. Bust exhaust. Oh, well, she could have rung the AA. She was worried she wouldn't get home in the light. That's how you wind up tiring yourself out. Mm. Anyway, I'm home now. Right then, more wine? No, I'll have some a different vodka and tonic, please. Cool. Nice trip. Um, yeah, lovely. Hey. Hey, Fee. Trip, eh? Where do you reckon they've been? Some poncy park, innit? Look, uh, you couldn't give me an advance on my wages, could you? Fifteen quid. What was the other love? Oh, it's uh, vodka tonic, ice and lemon. Right. I've uh, got a surprise for you. Okay. The uh, 30 quid you gave me. Thanks for uh, getting me out of a hole. Right. I, uh, I, I didn't go for it in the end, though. I weighed it up and I thought it was too far away. I want to stay local, you see. Hi. What was all that about? Right, I'll be off. Aye. Uh, go steady on the scotch, eh? They all reckoned me and Alveda weren't fit to run a pub, didn't they? Proved them right. Made a right flaming mess of it. No, don't give up, love. There's still time. Oh, come on, Betty. Who's kidding her way? I can only see one option open for me now, Betty. Pack us bags and sell the old flaming shebang. <laughs> Christmas undies on. Why? Well, they say you've got to wear a decent pair if you want it, doctors, or in case you get knocked down by by a bus. They're not going to be probing around with us today. We're just going to get the test results. Don't know why I'm bothering with them anyway. You what? A couple like us shouldn't be having children anyway. Eh? Not if the father thinks the mother's a liar, amongst other things. Let's just go and see what they have to say, eh? Well, what's the point? You've already made up your mind that it's my problem. Jude, I'm sorry. When you started going on about... me having a kid out there somewhere running round... Oh, I don't know. That was the position I was put in. Yeah. I just wish we'd met sooner. Dear. Well, when I thought about you going through that on your own, I got angry. And it just came out all wrong. But today, you've got me, right? And whatever they say, it's our problem. We'll face it together. For better or worse, eh? All that stuff. 
Come on then. Let's get it over with. Yep. Hey. So, who cut your hair last? Ah, uh, Vivian's. Never heard of him with the leg pull. ISB wing, strange ways. Vivian's 15 stone and uh, covered in tattoos. So if ever you want to change something, I'll put them with you. Huh. Is she around or what? Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, listen, I, I won't take up much of your time. I uh, just wanted to apologise. I didn't want to get you in trouble with your boyfriend. No, of course you didn't. I just wanted to give you the money back as soon as possible. That's yeah, right. make sure Alan knew that I'd lent it to you. What, you hadn't told him? Oh. What bad timing? I uh, must have really landed you in it. Was he annoyed? Steve, me and Alan are still getting married, all right? The only reason I lent you that money was so that you could go and get a job somewhere else far away from here. What, you've got a problem with me being around, have you? Don't flatter yourself, Steve. I wasn't talking to you. Look, Yaji Chant, you messed it up. That's why she's living with somebody else. That was well put, Maxie. Well, I have my uses. Thanks. Still, I would have preferred to hear all that coming from you. Morning, Jack. <laughs> Morning, Betty. I take it no miracles have occurred overnight? No. I think we had our miracle when we landed this place. I just expected it to last. Oh, you're not sunk yet. <laughs> is that what you said to Bet, is it? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> you know, it might have been better had we not seen any of this. At least we wouldn't have known any different. Do you know, it, it made our Vera standing behind this bar, but she always thought that everybody expected us to fail. Well, we have now. Yeah, well, you're right. I'm back in business. Underwear. <laughs> well, it's different, isn't it? Why, well, you got something for me? Well, um, I'm always interested. Ran it past me. I see. And, uh, what sort of, uh, order are you looking at? Yeah? Yeah, 35,000. I think we can manage that. And um, what's your deadline? Oh, no, 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 that's no problem, no. Listen, uh, what are you doing for lunch? Well, I, I just thought we could meet and discuss the details. Yeah. Yeah, I know what that is, yeah. Yeah. OK, one o'clock, I'll be there. OK. See you, mate. Bye. Did you just say 35,000? I did. Men's, women's, which range? Oh, uh, something new. Oh, I better sharpen my pencils then. Yeah, you better. Mind you, I don't suppose they'd be the same shape and size as those. Not many people are. So, who's the client? Dutch Army. Are they a band? Are they going to prance up and down on stage in our bits and pieces? The Dutch Army. What, Dutch as in tulips? Army as in hup, two, three, four, guns and stuff. <laughs> not in my underwear, they don't. I know I made a fuss about quality, Mike, but they're not bulletproof. You always turn down things that could be good for you. I'll get the details over lunch, then we would decide. Rita, you paid for this lot and then you just left it behind on counter. Fresh sign, you know that. <laughs> oh, people do it all the time. Are you stopping? No, no, I can't. I've got to get back. Oh, I better put more tonic with this vodka in future, Bill. How are things at home? Do we know? Well, I've offered to have the kids so they can get away somewhere. Yeah. Sally thinks that Kevin ought to be concentrating on the job more. Mm. Any sightings of her? Mm, not with Kevin, no. Oh, well, it's fingers crossed time then, isn't it? You're not bothering the wee girl, are you? No. You do know if you upset your man, you're going to upset her. Yeah, I realise that, yeah. So you have to look forward, Stephen. You can't keep looking backwards. I mean, Fiona had to after you married Victoria, so she did. Yeah, well, don't remind me. Well, what about work? Is there anything happening? I've, uh, I've caught a few odd numbers, yeah. People remember me all right, but it seems to be half the problem. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, hello. Thank you, Betty. Right. I see he's not getting much joy out of the job today. No. You didn't pay for the last lot, did you? In fact, the atmosphere's not what it usually is in here, come to think of it. Uh, has he managed to sort out his problems with the BAT? No, he hasn't. 
shame. Keep the change, Betty. This place was a dream come true, you know, for the duckies. Talk in the past, Betty. Oh, I think it's the end for them. Let me have a word. See if my experience can shed any light. Oh. Not your experience, the need, love. <laughs> you know, Steve got himself a job yet, Jim? No, no luck so far. I thought he was thinking of going working with you. Yes, well, he did have grander ideas, but I think reality's beginning to set in now. June. June. Don't say anything, Gary. I can't stand it. Well, what did I tell you? Home, eh? That was this morning before we knew. Jude, we're going to go through this together as husband and wife. Sure, but I know how you must really be feeling. Well, don't cry like that. You'll make yourself sick. All the tests really prove is that, well, that we're both fit and healthy. Yeah. Apart from the fact that my tubes are completely knackered. You'll be all right, Jude. You just don't get it, do you? You want babies. You can have babies. You've married somebody who can't. <laughs> Divorce. Do you want a what? You've always been certain about having kids. I've never been that keen. Till now. Now I know it can't happen. If I'd have had the one I was going to have, I'm nearly ten now. It wouldn't have been mine, though, would it? It's out of the question. With me, anyway. Will you stop trying to marry me off to someone else? I don't want anybody else. Besides, it's not strictly true that you can't. Can you remember what the doctor said? She said it was my fault. She said no such thing. She said we've got a problem, that we can have an op, and then... Everything might be all right. Might be. Might not be either. Listen, you've already conceived once. And now we know that all my gear's all right, don't we? So we've just got to get you sorted. Then we might be as right as rain. We could start over again. This is different. Do you hurt me? But you don't even fancy me now you've heard all the things that are going on inside. I'll manage. Come on. Oh, you're <laughs> cheating! <laughs> are you sure? Are you absolutely positive? Then where had all the other cards gone? No. I think you do. I think you do. And I've got a good idea where them cards are as well. Uh-huh. I thought as much, you. Hey. Ah. Play again. Uh, sorry, sweetheart. I've got to nip out for an hour. Oh, you never said. Your tea's nearly ready. Well, you and the girls have yours. I'll have mine later. Well, they can have theirs and I'll just wait for you if you're not going to be long. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm hoping not to be. Is that a new shirt? It's you. Yeah. Hey, uh... Got it while you was away. Oh, it's nice that. It suits you. Thanks. Right, I'll uh, I'll see you later. Look, uh, I should be on for about eight o'clock. Is. Kev, you haven't said where you're going. I'm just nipping out for a drink with Tony. He's across from Leeds. All right, you're going down to Rovers. No, he uh, don't want to go in there. You know, with Judy working behind the bar. Yeah, of course. All right, see you later. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Bye. Do I look like I've been crying all day? You look gorgeous. If you want to stay and have a few, then I don't blame you. What I'm saying is, I'm not going to go on at you if you do. I don't come in here for the beer. I come in for the barmaid. Put each other down. <laughs> <laughs> Where will it all lead? Hernia support? Surgical stockings? Strange, but mass-producing military wife fronts was not a major career aim of mine. Do you think it was mine? No, yours was perfecting the three-hour business lunch. Well, it sure as hell wasn't about sitting in a corner being creative while someone else kept the money rolling in. You can laugh all you want. But we've got wages to pay. Sell my range and you can. What I did today was to give us enough breathing space to do just that. 
And there's nothing to stop you picking up the phone or getting out there and doing a bit of the legwork. Seems like I might have to. Oh, wonderful, marvellous. You get the orders rolling in and I'll be the first to take my hat off to you. In the meantime, direct your artistic thoughts to these specifications. You got a job yet? No, have you? Hi, Bill. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, you? Ah, could be better. How's that, then? Well, look, I know my dad's asked you, but uh, getting established is just taking a bit longer than I thought. Uh-huh. And I know I don't look capable, but I used to like uh, helping my dad when I was a kid. I was just wondering whether that job was still an offer. <laughs> Your dad said. He said, you're ready to stay out tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Cheers, Bill. Same again. Ah, uh, not for me, thanks, Jack. I'm uh, working in the morning. <laughs> Is that right? You betcha. Hey, Jim and me won't say no. We've got a new Labour working for us now. Cheers, Bill. This road's mine, William, all right? Yeah, family bailing you out again. I couldn't help but over here. <laughs> then again, you always did rely on nepotism. That's a big word, Alec. <laughs> Not as big as redundant, though. You don't have to keep watching him, you know. Well, just like there's no need for him to keep tracking my girlfriend. Fiona did have a life before you came along. They were close once. When he was inside, he asked to see her a few times and she went along. I was very grateful. Well, he's out now. He can have any friends he likes. He doesn't have to choose her. And what if she chooses him? Or is that not allowed? I very much doubt she wants to keep in contact. Are you sure? He's been over already to see her a couple of times. Well, the, uh, the salon's a public place. No, at home. Perhaps you weren't around those evenings. Maybe you were out working. Jack, I was wondering if uh, we might have a word, you know, later tonight. What about Alec? Well, uh... Hey, if anybody reminds me that I was already in here at dinner time, they're in big trouble. Well, you get no complaints from the management about that, lovey. Alec? Uh, no, serve, uh, serve Rita first. I'll, uh, I'll catch you later. I don't believe what he's done there. I just don't believe it. He loves getting on the end of that phone and telling his crummy old contacts he can click his fingers and do anything they like. Do I get consulted? Oh, no. I'm meant to think he's ever so clever. I'm meant to think it's all for me own good. I hate the way he justifies his petty little deals. Did he get a deal, then? Oh, biggest one yet. Well, then he has been clever. Uh, excuse me, what happened to the capitalism lecture? Oh, yeah, I forgot that goes out the window when you play the fruit machines. Hey, don't take it out on me. Listen, you've got no idea what he's wished on us. Mike Baldwin loves to patronise little girlies like me. Cracks on he knows everything and I know nothing. He talks to me like I'm five years old. Well, that makes a change. It explains what you do when you come home, then. Oh, let's have the age conversation again, shall we? That'd be novel for us. If I thought I'd come under fire like this every night, I would have stayed in Africa. That's pathetic. Whenever you're losing, you remind everybody how you've been around the world and done your bit for society. Losing? For your information, my time in Mexico was no four-star hotels, you know. I roughed it for months. I saw poverty and hardship. Ooh. Mm, not that it was a patch on your experience. <laughs> Can't remember what started all this. Mike Baldwin. <laughs> Mike Baldwin. Oh, hey. Don't ever let him know his name works like an aphrodisiac in this house. And then again, maybe it doesn't. I'm going out, I think. Oh, OK. Yeah, why don't you phone up some of your mates and let off some steam with them? Yeah, good idea. Might just do that. Yeah, well, have a good time. You too. Oh, well. See ya. I won't wait up. No. Out there, you were looking as though you might be needing this. No, oh, I've got a long night out of me yet. Aye. Doesn't get any easier, does it, the older you get? <laughs> Doesn't that. I mean, look at me. With young pups like Deirdre coming up, snapping at me heels, what hope had I? Deirdre wasn't chasing your job, was she? No, not really. To be honest, my career at Sunliners hasn't entirely been smooth sailing. <laughs> To be honest, I didn't think it had. Anyway, it's all in the past now. Mayor? Oh, yeah. At least I didn't walk away empty-handed. What about you and Vera? 
you got a contingency plan? Have you set yourself up in any kind of pension scheme? No, no. No, Ali, we've got out. Everything we had went into this place. Uh, this was our security. When I was here with Bet, we oh, thought it would be forever. Ali, 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 please, don't start giving me that guff about how it was when you ran it. I mean, I was here, remember? I heard it all. Uh, there was never any fooling you, was there, Jack? This VAT mess, you know, it was her. It wasn't down to me. Ugh, women. They're all right out front there. I mean, Bet was the best, but behind the scenes, day-to-day -day running of things, hopeless. I, uh, I imagine you sometimes wish it was all as simple as when you were cellar man. <laughs> the way we were, eh? The old days. I said as much to Betty this morning. What? What if we could go back? As I say, I've got my payout from Sunliners. What exactly are you talking about, Alec? I'm talking about solving all your problems in one go. Uh, taking this place off you for, let's say, what, 34,000 buildings and business? And that's what you'd be doing, wouldn't you? Taking this off me? Uh, well, now, hang on. Just think about Look, it. Just a minute. Come on, how could I tell Vera? Well, I'd keep you on. Your jobs would be safe. And without all the hassle. Where is the pride in that, Ali? Uh, Vera and I got on very well when you were in hospital. Not that flaming well you didn't, Lou. We, we think more of the rovers than than just a couple of jobs. It's our home, our life. My grandson was born in this very room. Yes, sir. I know, I know how you're feeling about it. I mean, I can respect that, Jack. Can you? Hey. You've been playing a waiting game, haven't you, Alec? You conniving, scheming little. You always flaming I've been. Nobody else will come to the rescue as quick. Get out of my house, Alec, while I still own it. Well, that might not be for long. You're a fool, Jack. You'll lose it, and for less than my offer. And I'd be happy to do so, you have got some gall. And I better come and check whether you paid for these flaming drinks or not. Hello, there. What are you doing? I live here. Oh, no, but I thought you were working tonight. Yes, I thought so. Got there, found out not. So I turned straight round and I've come back here to remind us both that we are getting married. Oh, right. Mm, great. <laughs> come on, then, get your coat. Well, we're going out. Yeah, that's all right. Um, well, yeah, that's fantastic. OK, uh, you're going to have to give me a few minutes to do something with myself, OK? What's the matter? You seem a bit, uh, uneasy. It's the word married. Still makes me go all funny whenever I hear it. Why? It's not that much different from what we've got now. No, I thought you were working. I didn't particularly fancy being on my own. Nice. <laughs> I guess who got his roster mixed up, turned up for the wrong shift. <laughs> well, I guess that means I'm on the reserves list oh, again. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to spoil your evening. That's OK. You've probably made hers anyway. I'll give Ashley a ring. You just phoned Ashley and told him that you're far too busy to see him. Well, I'll phone him again. Oh, do you have to go? Yeah, in a minute. I'm sorry. Well, is there going to be a next time? It's up to you, isn't it? Well, you're the married one. Yeah, and you're the one who has to put up with it. Do you want to put up with it? Listen. I've been thinking. You're not going to leave her, are you? No. And we haven't had a lot of success splitting up. We haven't, no. So, I think I'm going to have to share you with your wife. Carry on as before, see each other when we can. You all right with that? I mean, no, Anna. There's no change in the fact that I've already deceived her. I'll provide the place. You have to provide the plausible excuses for getting away from home. And is that how it's worked in the past? Kevin! No, I'm serious. I've never done this sort of thing before, have I? Yes, you have actually mentioned that once or twice. I'm sorry. And if you say sorry one more time, I'm gonna have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you realise it's never gonna be gold bracelets and fancy restaurants with me either. Yes, I know. I do the books. Anyway, shouldn't you be going? Your tea'll be on table. Hey, you got a dig at me? 
No, I think it's probably a dig at Sally, actually. The odd comment might slip out occasionally. You'll have to allow me that. No? All right, then. Try and be a good girl. I'll see you. Yeah. I'll wait to hear from you. Oh, it's been a lovely visit, Sally. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, well, it was lovely to see you, wasn't it, Rosie? <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you don't know what you're doing for your tea, I'm only waiting on Kevin to have mine. No. Where is Kevin, anyway? Oh, he's just gone for a drink with Tony. You remember him. Natalie's son. What time is it? He said he'd be back by eight. Well, he's only just gone. <sighs> Will you stay? No, you two have a night in on your own. Invite me some other time. We most certainly will, won't we? <laughs> right, come on. Let's say good night to Rita. Night, Rita. Night, Rita. Good night, darling. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Ta-da. See you. Is that with Dada? No, darling. You've seen Tony. I like Natalie. Do you? Daddy likes Natalie, too. Yeah, well, they work together, sweetheart. It's important to get on with people you work with. Right, come on. Up the stairs. Hey, Rosie, did you see much of Natalie while Mummy was away? Lots of times. Did you see her here or over at the garage? Here. All right, sweetheart, you go up to bed. I'll be up in a minute. I'm all late. So was I supposed to call you? No. Look, Ange. Oh, can it wait till this evening? What? Whatever it is. No, I want to get it sorted now. What? Well, the party for one. Is it still on? Oh, I don't know, I suppose so. Oh, well, don't sound so enthusiastic. To be honest, Chris, I don't care. You want a party, you have one. Well, that's not the idea. It's your birthday. Oh, I don't really want to think about it. Angie. What? Shall I find somewhere else to live? What? Move out, yeah. Because I can if you want me to. No. I just want us to go back to square one. Like we agreed. Right, like you lend Lady me lodger. That kind of thing. Only this time we don't throw a double six. So, friends? If that's not too difficult to handle. And if it is? Then, yeah. You do move out. I think I'll stay. It's up to you then, isn't it? Fine. Oh, I've invited some friends over to the party, if that's okay. Friends? Oh, well, yeah, they are house trained. You never know. You might score. Mm, there's a thought. I wish I could return the favour, but I've lost touch with most of the girls from Polly. Mm. Besides, I don't really know what type you go for. <laughs> hey, hope you've got an head for nights. Well, we've got a roofing job. We're going to be ripping slates off all morning. Ah, oh, yeah, catch yourself on. That's no problem, Stephen. Sure it's not, eh? Uh. Of course, uh, they're used to ripping slates off, aren't they, in uh, Strange Aye. <laughs> <laughs> no offence, lad. Right, come on, that's it. Let's get going. Uh, yeah, we'll need sky hooks, though. Oh, why? We can't go roofing without sky hooks. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll send Stevie out to build his merchants. Aye. Oh, yeah, yeah. I suppose you want me to get some long weights as well, don't you? Come on, I'm not that great. I'm like a local copper. <laughs> Sorry, is this any way? If you're looking at the tire, it's not my vehicle. Come here, I want a word with you. That's honest, I'm just trying to run across the bread cuff. <laughs> oh, you're so sharp, you're going to cut yourself. Oh, really? <laughs> I notice you've got your mummy doing your dirty work for you now. Come again. Yeah, she's trying to stir things up between me and Fiona, but it is not going to work. Me and Fiona, we've got it together. Oh, a bully for you and Fiona? Yeah. So it's just in case you were concerned. And if I were you, I'd keep my nose clean. All right. Oh, you really have got a problem, haven't you? Help. Oh. Well, I'd say. Hey, you want this job, or don't you? Ah, 
All right, I'll see you later. Yeah. Oh, forgot my snap. I haven't made it up for you today. I thought you might come on for your dinner. There's something I want to talk to you about. Yeah, OK. I'll see you later. Thanks. Uh, Alex in the bar says he wants a word. Is he now? Well, what shall I tell him? Fetch him in. Oh, right. I'll come straight to the point, and if I'm wasting my time, just help me. If it's the same offer as yesterday, forget it, Tullock. No, it isn't. Uh, I've been cogitating on the matter, and the bottom line seems to be that you need £17,000 sharpish. Correct. Whereas I, as it happens, have a similar amount of money in my building society account looking for a good use. Go on. So, how does Gilroy and Duckworth sound to you? Partners. 50 50. And that's my final offer. For £17,000. On the nose. Double it, and I might be interested. Double it? 34,000. <laughs> Not a chance. Mm. 30 then. So, you, you would consider a partnership then? Mm. 20. Be realistic, Alec. I am being. See, I'm in a privileged position, Jack. As a current customer and an ex-landlord, I know what kind of business you're doing. No, I'd say 20 was a fair offer. 25. Tell you what, let me go away and think about it. I'll speak to my accountant and do a few sums, but I'm not going a penny over 25,000, because it's far more than I was intending, Jack. Well, I need to know soon, and I need the cash even quicker. You're a tough man to do business with. I'll let you know later in the day, yes or no. Hey, don't use that welder. It's not working properly. I've got to get someone in to fix it. Right. Oh, by the way, the party's definitely on. I've asked the birthday girl. Oh. Right, anyway, so you're invited. Bring a partner. Is that supposed to be funny? No, but I guess it is a bit of a problem which partner to bring. Yeah, but not your problem. Morning. Am I interrupting something? The welder's not working. Oh, sorry. Can't help you there. Right, well, I'll get on then. And I won't use the welder. Should my ears have been burning then? It's just having a few problems with anger. I don't know. These unmarried couples. Yeah, should try having our problems then. Eh? Oh, come on, Kevin. I thought we'd sorted that. We agreed on it. We carry on as before, and I promise not to threaten your marriage. What are you doing now? He's threatening everything. Not if we're discreet. Not if we use my house and I don't spend so much time here. <laughs> You're here now? Yes, but only to ask if you fancy popping over for your lunch. I can't. I've not got time. OK. Well, give me a ring later. Hey, I will do. I promise you. If you'd have said, I could have got you something ready. No, the sandwich is OK. I've only got about ten minutes anyway. Um, do you see much of... Uh... Of Liz McDonald, these days. What, you really think she comes to me for her hair doing now? You lost me a good customer there, you did. But were you two big pals, ever? Me and Liz? No. Not even when you were going out with her son? Not especially, no. So she's not said anything to you recently, then, of? What about? Well, that's just she's, um. She's trying to cause trouble between us. I mean, I think the best thing to do is probably just ignore it. I mean, I trust you, what honestly. I mean, there's trouble? Nothing. I probably shouldn't have brought it oh, up. Oh, no, like come that. on, Alan. You can't just say that out of the blue and then say forget it. Forget what? What's she been saying? <sighs> that every time my back's turned, you invite Steve round here for a bottle of wine. See? Well, well. You don't seem surprised. That's funny. I thought that you would. Hey, what's all this? Better go and wash my hands, eh? Yeah, you've forgotten what a proper meal looks like. I have, yeah. Been living on pies. Yeah, well, I wanted to get something decent inside you. Some fresh fruit and vegetables. Oh, that's what all this is about, is it? Dragging me home? Making sure I get me vitamins? No, I wish it was. What's up? Kevin, I want to ask you something. Since I got back, Things just haven't seemed right. 
I stayed away too long, I know I did, but it's not just that, is it? You've been edgy. Not like yourself at all. It's all in pies. Please, Kevin, I'm trying to say something serious. Can't you see how worried I am? You've been keeping something from me, haven't you? I don't know. Have I? It was just something Rosie said last night. She said that Natalie's been coming over here lots of times. Something's been going on, hasn't it? Do you know what I think? I think she fancies you. Me? Yeah, you. And do you know what made me suspicious? Well, I realised how much time she's been spending over at that garage. She's a partner in the business. Yeah, I know that, but do you remember the first time she ever came round? How upset she was about Tony. How she said that she didn't want to let you down, but she didn't know anything about garages and she wasn't going to interfere. Well, was all that a lie? No, of course not. So what's changed her mind, then? Look, she's nothing better to do. She's a middle-aged lady whose husband's just dumped her. All her friends was his friends now, suddenly she finds she doesn't know anyone. Yeah, except you. I mean, she told you all this, has she, about not having any friends? More than once. There's more to it, though. I mean, from the way Rosie was talking, she's been round here loads of times. Are you sure she don't fancy her? Look, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah, all right, maybe she does. You know, like I said, she's lonely. Is that why you wanted us to come home? Cos she were after you? Then why didn't you say? Why didn't you just let me know what was happening? I didn't know what to do, so. You know, she was coming round here on business, phoning up. Is that all it's been, just business? Yeah, of course it was. But you don't think I'm daft enough to do anything to wreck our marriage? Well, I hope you wouldn't. Anyway, she's not my type. She's too flash. You know, you should know me by now. Yeah, well, folk change, Kev. Yeah, well, not me. And anyway, she's too old. <laughs> Sounds like it's been a nightmare. It has been. And is it still going on? No. I've told her I don't want to come around the garage anymore. Has she taken the hint? Oh, she's promised. <laughs> right, come on, let's eat this before it goes cold. Do you know, Kev, I knew there was something up. So all he is is just a friend? Nothing more to it than that. That's not what Liz MacDonald was implying. I can't help that. I mean, that's down to you. Why is it down to me? Well, you were the one that got on the wrong side of her when she nearly got her head blown off. Oh, how I am not having no, that. No, all right, all right. But that is the way that she sees it. So, of course, she's got it in for you with any ammunition that she can find. So, what you're saying, you're saying it's just like a cosy drink and a chat? Did I say anything about it being cosy? No, but whatever it was, you thought it was best not to mention No, it. Alan, whatever it was, and I have told you what it was, was just not worth mentioning. Didn't you think I'd be upset? Not so I'm, I'm not allowed to talk to any unattached men between the ages of 17 and 30 now. But this is him. And in our flat. He's your ex-boyfriend, he's not just anyone. Of course it's upset me. And I'm jealous. I admit it. And he knows it. God, he's revelling in it. What's he said? Oh, you know he is. Every time he sees me, he's winding me up. That cocky grin and his, uh, his smart ass remarks. Alan, don't let him get to you. Look, whatever he or his mother might say, there is nothing going on between us. I promise. Honestly. Here we are. Uh, hey, relax. It'll be stuck in traffic. It's over an hour, Liz. It's usually early. Well, there'll be some reason. He'll turn up. Yeah, that's what's worrying me. Willie. I mean, how well do I know the fella? How do you mean? I think I've been stood up. So what do you fancy for a gold cup, Jack? Pound win on a 17,000 to one outsider. You've lost me. Never mind. You've seen out of Alec Gilroy today. Today? No, can't say I have. 
What's up with Jack? Oh, he's been like that all week. Uh, pining for his lady wife. You reckon, dear? Oh, yes. Yes. He's missing his connubials. You take my advice, young man. You make a while the sun shines, if you get my meaning. When you get to my age, the opportunities get very few and far between. Hello, Maureen. Hello. I hope you haven't been avoiding me. Well, whilst she's not looking... I thought, Who? My mother. I've told her I've gone to the loo. Shall I fetch some drinks over? No, no, she'd insult you. She'd cause an atmosphere. I'd rather be stood here with you. Tell you what. Yeah. Tomorrow evening, come round to the Elliot Mansions for a slap-up meal. I'll entertain you like a princess. Sorry, I'm late, Sal. Go for the paper. Oh, it's all right. Kevin's upstairs. He's just reading Rosie's story. All ah, right. So where are you going tonight? Anywhere nice? Yeah, on it's at pub. So we shouldn't be too long. Hey, 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 hey. You stay as long as you like. You've got a lot of nights out to catch up with. Hey, um, we've had a bit of a heart-to-heart. -heart. Huh. I knew something was going on. Right. Anyways, tell me all about it, and we've managed to smooth things over, so... Well, I'm pleased. Yeah, it was a problem to do with Natalie, you know, that business partner. Right. Anyway, it's all resolved now. Yeah. Hey, Kev, come on. Your dad's waiting. I just thought I'd mention it. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad for you. Yeah. Night, ladies. Uh, night, Fred. See you tomorrow. How do you know? What? That you'll see him tomorrow. We might come in the shop. Anyway, I might buy a pound of tripe. A tripe's the word. All right, if you must know, he's inviting me out to dinner. Where's he taking you? His place. Enough said. Meaning what? You always were gullible when it came to sex. He's a gentleman. He's got his eye on the shop. I don't want to go into that again. Thank you very much, Mother. Fine. All I'm saying is that there's more to it than meat and two veg. Yeah. Look, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you very well. Yes, Frankfurt. Well, I, I don't know, about two or three hours ago. Oh, right, I see. OK, yeah, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Oh. His flight's been diverted to the East Midlands, some technical problem. But has it landed? Oh. Oh, well, as long as he's safe. Liz, my hands were shaking when I was dialing. I'm getting too involved, aren't I? It's worrying me. Oh, I'd go with it. I know he could do a lot worse. But, as I said before, if you do oh. change your mind, just tip me the wink. Hey, keep <laughs> off you. I saw him first. Anyway, just in case he rings, I think I'd better get back to the flat. Oh, right. Well, I'll get off as well, then. Hi. 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 Uh, what do you want, sir? Uh, I'll have a pills, please. Pills, uh, pint of better, and yeah. we pass us the others, Jack, please. Oh, yeah. Um, could I have a word? Yeah, sure. Uh, you go and I'll catch you. Okay, up. see ya. Uh, look, I'm having enough bother with Steve without you sticking your six pen of him. Don't follow you? Yesterday, telling tales to Alan. Oh, no. I told the truth. I didn't know you kept secrets from him. It's not my problem, Fiona. It's yours. Yeah, I was on my way home. Hang on. Jack? Yeah? Vera? Oh, it's not so bad, you know. Anyway, I'll see you when you get back, love. It's all right, thank you. Hello, V, love. Yeah? No, it's all in hand. Don't, don't be worrying yourself. No, no. Luke, love, I'm, I'm very busy now. I can't talk to you. I'll speak to you later in the week, yes. Yes, you and all. Yes. Ta-da. Have you sorted anything out with Alec Gilroy? What time do you make it? Quarter past ten. Oh, well, we'll find out soon enough, won't we? One way or the other. Most likely the other. Once I found out what had happened... Look, I'm sorry, I should have let you know. It doesn't matter. Only I wasn't sure you'd want me phoning you at the pub. Yeah. So, how did you get back? Minibus. What, you and the stewardesses? The crew? It does include a couple of stewardesses. Why do you say it like that? Oh, I don't know. Insecurity, I suppose. Don't you trust me? Yeah. Well, I think I do. I just can't for the life of me think... Well, why me? Listen, there's no contest. Go on, say it. You go for the maturer woman. <laughs> Let's just say... 
I go for you. As simple as that. <laughs> yeah, Jack, thanks. Clash him, did you? As usual. Ah, oh, did she? Get out of it, you go on. See you, Angie. Hey, are you coming tomorrow night? Why? What's on? Party, my place. Oh, yeah, great. Did you know about this? Uh, yeah, forgot all about it. Oh, Dorsey. Fancy him forgetting that. Listen, I want you there, both of you. Great, right, we'll try and make it. Yeah. Thanks, Angie. See ya. Cheers, see you, man. Hello. 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 Large scotch. GNT, please. You've just made it. Angie? No, I'm just off. So how was your day? No, oh, waste of time. <laughs> Great. And you? Did you get that big order from Harrods? What do you think? Mm, sounds like we quits then. Except I had oysters. <laughs> well, how was I supposed to know she'd tell him? Oh, don't come the innocent with me, Steve. I just can't see where the problem is. Of course you can. I know what you're trying to do, and your mother as well. But you are both wasting your time. The sooner that you accept that, the better. What was all that about, eh? Just can't accept the truth, mate. Even when it's staring me in the face. What are you up to, Steve? Yeah. Me, nothing. Can't help it if people aren't honest with each other, can they? Yeah, well, I hope you know what you're doing. Because he's not wanting to be messed around. Ask your mother. Who, the laughing policeman? He's a pushover. Come on, time! Let's have your drinks off! Jack, that goes right through me. Oh, well, there's only one answer to that, isn't there? Get myself off home earlier. I oh, haven't seen that with Gilroy. Alec? No, why? No. Come on, have you got no flaming home to go to? What's up with him? There's ten minutes to go, yeah. Night, Bill. Hello. Hey, I didn't know whether to ask him about tomorrow night or not. See him in the morning if you want. Well, I don't want to take advantage of him, but he does seem dead keen to babysit for us these days, doesn't he? Hey, I really enjoyed tonight. I know it was nothing special, it was just playing darts, but it was a really nice evening. Did you really forget about that party? Yeah, of course I did. Why? Well, it's just that you don't seem dead keen to go. Because I'm not that bothered. Why? You just said yourself we can have a good time on our own. We don't need a party. It's only over the road, misery guts. You'll enjoy it once you get there. Well, I will. You know, it's, it's time he had a lock in. Yeah, not tonight. <laughs> Is he going to be all right? Oh, yeah, don't worry. I'm driving. Nah, nah, Jack. Good girl. Come on, you. Have you turfed everybody out? Aye. Are you going to let me in or what? That depends, Alec. That was my final offer, you know. Uh, yes, yes, you made that very plain, Jack. Well? Here. 25,000 as agreed. I do. My accountant took some persuading. Oh, and I've seen my solicitor. I've hardly sat down all day. Oh, and you'll, uh, you'll need to sign this. What is it? It's uh, just a receipt and uh, a letter of intent pending the necessary documentation. Mm -hmm. Well? Hey, sir. Have you got a spare set of keys? Calls for a drink, Jack, don't you?
Morning, Jack. You're not dressed yet. God, blimey, I'll let you frame out my blaming skin, then. <laughs> Save you having a wash, then, eh? Do you know what time it is? Half eight. Eleven minutes past eight. Oh. Well, start as you mean to go on, Jack. I hope it's not going to be like this every morning, Alec. It's business, Jack. You've got to be on top of your business. Yes, well, I am. Right up there over your head, I can hear every flaming move you make. Yeah, well, the early bird catches the worm, Jack. Yeah, you can finish that, lot. I'm going down that cellar. I'm going to give them pipes a good flush through before we open. I flushed them pipes not three days ago. Yes, well, I'll give them another go just to be on the safe side. Are you insinuating, Alec, there's something wrong with my aim? Not at all. But you're a busy man, Jack. Times have not been easy. And days slip into weeks, and then before you know it, it's all like yesterday. Oh, by the way, I shall be going down to the cash and carry later on. You've no Alka Pops. Very popular with the young, them Alka Pops. There's a good profit in them and all. Alka Pops? Alec, we're running a pub, not a blaming youth club. Jack, 50% of disposable money is spent in this country by the under-20s. I say, let's get some of it in here. Oh, by the way, what time's Betty in? About tennis. Only I've been looking at that menu board. It's a very limited choice. Alec, come on now, do us a favour. We're one thing at a time. We don't want to be upsetting Betty, do we? Why not? She'd be no great loss. Cheer up, Jack. You have a safe business, a new partner. Things could only get better. Ooh! Happy birthday! Thanks. Mum and Dad? Parcel to follow. Mm. Antival, yeah. Klimt, isn't it? Yeah, always had good taste, Antival. 30 Angie, don't despair, older now but more aware. <laughs> mm, if only. Mm -hmm. Oh, croissants. Must be Gran. Yeah, good old Gran. Pay for some of the booze? Mm. Brief, Mike. Baldwin. Mm, Alma's doing, I think. Really? Yeah. No mention of the Dutch army or underpants. <laughs> so, where's the battle going with him, anyway? Oh, I'm losing, I think. I've been trying to set up meetings with retailers all week, but nobody seems that interested. Ange. It's oh. just a little something. Yeah. Thanks. That's the cabin, I'm afraid. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is unusual. It's a real thing, you know. It's not a tourist job or anything. Oh, it's lovely. Thanks ever so much. <laughs> oh. Well, it's not every day you're 30, is it? Have you sorted this party yet? Well, I'll get the booze if you get the nibbles. Yeah, OK. Oh, thanks ever so much for that. It means a lot. Morning. 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 Have you seen this? Oh, must have gone up early. I wonder who's bought it. Well, I'm glad somebody has. Left like this for long and it'd soon be vandalised. You know you're making an exhibition of yourself, don't you? Mother, will you give it to rest? The ridiculous to the sublime. Pip squeaked a pot belly. The only one with an ounce of normality and you kick him into touch. I don't want to talk about this. No, I'm sure you don't. I wouldn't mind if you were casting your net to catch something decent. But baiting your line with this business to land a haddock like him... Well, it smacks to me of desperation. I'm only having dinner with him, not planning a merger. Aye. Well, it won't just be businesses planning to merge, so you watch out. You have a very low opinion of me. I have a very low opinion of him. Mind, you're probably safe while he still has that belly. Oh, my... Hi, Maud. Hi. Hi. Hello, Hi. Sally, love. Hi, everything all right? Well, it is now you're here. Nice to be talking to someone with a bit of sense. How's everything now? You're back settling down to normal? Yeah, everything's fine. All back together again. And that's how it should be. Families shouldn't be apart. Husbands need their wives and kids need their parents. Well, I hope they don't need us tonight because we're going to a party at Angie's. Aye. Yeah, Angie's 30th. Have you got a babysitter? Yeah, Bill's coming round. He's a nice bloke, is Bill. 
And when Maureen should have picked him up and she had the chance. Yeah, well, people make their own choices, Maud. Not always the right ones. Our Maureen's going to a party tonight, you know. Dinner for two with Fred Elliot. Fred Elliot? That's what I was thinking. A drink, maybe. You know, somewhere uptown, somewhere different. Well, what's up with Ashley? He's away for a few days. Oh, well, I can't because I'm going out with Alan tonight. Hiya. Leon, could you fit me in after work, say about 4.30, for a quick cut before the party tonight? Party? I know I don't look it, but it's my 30th. Oh. Well, can anyone come? Within reason, why do you fancy it? Yeah, I'm always up for a party, me. Bring a bottle, then. Oh, can I bring a bottle as well? Oh, hello, Natalie. Didn't see you there. Well, it's funny Chris didn't mention it. No, well, it's been a bit on and off. But, yeah, it'd be great if you could come along, you know. Good. See you later. Any time after eight. Right. 4.30's fine, yeah? Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm all over the place this yeah. morning. <laughs> see ya. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. Great party. Oh, some good-looking blokes there. Mm. Oh, I'm sure they'll be the odd one. All right, uh, three pints, please, Barry, and three hot pots. A rattle. Alec, Alec, yeah. serve the lads a bit while I go and fix them with the oh, food. It'll be my pleasure, Betty. Uh, Sandy, what's all this, eh? Uh, Fu Manchu, as they say, has returned. Oh, is this you back in the driving seat, then? Yes, strapped in and ready for blast off. <laughs> Well, I must say, Sonny, it's nice to see you after all this time. There you go. Well, thanks very much, Jim. <laughs> Trick is here, Wally. You have to go quick. I'll tell you what, Sonny, that there's not a bad wee drop up here. Ah, yeah, well, you've got a proper publican in charge now, Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'll be 4 20 for the beers and uh, pay better for the arm. Right, no problem. So, what's going on, Alec? Because. Uh, Jack sold up or what? No, Jack hasn't sold up. Jack is still very much here. Oh, partners then, boys, is that it? Equal partners. Well, you're a braver man than me, Sandy, that's oh. for sure. Courage is not necessarily a prerequisite for a successful partnership, Jim. Trust and understanding are the real essentials. Well, see. Absolutely. So if you'll take over, I'll nip down to the cash and carry and pick up my order. What order? Those Alka Pops. We did agree, didn't we? Well, we drop on us, go on, don't we, Tim? Where's Chris? He's gone across the Rovers for his dinner. What about you? I haven't got time. Grab a sandwich from the corner shop if I get a minute. Do you want me to get you one? Uh, no, I can do it myself, thanks. Do you like it? Mm, very, very nice. You're going somewhere? Might be. Are we? Aha. Come on, Peter. I haven't got time for games. Well, what have you got time for, eh, Kevin? Hey, come on, get off. Oh, oh, lighten up, will you? Oh, my lighten up. That's my house over there with my wife inside, if you hadn't noticed. So? So, look, just leave me alone. Besides, going out myself tonight. Oh, well, I might see you then, if it's a party. Hey? Just got an invite from Angie. Oh, Natalie, don't go, please. Well, why not? Sally doesn't suspect anything. Anyway, we're the best of friends after the other night. Yeah, well, I don't want to go through it all again, thanks. Do you not want to see me? Of course I do. But not while Sally's around. Oh, I don't know. If we're all laughing together, no one will suspect anything, will they? Anyway, all adds to the excitement, don't you think? What's all this? It's Duncan, he's a DJ. I didn't mean him, I meant you. I don't look like a slob all the time, you know. Is he really a DJ? I thought we'd just stack up a few CDs. It's a party. You've got to have a DJ at a party. Mm. You look lovely. Do I? Very sexy. For a 30-year-old. Well, I'm sure you'll meet someone interesting tonight looking like that. I hope so. I guarantee it. And you better go get the beer. Yeah, yeah. I'm on my way. Bill? Morning, mate. Hey, Rose is in a room, Sophie's in bed, and there's some supper for you in the fridge. Yeah, beers and all. Oh, great. And we won't be late back. Hey, stay as long as you like. I'll be all right. It's nice to see you two enjoying yourself. Right, are you ready then? Yeah, I'll just get a beer. Here, Sally, I've just heard a whisper that Maureen's seeing Fred Elliott. Is that a winning? Well, they are going out to dinner. 
Fred Elliot. What's that say about me, sir? All right, fit to go then? Yeah. See ya. See ya. Hi. Have a good time. I'd say Fred Elliot had an eye to the main chance. It's not just our Maureen's body he's after. Well, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? He's got the meat business nicely sorted. And now he's after dry goods. Hey, they won't go then, you know. Well, I say they will. Well, who's going to buy them? I've told you, the young uns, they sup them like there's no tomorrow. They've had a lot of bad press. What do they taste like? Who cares what they taste like, as long as we sell them? I do. And in future, I'd like to be consulted properly before you go out buying stuff. Well, I did consult you. No, no, Alec. You told me. Right, I'll serve these two. You will serve Rita. Well, I'd like somebody too, if it's not too much trouble. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Rita. Love. Uh, what, what can I get you? I'll have a vodka and tonic, Alec, please. What are you doing behind there, arguing with Jack? Oh, well, it's these damned alcohol things. No, I don't mean what you're arguing about. I mean, what are you doing standing behind there? Oh, I forgot. You haven't heard? Heard what? Well, how can I put it? Uh, I'm back. Back where I belong. Where I should be. Pulling pipes. You mean Jack's taking you on, then? Well, not in the way you mean. No, not exactly. I'm Jack's new partner. I bought a 50% share in the Rovers yesterday. Did you really? Well, I suppose it's inevitable, isn't it? It's what I was born to. What I'm good at. I'll tell you what you're good at, Alec. You're good at lying. And you're very good at deception. What you're not so hot at is friendship. Rita! This beef wellington is superb. <coughs> the secret is in the length of your fillet and the quality of your patty. Most people settle for any old supermarket art end, but I always use the genuine foie gras. Foie oh, gras. Wow. Hasn't, hasn't that got something to do with geese? Geese and great heroes. Oh. Sir Philip Sidney said his idea of heaven was eating pâté de foie gras to the sound of trumpets. Oh. you have to get your bugle out then, eh, Fred? <laughs> There's no answer to that. <laughs> Taught you how to uh, bake pastry? Oh, that my mother. Oh. Years in pursuit of the perfect pork pie. Oh. Recipes are secret, of course. You'll tell me, eh, Fred? Maybe. When your family. Oh. That end as a proposal. Could be if you wanted. I want another glass of red wine. You do like your food, don't you, Fred? Good food. <laughs> Not merely the mastication and consumption, you understand. Mm -hmm. The food is an art. Food is a joyous and sensual experience. You're going to devour me, are you, Fred? You would be the grand entree at my greatest feast. To be devoured only with the, the greatest wine after the titillation of the aperitif and the excitement of the hors d'oeuvre. Do you mean while sharing a plate of beef wellington? Too many riches at one sitting. I may woo you with the beef wellington, but I can only do justice to your particular delights when there's no competition. Does that mean that um, I'm safe tonight, Fred? Who knows? I may decide to consume you along with my mint creams and brandy. Oh. Makes me feel ancient, all this chatting up and drinking. Well, it's one party, isn't it? Do you wish you were still like that? I am still like that. <laughs> I used to feel I like really stood out at parties, and if you haven't got a bloke, then you'd really fail. Yeah, but you didn't leave many parties without a bloke, did you? I didn't encourage them, if that's what you mean. Ah, you encouraged me? Yeah, because I fancied you. I still fancy you. Do you? Yeah, of course I do. I don't often show you, but I do. I wouldn't swap you, Kev, for anybody in this room. No? Not even Chris? Not anybody. 
Oh. I'm really glad that we've sorted things out. Please promise me you'll just tell me in future if there's anything bothering you. Of course I will. Talk of the devil. What's she doing here? I expect she was invited. Hi Sally. Hi Natalie. Kevin. Hiya. You look very nice. Snap. I really like this. Oh, thanks. I got it in Scarborough when I went to see my mum. Right, I'm getting a drink. Anybody want one? Oh, wine please. Red if they've got it. Uh, I'll just have an orange juice please. Kev. You alright mate? Uh, never been better mate. Well, you can have a dance. Feast. Oh. You enjoyed it. I did. Finish the claret. Oh, I'm not, yes. <sighs> then we'll sip something rather special, somewhere more comfortable. I've managed to obtain from my contacts a rather superb Armagnac. Oh, no, Fred, not brandy. Claret's more than enough for me. Claret is the liquor for boys, port for men, but he who aspires to be an hero should drink brandy. You want to be a hero, Fred? You want to be your hero. Oh, come on! Who said that about uh, brandy? Dr Johnson. Do you know you're so well read, Fred? I'd no idea. Do I surprise you? You interest me. And you do make me laugh. Well, that's not a bad start, is it? I'll settle for that. To us. To us. Well, what's all this then? Well, I'd say it was a party. Well, it's not exactly what I expected. Oh, oh, I don't know. It might be fun. Well, there's no one here over the age of 17. Oh, but don't exaggerate. Just get us a drink. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Hey! Come on, old man. Let's get you livened up a bit. Uh, no, I don't want to dance, dance. Really, really. Oh, come on. We're partners. You can have a dance with your partner, can't you? Yeah, come on, Kevin. Have a dance with Natalie. What belongs, Sal? Great vintage. Yeah, I can smell it. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, it's not exactly what I expected. Yeah, but it's fun. Have you made any contacts, eh? Done any good deals? Mike, it's a party. I was only asking. The answer's no. So, all right, I give in. I accept the Dutch army offer. All right. <laughs> all right. Anyways, we thought it was just your Maria copper. I mean, for what? I mean, what do they do? And two, when are they ever there when you want them, eh? Fancy a dance? Yeah. <laughs> There's a small retailer's convention at Arrogate next month. Me and our Ashley's going, and I wondered if you'd care to join us. Well, I don't know. It's very stimulating. I always come back refreshed and invigorated. Would it, would it be for work? Certainly it is. So I'd meet people that was in the same business as myself? Without question. Go on, then, I'll come. Tremendous. I'll fix everything. And uh, just remember, we'll be attending in a professional capacity. Strictly by the book, Maureen. I wouldn't dream of assuming anything untoward. Just to have you on my arm. Just to be accompanied by a... a woman of your beauty is enough for me. Now... Shall we take brandy and become heroes? Enjoying yourself? Yeah. Am anybody interested? Not really. I thought you were moving in on Maxine. <laughs> Joking. Mm. Well, she's a good-looking girl. Yeah. So have you met anyone? Interesting, I mean. Mm, yeah. I met this real fab old bloke. Right. Do you want to meet him? Well, not especially. Oh, come on, he's great. He's in the garden. Oh, no, Ange. No, come on, you know me. It's my birthday. All right, then. <laughs> so where is he, then? Here. Where? You. It's you. You're the most interesting bloke I've met tonight. In fact, you're the most interesting bloke I've met for a long time. And I want you to kiss me. Do I have to? Yeah. Well, in that case...
Well, when you retire or what? Oh, give it a few years. Hey, I tell you what, we did good business from over the road at Angie's Bash. Who went down very well, them Alka Pops. Right. What do you want to do about the tidying up? Do you want to do it tonight or leave it till tomorrow? Well, what do you think? I usually do it the same night. Oh, well, that suits me. New day, new pub, Jack. Right, I'll go and collect some glasses. Then. I'll run some water. All right. Oh, uh, did you ring Vera and tell her? Um, no, I've not been able to get her all day. She must have been out and I've been busy tonight, you see. Oh, well, ring her now. She'll still be up, won't she? I, I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, anyway, I, I don't want to wait the baby, do I? Oh, no, no, of course not. Still, tomorrow's soon enough, isn't it? Oh, I, uh... Hey, uh, she'll be relieved, won't she, to know that the money problems have been sorted? Aye. Uh, I'll bet she'll be surprised when she knows you've thrown your cap in with me. <laughs> uh. You can count on that, Alec. Come on, that oi, oi. That's the way home. Come on. Yeah, keep the noise down. We're going to wake the street up now, do we? Yeah, that's it. What's going on? What are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. Morning. Morning. Great party. Best birthday I ever had. I'm glad to hear it. Mm. Hey. Not like us to string things out into the next day. Yeah, well, I'm getting a bit sick of that. So am I. Hmm. Maybe you have to go to work. I do. Oh. Hey, Kevin and Natalie were a little bit too much, weren't they, last night, dancing right in front mm -hmm. of Sam? Mm, I know. Great welcome, are we through me? Thanks. I've got to go. Sorry to leave you with all the mess. See you later. Bye. See ya. Go on, son. Hey, time to go out. Mm. Yeah, great pie, man. It's not in the league of some of your birthday presents, but um... thanks. A complete guide to naughty activities in confined spaces. Thanks. Well, it is a bit cramped in that spare room up there, especially when you're entertaining blokes over six foot. It's a 1997 diary. I haven't used it. I mean, I haven't written in it. I bought it at the start of my trip. Only I found out there wasn't enough days in the month to record what I got up to. Chris tells me he lives here. Yeah, he does. That's cosy. Let the worst of the morning traffic die down, then, will you? Y yes. What's been happening? Oh... This and that, you know. You know, but I can, I can explain to you the word. When, when you get here. Mm. Missed you. I missed you. I, I, I have Vera. I... Right, so I'll uh, travel carefully enough, yes. And I'll see you in a couple of hours. Mm. So. Whoa, whoa. He'll not be stopping long enough to suck tea. Oh, morning, Jack. Me and you had an agreement that you wouldn't show your face in here till I'd had a word with our Vera. No, oh, was that her on the phone just now? Yes, yes. They'll be on the way any minute. What, from Morecambe by car? Oh, there's plenty of time. Yeah, but, but, but I need time to explain things properly to her. Well, she can't object, Jack. You've done her a favour. Thanks to me, she's got a pub to come home to at all. Isn't that right, Betty? Yeah, well, I mean, it's one way of looking at it. It won't be Vera's way of looking at it, but it's, it's one way. <laughs> Has she had a nice time, Jack? Apparently, Betty. Ah. Uh, well, let's hope she's nice and relaxed when she comes back, eh? We're not living together. Well, not exactly. No, no, we haven't been. Just the occasional... Mm, Tiptoe across the landing. Yeah, well, you know what I'm like. <laughs> Hopeless. We still haven't had the conversation yet, where we stand and all that. So, while I was in your room last night, you were... In his. Hmm. Me being back really isn't good news for you, is it? Well, no, there's a few things to get sorted, but don't be daft. It's great to see you. <laughs> Where's my present? Oh, I've done the funniest thing. 
Well, I, I didn't think you were taken with it. So what I've done is I've posted it through the Wilton's front door. Well, we can always claim that someone from the party must have done it. I thought it'd liven up their marriage. It'll have a job. You'd be surprised. Sam carries through these walls. I'm surprised he didn't complain about the party. Des, while you were away, Derek died. <laughs> what do you mean, died? You having me on? A heart attack in his car when he was out on the road one day. Mavis wasn't with him. No, another motorist found him, I think. Derek. When? A couple of months ago, not long after you'd gone. Stupid diary. Oh, it's all right, don't panic, don't panic. Maeve isn't there. Well, she hasn't moved. No, no, she's gone off on holiday. Maeve without Derek's like... Like I don't know what. Can't imagine it. No, she's not the same. Listen, Des, about Chris. Yeah, he'll have to go. You can stay. I'd like you to stay. It's a confined space and all that. You know, it's a two-bedroom place. But he'd been out of work and homeless for quite a while before I came to his rescue. Was he? He's got a job now, though, hasn't he? Yeah, with Kev. He's a mechanic. Then he'll manage. I've got to go and sort out this stupid prank of mine. Gary, I told you not to have it cut too short. Don't blame me. Blame Fiona Middleton. I think she had hangover. I knew anybody who is anybody had hangover this morning. Angie's party. <sighs> Went on all night, apparently. And not only that, right in the middle of it, Des Baz turned up. I bet you wish we'd have gone. Oh, well, had a nice night here. Been having a few too many of them lately. It's not like us at all. We've got stuff in our minds. Hey. I found these free passes to Laser Crusader at the bottom of the bag. You're not going to chuck them out, will you? Oh, no, get them all the time through work. And we haven't been? When are they for? Well, they're open passes any time. Could be that time has come. Could be. Hey, let's get a gang together. It's a long time since we've seen anybody properly. Get it organised. I'm laying down a challenge to you, Pilgrim. Oh, you are, are you? So we're going to be on opposite teams, are we? Well, you're a girl. And what sort of chauvinistic attitude is that? Uh, Gary Mallet's own brand. You're on. Yeah, so if I could have the key to the house for five minutes, I can get the silly thing back. Ah, uh, I can't help you, Des. But Emily can. She's keeping her eye on the house. Oh, Miss Prude. It's just my luck. Look, why don't you leave it there if you think it'll give Mavis a bit of a laugh? She certainly could do with cheering up. It's offensive, Rita. It's, um, pornographic. It's about couples and livening up your relationship. Oh, not the sort of thing you'd give to a recently widowed lady. Unless you think she might see the funny side of it. When does she get back? Well, she's staying flexible. Seeing how she gets on, you know, on her own. I mean, if she's having a good time, we might not see her for days yet. If not, she could be back any time. I've got to get that key. What's Emily up to today? Now, how would I know that? Derek saw me off. Drove me to me boat, remember? Mm. You offered and he insisted. Got on, you know. Otherwise, I wouldn't have played all those practical jokes. I was really fond of the guy. You think he knew that? I'd say the feeling was mutual. Hey, Hello, love. Yes. Have you got any headache tablets, Rita? <laughs> yes, I have. Are you working today? Only for a couple of hours with me dad. So I could get since I got out. He told me last night at length. Oh, did I? So what brings you back then? Where'd you get to? Told you that and all. Oh. There we go. Glass of water. Oh, service as well. I tried. Oh, I hope, Des Barnes. Vera Duckworth. When did you get back? Last night. Are you coming or going? Oh, I've been to Morecambe with Trisha, you know, kids. Only I forgot to bring our Jack out about some cheese and I'm going to buy him a box of chocolates. <laughs> you two are all right, then? Oh, yeah, we're fine. Right, I'm yeah. going to go and find Emily. I'll, I'll come over later. See right, ya. See, see you, love. Yeah, looks better than you do. Well, you look well, considering. Considering? I've just been on holiday. <laughs> Considering your business partner, only I'm not best pleased with him. Oh, Jack? No, your new business partner, Alec Gilroy. What are you doing? Trying to retrieve a memento from my seafaring days. Oh, yes, I've got a small cluster of mementos myself. <laughs> Emily's got a key, but she's not in. Sorry, Derek. Just having a bit of fun like we used to have. It's no use. 
See you, Alec. Ah, yes, sir. See you, see you, Des. Tell me it's not true! Uh, uh, Vera... Is it right you've swindled our Jack out of our pub? Uh, partners, Vera. We're, we're partners, all three of us. Can you not see? Can you not see whose name's above that door? Uh, yes, sir, uh, perfectly clearly, yes, and that's the way it will stay. Now, um, is it Rita you've been talking to? Because I know she's been feeling a bit put out about all this. Rita's put out? Is she? Samantha's moved on, has she? Oh, you don't get off that lightly, mate. She's back in tomorrow. It'd be good to see her. She can't still be holding a grudge, surely. Right! <coughs> Where's that girl's husband, am I? Vera, my little flower. Don't you flower me. I was about to say, Jack, Vera's on the way. Thanks. Well, what have you done? What have you done to me? You've sold your soul to... to win? You were told to stay out of this today. I didn't tell her, Jack. She's heard this second hand. Her savings, all her hard work. Vera, let, let me tell you about it. Let me oh. tell you about it. Girls, girls, will you, will you take over while me and Vera go in the back and have a little talk? Right. We had a future behind this bar, and now you've made it a threesome. I was... Desperate. I had no other choice. I'll give you a choice. He's been after this pub ever since he came back to Weatherfield. But you're the one who gave him the taste of working behind the bar when I was laid up. His grandchildren's inheritance cutting out. They'd have had now to inherit. The Vat man, yes, and you know, the bank, yeah, they, they, they're done very nicely. Yeah, go on, blame me. You fouled up, woman, and you've got to take some responsibility for that. But no, no, you had to go swanning off to Morecambe. What? How are we doing? Not now, Alec. Vera, Vera, surely you must see having me on board is the perfect solution. Look, this is between me and him. Well, strictly speaking, it's not, not any longer. Look, I said it's between me and our Jack. I'm going, I'm going. Look, he, he wanted to take the whole place, but I couldn't let that happen, but he had to do some it. He, he, he had the money. We know he's got the experience. You what, he'll take over? No, he won't. He can't. He will, I know he will. No, he won't. Not if we stick together. Uh, ladies, ladies. Oh, yeah. Don't worry now, it's just the management ironing out a few details back there. This is one too many chiefs. What was that, Betty? Oh, nothing. All of us are lucky to have a job in this day and at some of our ages. There was a time last week when it'll either be no staff behind here. Anyway, the lash and seeds back now. Any problems, refer to her. You'll see me tomorrow. Hello. Hiya. So, how's the wreckage then? Okay, you've got a problem though. The landlord. There are only two bedrooms and he wants his back. To move into mine. What? Well, we lie together. We may as well live together. As in a couple? Are you sure about this? Of course I'm sure. That's all I'm going to say. Hi. Uh, can I have a ham sandwich and chips and a fizzy water, please? Well, there's a bit of a hold up on the food. Can't get in the kitchen, love, so you'd be best to go to the cafe. How are uh, your wedding plans going? Are you still going to be living in that flat? Doubt it. Good. Don't want to be seen hubby and wife kissing goodbye to each other every morning on the doorstep. <laughs> don't suppose they'd live round here anyway? No, I don't think so. Guess you can afford not to. Mm. We're uh, doing up this really fantastic place at the minute, actually. A, a house. Bit of a garden. Not too big for anyone who's not interested. Very stylish. Right up your street, actually. I hear we're uh, doing it up to sell. Where is it? Not far, it's uh, Oak Hill, High Bank Avenue. Well, that's really swish, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I can take you up to see it, if you like. Well, what, what estate agent is it with? Well, it's not yet. I'm finishing it off this afternoon while uh, my uh, dad and Bill go and finish off another job. I can uh, take you to see it now, if you like. Now? Well, yeah, get in before everybody else. OK. Dad, I'm just going back to work now. Hey. All oh, right, catch you later. Hiya. Yeah, I know it. Laser guns, sensor pads. I played it once on some awful management course Kbeck sent me on. It's quite a good stress reliever, though. I'm only going to see Jude in the outfit. That'll relieve my stress. <laughs> he thinks the guys are going to give the girls a damn good hiding. In that case, can I bring Chris? Is he any good? Fantastic. At Laser Crusader. <laughs> 
Oh, he likes a battle. At least he thinks he does. <laughs> I'm steering clear of that pub today. Vera's back. She's taking time to adjust to the news. <laughs> adjust? <laughs> yeah, well, Jack's sporting a shiner. <laughs> That's your fault. Mine? I'm the saviour, Rita. I mean, Jack knows it and Vera will in time. You never stop, do you? Manipulating people for your own ends. Oh, come on, Rita. Are you honestly telling me that if you really thought about it, you wanted that pub for yourself? I'm honestly telling you, you would sell your mother up the river without a paddle and convince her you were doing her a favour. Uh, the Duckworths have already set sail. Really? Yeah. And how do you justify all the friendly financial advice you've given me? You behaved just like you did when you were my agent. Oh, to my face, full of understanding and guidance, and meanwhile looking to see what you could get out of the situation. All right. I admit I was a bit insensitive then, but this is now. Now is no different. Still, like you say, it's what you were born to, what you do best. Well, I've nothing more to say to you, Alec, and you can steer clear of me for a few days and all. Fine. Fine. Is uh, everything all right? It is now I've had Miss Oh, did uh, Des find you? Des? Des Barnes. He turned up again last night, full of his old tricks. He's already played one on the Wiltons. The Wiltons? Well, he didn't know about Derek. He's pushed something rude through the door. Oh, dear. I'll go and get the keys straight away. No, you won't. You and I will have a bit of fun out of this. This one's for Derek. I have seen the best place for us. It's not on the market yet, but it's going to be. Fantastic. Where did you find that? Oh, it's a place that Steve and his dad are doing up. Oh, right. And I suppose Steve took you to go and have a look at it. Yeah, it was his idea for you and me. I think he's finally come around to the fact that me and you are together. What's his dad there? <sighs> Can't you hear what I'm saying? This place is for us. What's his dad there? Alan, I hate it when you start treating me like I'm a suspect. I hope I'm treating you like your fiance. I think it's perfectly reasonable I don't like your ex finding our first home for us. That's something I might quite like to do myself. OK. Look, it's the only place that I've had a look at. And like I said, it's not even on the market yet. I don't even, even know when we'll be looking to find a place. July? Next month, July. Uh-huh. <sighs> Do you not realise how long it takes to organise a wedding? All right. October. Here she is, back in her rightful place behind the bar. You're the licensee, V. Always will be. Name over the door. Yeah, and don't either of you forget it. Yes, I'm like Sherry, please. Emily. Welcome back. Thanks. Anyway. Where have you been? Uh, up and down the country. What have Just... you done for work? I got myself an on-course betting licence. Sounds is, uh... interesting. How does that work? Emily. I need the key to Mavis's. What for? Hey, oh. are, Emily Lowe. Thank you, Vera. On the house. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Emma. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, the key. What for? Well, I put this present through the door. That's very thoughtful of you. Yes, but the thing is, I didn't find out about Derek until this morning. No, poor Mavis. Mm. She'd be so pleased to see your back and that you've been so thoughtful as to bring her something. Well, it was for both of them, um, a bit of a joke like what me and Derek used to have. Ah, oh, then it'll be something to remember him by. The fun you and he always had. Possibly, possibly not. So, if you could just let me in. Oh, I don't think so. Well, why not? My job is to stop people from entering while she's away. She wouldn't appreciate it. What is it? Uh, you wouldn't appreciate it either. Look, I'd just rather get it back. How do I know you don't just want to get in there and play an even bigger trick on her? Honestly, Emily, I promise if you give me the key, Mavis won't suffer any more grief. I don't think I'd like to take that chance. Jack? Jack? Look, I, I'm sorry I lashed out. Are, are you all right, love? Oh, it's, it's a fiddle. Oh, you see, Jack, it was just such a shock. But I suppose you had to do something to keep a roof over his head. Oh, I, I did. I... And then every time I rang up, you said everything were all right. You see, I didn't want you to worry, V, you see. Oh, shouldering all that responsibility on your own. I did miss you a lot, you know. Oh, did you? I'll show you how much when we lock up. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Do you know what I really fancy? Anything in the world. A fish and chip supper. So be it. Fish and chip supper. Just me and you, eh? The team. No, right, well, yeah, just, Steve. No, no, drop it. No, Steve, eh? What's the best way to break into a place? Well, don't ask me. A smiling boy over there, then, who the tricks of the... Stephen, shut up. As a matter of fact, I don't think it's a very clever idea you've been in there at all tonight. Well, I haven't finished my pint yet. OK, well, when you finish it, I'll see you at home, all right? Hurry up. Right, everybody, time to drink up. Oh, well, that's a bit early, isn't it? Can we not bend the rules for a celebration? Thank you. Uh, David, are you going to be all right about this Alec thing? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be fine, love. Listen, don't stay behind tonight. You'll get yourself off home with Gary. Hey, have you got something nice planned for you and Jack on your first night back? Yeah, I have. <clears throat> right, let's have your glasses, everybody. Well, we finally, uh, finally got round to discussing wedding plans. So, so no going back now. Faye says she wants to do it as soon as she can get organised. Yeah. Hey, if you want a quick taste of what married life can be like, why don't you come with us to Lazy Crusader Battlefield on Monday? Faye, do you fancy going to, uh there's a crusader on uh, on Monday night. Yes, yes, whatever you think. Just uh, get yourself back here, please. Brilliant, cheers. Ah, oh, second. Uh, did I hear you, Rabbit? You just invited a cop on our night out. Oh, yeah, I got a bit carried away, but just think how much fun it'll be trying to zap a cop. <laughs> have you ever lived with anyone before? Why do women always want to have this conversation? Curiosity. Masochism. You all end up comparing yourself to the last girlfriend. It's not healthy, you know. Don't you want to know? About you? Hmm. Well, at your age, you're bound to be around the block a bit, haven't you? You pig! <laughs> <laughs> Evening. Hiya. Hi. Hi. Des, you know that conversation Chris and I have been meaning to have? Well, we've had it. Good. So? As of this moment, we are officially living in sin. We've cleared your room. Fortunately, Chris isn't big on possessions, so most of my stuff has completely filled his room. <laughs> What were we saying about confined spaces? We're really grateful we can stay here together, mate. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I know, but listen, can we trust him? Well, I think I know him by now, if that's what you mean. Well, as long as you know what you could be letting yourself in for in years <laughs> to come, I reckon. Well, I'll say good night, then, and congratulations. <laughs> Thanks a lot, David. <laughs> What's all this? No, no, then. Um. You pop over. I just want to uh, check the car. OK. All right? Yes. Right, Vera. Night, Steve. Hey. I suppose you enjoyed getting Fiona on her own today, didn't you? I bet you thought that was funny. I just thought I was doing an old friend a good turn. I didn't know that was an offence now. Haven't you got better things to do with your freedom than cheers for honour about? Because if you haven't, things can always go back the way they were before. And I can promise you this, Fiona won't be paying you any visits. Lovely evening, eh? Uh, uh yeah. <laughs> Vera, it's only me, my little Jerob. V, I've got something for you. V. Vera! What do you want? You've locked up, chicken. I can't get in. Well, you can't. Like you keep reminding me, I'm the licensee here, and nobody gets through that door without my say so. You like keeping people in doubt, don't you? Let's see how you feel. This is a setup. Oh, worry. Enjoy your supper. Yeah, but I've, I've got yours here, lovey. Have you? Save it for your breakfast. Doing? She locked me out. 
You've never slept in there all night. You don't want bed, do you? Why didn't you call round our house? Didn't want to look a fool. Did you fancy some breakfast? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, Scam. Who is it? Jim. Jim who? Jim McDonald, Vera, you've just given me a ring. Are you on your own? Yes, of course I'm on my own. Hang on. Come in. Well, you said it was an emergency, V. You can say that again, Jim. Come on. Sleep well. Like a log. You? I woke up once or twice. Guilty conscience. Got to get it back, Ange. I thought you'd seen Emily. Oh, she was really vague and Rita. Neither of them were much help. Did you tell them what it was? Oh, Emily doesn't have a clue. Well, perhaps if you told her. Joking, aren't you? I just want the key. He's late for work, isn't he? Sure he can cope with you and the garage. Oh, he's got plenty of energy. Bursting with it. Morning. Hiya. Can't stay. Are you still on for tonight? Hey. Laser Crusader. Well, everyone's off. Uh, Gary and Judy, Alan and Fiona, me and Ange. You haven't told him? What is it, a pub? It's a fighting fantasy, you know, a big room, uh, lots of dry ice, laser guns, bang, bang, everyone dead. Are you going? I hope I'm going with you. Not with me, no. It'll be a laugh. A laugh? Don't you think there's enough of it going on in the real world without playing at it? Chris, it's a game. Yeah, well, not one I want to play. And I'm surprised you do and all. My, my. I thought I was the one with the moral problems. More toast. Very nice, Judy. Very welcome, all this. Oh, got to feed you up if you're going into battle. Yeah, well, you see, I can't understand, do you see, Kurt? I've saved the business, protect the livelihood. What does she do? Lock me out. Happened she thought it'd be nice to be consulted. She wasn't there. How could I consult her? You could have phoned. You can't discuss important matters on the phone with our Vera. I don't know to tell her what's what face to face. Mm, well, I know how I'd have felt if it had been me. Don't worry, Jack. She'll have to open up at dinner time. I hope so. Well, why didn't you go around to Alex when she locked you out last night? I mean, he's got a key. Because I didn't want Alex to find out. I want it all sorted before he gets there. There we are, love. One pound twelve. So, how's work going? Oh, it's money, isn't it? That's all you can say. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Hi, Steve. Um, about the house. Uh, really great. It's stunning. Um, but to be honest, we're not sure it's exactly what we're looking for. No? No. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a really great house. Um, but we're not sure yet whether we want to go for something new or, do you know, have a look around, something more mature. Uh, anyway, it was really nice of you to think of us, and um, we're ever so grateful. Right. Well, that's funny, because it's not the impression I got outside the Rovers last night. Hey. Okay. Your intended had a quiet word with me. Last night? I got the distinct impression he was telling me to stay clear. Didn't seem to think that you need my help. In fact, he told me to keep well away if I was to stay out the nick. So, hey, nice man. I'm sure he'd be very happy, Fee. Emily? Mm -hmm. Is that it, love? Um, yeah, can you... Uh, put me on yes. The Emily, I'm desperate. If that's a proposition, Emily, forget it. Yeah. Fee, um, you two all right for tonight? Yeah, fine. Great, my place about seven, then. Look, I'm serious here. I've got to get in next door before Mavis gets back. Maybe if you explain exactly what it is you've posted, Desmond. That's a bit difficult, Emily. Wouldn't be somewhat mucky, would it, Desmond? Mavis is very broad-minded, you know. I'm sure she wouldn't take offence. <laughs> she might when she sees this. No, I did say I would only let someone into the house if there was a real emergency. Oh, this is a real emergency, believe me. So, if I could just have a key. Oh, I couldn't do that. The key was entrusted to me personally. If anyone collects this parcel, it has to be me. Well, if you do, you, you promise me you won't look at it, will you? Well... I'm not sure if I could stop myself after such a build-up. No, Emily, please. Promise me you won't open it. Well, how do I distinguish it from the other post if I don't look at it? Well, I, I didn't put a stamp on it. I just popped it in a bag and it's about so big. No answer to that, Emily. It's not what you think. Well, what do we think? 
Look, it's just easier if we go now. You open up and I get it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't go now, but I do promise you I will collect it and I'll bring it round to your house as soon as I do. When will that be? You'll just have to be patient. I can't drop everything just because it suits you. Now, can I? No, no. Of course you can't, and I'm sorry. Um, right then, I'll, I'll be waiting. All right. I'll go now. All right. Bye, Desmond. Yes, bye then. Bye. bye. Well, the Bishop, you're evil. I can't wait to see what it is. Okay, Vera. Oh, dear. Cheerio, night. See you, love. Sunday. Morning, Jim. <laughs> Is there something wrong? No, 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 no. Nothing at all. door open. Don't want to be stood outside here, outside my own pub, like a lemon. Look, sling your dog! Vera? Vera? What, 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 what are you doing? What's going on? Get this door open. You have no chance. Vera, what are you doing? What's going on? It's a lockout. That's what's going on. And don't you try and sweet talk me, Ali Gilroy, like you did my daughter's husband, because you've got the thing coming. Uh, Vera, Vera, love, if there's anything upsetting you, I mean, if there's anything remotely affecting your happiness with the status quo, I'm sure it can all be discussed and settled to everyone's satisfaction in the comfort of the bar. Oh, don't try soft soap in me, Alec Gilroy. Look, that door stays shut till I decide to open it, and you're staying on the other side. Well, perhaps in that case you'd better go and get your husband. He's not here. What do you mean he's not here? Go and get him. Look, I've just said he's not here. Then where is he? Well, I don't know, and I don't care neither. Now, look, you just listen to me, Vera Duckworth. This is half my pub, and I have a legal entitlement to cross its threshold any time I choose. So stop messing about, open this door, and let me into my premises. Look, these might be your premises. But whose name's above that door, eh? Mine. Not yours, not his, but mine. You might own half this place, pal. But I'm the licensee here, and I'll open that door whenever I want. Then in that case, madam, I advise you to stand aside. Stand aside? Yes. If I can't persuade you by peaceful means, then I have no option but to break down this door. Vera. Vera, I'm warning you. Vera! Vera, open this door! No way! And listen, I've changed the locks and all. So don't you try and get him back way neither. Vera! Vera! Jack! Jack! Stay where you are! Don't you dare move a muscle. You just stay exactly where you are. Well, you see, Alex, she set me, she set me up, you see. And, 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 and this morning, she went and changed the locks. As I was saying, she, she, she locked me out. Why didn't you come round last night before she managed to change the locks with the bin in? Now, no problem. There has still been a problem, in or not. I can't understand what you were playing at, letting her kick you out in the first place. I've just been telling you, she sent me for vision chips. When I came back, she locked the blame indoors. The woman's mad. She won't certify it. Just because she's making a stand? It's unreasonable. So is the way you two have treated her. Listen, if you're siding with this madwoman, I strongly advise caution. Oh, is that a threat? It's an observation. We're going to need you to get in. Eh? Huh? Yes, well, you're due on duty in a few minutes. We want you to knock at the door, and when she opens it, we'll push our way through. Not using me as a decoy, you won't. I trust you have a certain affection for your job, and would like to keep it once this fracas is sorted once and for all. Hey, hang on, Alec, that's not fair. Fair? Fair? Who's talking about fair? Oh, you can threaten me all you like. You can sack me if you want, but you are not setting me up as a patsy, so you two can have your own way. Right. In that case, we shall have to repair to neutral territory where we can plan our campaign without fear of betrayal from traitors. You do that. Right. Come on, Jack. And you look to your future, miss. Look how 
got it. I've sorted. Thanks for breakfast. Jack, come in, Alec, come in. Fleming Turag. I think I've got what you're looking for. Eh? I've already been round. Is this it? Uh, yes, that's it. Nautical Knights and Nymphs. <laughs> yes. A complete guide to naughty activities in confined spaces. Yes, if you just hand it back, I'll put it out of harm's way. Yes, I was curious as to why you wanted it back so desperately, Desmond. Yeah, well, you don't want to look through that. It's um, not of interest. Oh, I don't know. I, I was rather taken with the illustration on page 43, actually. Page 43? Oh, see, this one here. Where the man yes, is... Yes, yes, uh, I see it, see it. Well, I, I was looking at this and trying to decide exactly what's going on. I mean, it, it's so difficult to unravel the pair of them. I was wondering if you might explain just what is happening. You see, I'm such a conventional sort of person. <laughs> OK, Emily, you win. I'm sorry. Shall I take my coat off or what? You can do what you like, but we're not opening. You can't let your locals down. Who can't? Well, think of the money you'll lose. Listen, I'd rather lose money than face. And if you're staying, keep your eyes open, because they're as sly as monkeys, them two. What's that? Look, will somebody open this door before I skin my knuckles? Is that you, Betty? Of course it's me. Who do you think it is? Uh, are you on your own? Our Jack's not with you. Of course I'm on my own. Right. Sorry about that, love. It's OK. Why? Are we under siege? Oh. Uh, well, uh, she's not opened up yet then, Percy, eh? No, she hasn't. What's going on there, anyway? And what are you two doing here, drinking? Oh, Percy, don't start mithering. There's a good old lad, eh? Me and Alec have got a lot of thinking to do. Never mind thinking, you should be serving. You're in breach of your licence unless you open up. Percy, please, we're not in the mood. Hey, Percy, they've been locked out through the half, haven't you heard? Locked out? Hey, Vera! Oh, certainly, oh, she's declared a republic in the boozer, so she has. No more landed gentry over the threshold there, Sandy, eh? Only because you changed the flaming locks. Oh, fair play, Jack. Well, now, come on, us peasants need to work, so we do. So she's locked you out and you want to get in? Yes, Percy, that's about it, I. Simple as that. Oh, well, I'm sure we'd all be very grateful if you'd share your thoughts with us, Percy, especially if it's so simple. Military history. Your classic siege conundrum. You need a wooden horse. Oh, he's, no, he's right. Hey, that's brilliant, Percy. The Trojan horse. That's what we need. If we could get Greeks into Troy, it'll get us into Rovers. But we haven't got a wooden horse. Oh. Hey, look, what day is it today, Jack? Monday. And what happens on a Monday? No, usually. Draymond. Mm. But they don't have horses nowadays, do they? Mm. Whoa! Well, what? Thanks, Percy. Come on, Jack. With swords to sharpen. Thanks, lovey. No, I'd better be good. Oh, me and all. Oh, you can't go now. Look, what's the point, love, if you're not stopping open? We're costing you money just sat here doing nothing. Well, what does a few quid matter? Look, Betty, it's the principle of the thing. If he thinks he can get away with making partnerships behind my back is another thing. Come in. Mm. I am the licensee here. Yes, but for how long behaving like this? I can see you're fed up the way he's gone about the job, but you'll, you'll not hold the licence for long if you don't give this place open. Look, I am fighting, Betty. I am staying here. And even if I don't win, I'm going to I'm gonna go down swinging. Oh, all right, then. Come on, get pouring. Right. Oh, go on. Every penny of your pound. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. like a lorry pulling up. Well, it's Monday. It'll be the drain men. Wait, they'll want the cellar opening up. Oh, well, we'll see about that. Come on, then. Let's hey, you go first. Then. Right, oh, no. Come on, then. I don't let me see me. No, no, no. Oh, no. Carry on. Yeah, is them all right? Happy to tell. 
Well, I can see, can't I? can see the, the end of the wagon poking through Rosamond Street. Yeah, well, they can take a run and jump. Look, you can't turn the draymen away, there. I am not letting them in. You'll have to. Oh, go on, then. But be careful and tell them not to leave them cellar doors open any longer than they have to. <sighs> Here, have, have another look. Have a... Stop, they're there. Step the pair of them on the wagon. Hey, they're on the wagon. Who's down the cellar? Vera, I'm sorry. The sun was in my eyes. They were in the corner. Well, I see them. Scheming. Too so tired. Vera, Vera, Vera just give me no violence. No violence. Oh, oh. This is a bloodless coup. Surrender gracefully. Oh. Here you go, Gary, me old chum. Try one of them. Uh, no, we can't. Not if he's taking me. Hmm. Suppose I better keep my brain clear and aim true. You're gonna have to go something to beat me, mate. You're kidding. Yeah. He's got no chance, has he, Chris? There's no, no point in asking him. He's not coming. Yeah. What do you mean he's not coming? You're not sick, are you? No, I feel fine. I just don't want to come, that's all. Got some sort of moral objection, haven't you, Chris? Something like that, yeah. What's your problem? I just, if I want to go and watch some fighting, I'll go over the Rovers. You can't wriggle out of it like that, mate. Oh, Des, will you just leave it? If he doesn't want to come, he doesn't have to come. I just can't see what he's trying to prove, that's all. I'm not trying to prove anything, I just don't want to go. Not even for my sake. <laughs> well, if it's that important to you. <gasps> I'd like you to go. OK, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we waiting for, then? Come well, on, let's, uh, let's run and roll. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, you. Yeah. I don't think I know how to run around. Yeah, yeah. It looks as though I might be correct in assuming your campaign has uh, come a, a complete success, landlord. Yeah, a veritable rout, Percy. Due in no small part to your good self. Thank you. You see, Mrs. Bishop, behind every great campaign, it's a great military brain. You know, take Monty, for instance. Yeah, I think I'd rather have a drink, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, of course, yes. I'll have my normal, a bitter, yeah. and a sweet cherry for Mrs. Bishop, please. On the house. Oh, thank you. How's Vera? She's a bit down. Sulking would be a more accurate description. Then isn't your place beside her, Mr Duckworth? You might have won the battle. Without compassion, you certainly won't win the war. I think you might be right there, Emily. I'll just see to Jim and then I'll pop through it. All right. Yeah. So you're away up town. Well, I'll just start a pop in for a quick one, you know. Well, you want another before you go? Certainly do, yeah. A couple of pints, please, Jack. Oh, yeah. here, listen, come here. Set a spare keys there for you, mate. You know what I mean, in case you need them, eh? You mentioned keys to me. Set them again, then, eh? Hey, I tell you what, you're not the only one. Alan McKenna's putting the screws on again. Why? Well, I showed Fiona around the house we're doing up, because uh -huh. I thought she might be interested. Yeah. And uh, he caught me outside the rows and wore me off. Well, you can hardly be surprised by that now, can you? Cut yourself on. You know exactly what you were doing. Look, you watch McKenna, all right? He's a nasty piece of work, so he is. He'll have you fitted up quicker than you like. That's what he said, actually. Well, why don't you listen to him? Listen, listen to him, because otherwise you'll end up in the big house, I'm telling you. Again. Why don't you get changed and come on through it? What's the point? It's not my pub anymore. Don't be so daft. Of course it is. We've still got a good stake in this place. I thought we could do it. I thought we could sort it. We did. We've just handed reins to somebody else, and you watch, in five minutes flat, he'll have the whole lot out, Gilroy. That is where you're wrong, because we will make sure he doesn't. Everybody said we'd cock it up, and we have. I mean, he's living proof of that, standing behind that bar. Right. So get out there with a smile on your face and prove him wrong. Luke V, I know what I did upset you. But the important thing is, we are still in here and we've got to keep fighting. Yeah. Dray men? Well, I've never known Alec Gilroy lift out heavier than a whiskey glass all his life. Well, apparently, he lifted the siege and won the day. Well, it's Vera I feel sorry for. I mean, it's bad enough being lumbered to Jack Duckworth all your life without adding umpty dumpty to the list. Be enough to turn anybody to drink. Well, she's in the right place for that. As long as it's Alex half of the profits that she's supping. Thanks, love. Ah, oh, it's just fine. Uh, hey, Jack, is she going to stop out there all night? Look, I can always have another go, can't I? No, no, leave her be. The state she's in, she's better off out at Rome. No, she'll, she'll come round. I mean, it's been a bit of a shock for her, Alec. It's been a shock for me being locked out of my own pub. We can't let this happen again, Jack. No, no fear of that, Alec. No, no. The sooner we get her name down from over that door and either mine or yours up, the better. Eh? Hey? I mean, you've got to, got to 
to ask yourself if she's a fit and proper person to be holding the license anymore before the magistrates do. She's made us a laughing stock, Jack. She locks you out, she refuses me entry, and now she won't come out to do her job even. Alexander! <laughs> Lovely to see you. Coping all right, are we? <laughs> Rita, Maud. Vera. <laughs> don't just stand there doing nothing. Customers want serving. Now, listen, why don't you go through into the back and have a nice cup of tea? I'll take over now. <laughs> what do you want? Look, thanks for coming. It's OK. I know you didn't enjoy it, even though you won hands down. <laughs> you know, you can tell what you like about Chris, but he was brilliant, weren't he? Yeah. He was pretty good, yeah. Pretty good, he wiped the floor with you, and he didn't even want to come. Should have stayed at home then, shouldn't he? Angie seems pretty pleased that he didn't. I can't see what the attraction is myself. Oh, I can. Hey, you. Eyes off. Mm -hmm. Right then, we're off. We'll all go somewhere else. <laughs> Chris has got to get up for work in the morning. Well, I don't. Oh, well, you're going somewhere else till they'll stop you. Oh, I don't know. You kids, eh? Can't keep up with the pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you've got to know how far you can push it, eh, Des? <laughs> Right, we'll see you later. Oh, All right, yeah. see you later. Take care. Thank you. Um, I saw Steve in the shop this morning. Oh yeah. Mm. Said that you threatened him. That's ridiculous. Alan, he's not a threat. I know he's not. He's just a nuisance. That's all. Come on. You fit to drive? Well, of course I am. I hope you are. I can't afford to get nicked, you know. Of course you can. You're a copper, aren't you? You can get nicked. <laughs> You're kidding. They throw the book at me, man. And you've just had another pint. No, he's been drinking all Cokes before that. Could you spare some change? Zoe, I wondered if you'd seen me. What are you doing? What's it look like? Where's Liam? Gone. I took all the money. Yeah, well, you asked for that, didn't you? Hey! <sighs> I'm all right. It's a bit of blood pressure, that's all. You look half starved. Here, get yourself something to eat. Was that who I think it was? What if it is? You didn't give her out, did you? I just give her a tenner. Haven't you given her enough already? She was starving, Gary. You're a soft touch, you. Yeah. <laughs> a bit early for that. It's never too early for that. Hey, listen, I'm sorry you had a rotten time last night. It's just not my idea of fun. So how about tonight we do something that is? Am I old enough to hear this? That comes after the Mongolian barbecue. The what? Just stopped up, Pete at the tire place reckons it's great. Good value and all. Well, it certainly sounds different. Hey. Mm. All of that po-faced anti-war hero stuff didn't stop him knocking the hell out of everyone, I notice. Anger, I guess. Like killing people's fun. We're off to this Mongolian barbecue thing Chris knows about tonight. Why don't you come with us? I'll pass. If Laser Crusade is not his idea of a good time, then yak kebab's not mine. It'll be spare ribs and things. Not that I'd mind. Try anything once, me. I wonder what yak would taste like. It's probably similar to goat. Mm. Oh, which I suppose you ate a lot of in Africa. Well, I preferred it to zebra. <laughs> See you, mate. <laughs> Bye. You don't swallow all that war hero stuff. He never claimed to be a war hero. Yeah, and he's never been to Africa. He's not a liar. Well, maybe he's just got a vivid imagination, then. Well, Fergie's is in fine fettle. Madonna's looking a bit droopy, though. I know how she feels. Vera, love, we had no option. It was either take his money or go under. Look, I'll put up with it. But it don't mean to say I have to like it. Keep having this picture in my head of a, a big fat cuckoo and everybody working the backside off to feed its greedy gob. Alec will do his share, he's not afraid of graft and if he starts any funny business just remember, hey, it's two against one. Two against one crafty one. Right, well we'll have to be on his guard, won't we? Well we never had to be on his guard when it was just you and me. Right, Vera, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to give him his cheque back and tell the VAT to go and take a running jump? 
No. No. Look, it won't be that bad, as long as you handle it right. Morning, pal. <laughs> the top of the morning to you both. Raring to go, I trust. Go where? Well, forward into the new era, onwards and upwards, the three musketeers. <laughs> hey, we could name the pub that, couldn't we? Bit licensee's name next. Listen, Vera, it's only a joke. No, the fact is I want us to put past differences behind us and uh, all pull together to make this the finest little hostelry in the Northern Union. I think we can go along with that, can't we, Vera? Oh, I don't know, Percy. The sight of Vera punching Alex lights out would have had its compensation. Yes, but I could have told you there'd be trouble there, the two of a kind, you know, both him and Jack Duckworth. They're both slippery customers. Well, can't argue with you there. No, and she's got about as much brain as that pot dolly you've got in the window there. What they need is somebody like you with a business head on their shoulders. Not my cup of ale, Percy. What I'm saying, with those three clowns in charge, I don't give that pub six months. Oh, aye. No. Rotten thing is, he could have a point for once. Oh, dear. Yes. Can I have a packet of envelopes, please, Rita? White ones, if you got them. Right, love. Hello. Heard you were back. Mm, bad news travels fast. Your words, not mine. Look, it's been a couple of months now. We're both older and wiser. Can't we at least talk? About what? Well, I hate falling out with people. Especially those that live across the road from. What he means is he can't stand it if everyone's not a fan of good old, bit of a rascal, but lovable with it, Des Barnes. Well, not me, sunshine. I wouldn't bother, love. You've made an effort. I'd forget it now. I can't. Funny bumping into that girl again. Not funny, unlucky. Don't be horrible. Dude, have you forgot what kind of grief her lovely little boyfriend put us through? Yeah, well, he's dumped her now. So she says. Why would she if she won't tell him the truth? Everything that comes out of her mouth is a lie. Including all that stuff about me beating up her boyfriend. Yeah, well, she was frightened to go against him. I don't understand this. How come you're taking her side all of a sudden? Cos she's only a kid. A kid who's having a kid. She's a tough little tramp. Who wouldn't think twice about nicking her grandma's pension giving half the chance. Zoe ain't like that. Jude, you don't know her. Nor do you. Enough to be happy if neither of us clapped eyes on her ever again. Maybe you're right. Samantha. Thanks a lot. See to him. I'll take his money, but I'll not serve him. So, now have you served me anyway? Right, please. So, how does it feel being back in the real world? Well, that was a real world. This is like a Hollywood movie by comparison. A bit rough, then. Eh? Well, let's just put it this way I've got plans, and they don't include going back there in a hurry. Well, let's hope they don't include mucking any more women about, either. He's always got to put the boys in, hasn't he? Well, your murky love life's hardly a big secret, Steve. Yeah, well, it was a long time ago. That was a prank. Well, I dare say we've all done some stupid things. <coughs> Not you, though, eh? <laughs> don't kid yourself. Yeah, well, there's only ever been one girl for me. And still is. Does not talking to me include not serving me? I never said I wasn't talking to you. I'm just not into pointless post-mortems. <laughs> In that case, I'll have a pint, please. And why pointless? Because whatever line you come up with, it will change nothing. Right, then. Have it your way. Try and say sorry to them, they just throw it back in your face. Yeah, I know what you mean, mate. Jack, how long's he been sat there? I don't know, Alec. I sell him. I don't time him. Well, you should. You should wait till they finish their drink. Give them two minutes top and then ask them if they want a refill. He must have been sat there five minutes with an empty pot. If he wants another one, he'll ask. Jack, a pub is like any other business. You don't wait for punters to come to you. You go out and make a sale. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I get you a refill? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. There you are. Here he is. Fastest guns in the West. Hey. What's all this about guns? Laser guns, Jack. It's a game, allegedly. I slaughtered a lot of them last night, according to Gary Mallet. Didn't stick around to buy us a pint, though, did he? Well, I'll buy you one now if you want one. No, thanks. You tried on his bunions? I, I did. did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd soon have a bookie on me back than a copper. Alan McKenna, the flipping idiot, is threatening her for so much. Cross a pelican on red, he'll bang me back up again. Oh, that's harassment you should tell Fiona. She don't believe me, does she? A little blue-eyed boy can do no wrong. One good thing, though. If he's trying that hard to get you out of the scene, 
then he couldn't be all that secure in the relationship, could he? Very true, mate. Very true. I never thought of that. Mm. Sam. Hi. What the flaming heck did you know where? Liam. Oh, yeah. They were going to come round and sort us if we didn't pay up, as I remember. I'm sorry about all that. Yeah, so you should be. If you come round on the ground, you're out of luck. So where is Liam? I told you. He's done a runner. So why are you here? I don't know, really. Nowhere else to go. Best come in, then. Look, I know I haven't got an appointment, but I wonder whether you could give me a quick trim. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll put that on. So. Right, Maud, I'll, uh, I'll get you that cup of tea in a minute, yeah? I think they're barmy pumping all that silicone nonsense into themselves. Would you want bosoms that size? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I think yours are fine just the way they are. Mm. Yeah. In the back. Yeah, right in. Oh. Bum, bum, bum. Right. Is that what mm, for you? No, lovely. Hey, don't get this in the nick. Mm. Right then, my sweetheart. I've been to the estate agents, and I think I've found one or two here that are going to be worth looking at. What the hell is he doing here? <laughs> Alan is a customer. Oh, she gives great shampoo, you know. Did you know I won't tell you to get lost? You didn't last night. Cos I'm a soft touch, according to my husband. He went spare when he found out. It was only a tenner. Never mind only a tenner, lady. He reckons I shouldn't have given you a time of day after what you did. That was Liam, not me. So what? You're pulling your own scams now, are you? It's not a scam. I told you I was starving. I'm a kid's life. Say I do believe you. I still want to know what you're doing here. You were the only one not to treat me like mucking ages. Well, where have you been living? Anywhere I could dust down. I squats most of the time. Hanging about the streets? It's not so bad. Some of them look after you. Worse in winter. Zoe, you're pregnant. Well, I'm not likely to forget, am I? Have you had any antenatal care? You what? Been to see a doctor? Uh, yeah, once. When I fainted in the streets, some old busybody called an ambulance. That's how I knew about my blood pressure. But you haven't done anything about it since. I hate doctors and hospitals and all that. Didn't stop you planning for an abortion, though, did it? I'd have had to put up with it then. Would have been worth it to get rid if that pig hadn't put the mockers on. What's this? It's a... It's a... Spathy... Spathy... It's, it's otherwise known as the peace lily. It's not inappropriate, seeing as it's a peace offering. Ali, you don't do the dirty on folk and expect them to kiss and make up for a poxy two quid pot plant. Four ninety nine. Makes all the difference. Look, I admit I pulled a stroke, but it was as much for your sake as mine. I mean, you'd have been round the twist in three months working in tandem with the Dubworths. And you won't. I'll cope. I've got the motivation. Never mind lie back and think of England. I'll be lying back and thinking of the Rovers. Look, I've no wife, no job, no family. What else am I going to do with my life? Well, it was a big part of your life. Far more than theirs. Well, I think you're paying a high price for the privilege all the same. Judging by the last couple of days, it's going to be a marriage made in hell. Yeah, well, the one thing about marriage is you can always get a divorce. Then you'll lose the pub again. Someone will. Anyway, are we pals again? Till you pull the next stroke. Thanks. Oh, hey, Fee. You're just in time to hear my lecture from Maud here on my eating habits. Mm -hmm. And I'm right. It's all these chemicals they put in food today that makes people so aggressive. Like your fella flying off the handle. I don't like folk who slam doors. It's childish. Mind you, your lad didn't tell. 
What's Steve? Oh, God, no. Has he been causing trouble? Um, could you pop over later? Yes, I will. Assuming the E numbers don't get me first. Blimey! Whose army are we feeding? Uh, we've got a visitor. Um, I borrowed this and I used to squirt your bubble stuff, if that's OK. What is she doing in our house? You might be able to get round with wife, young lady, but I'm not such a mug. What is your game? There isn't one. She needs help, Gary, not shouting at her. Well, she's got a damn cheap coming round here expecting it. After the way she lied through her teeth about me thumping her boyfriend. I wish I had done now. Made me. Oh, so you admit it was a load of bull, then? He never touched Liam. It was his brother clattered him for nicking his gear. His gear? You mean his drugs? Only some ease. Oh, that's all right, then, as long as it wasn't heroin. Do you see what she's like? And you fetch her in here and give her the run of the house? She's probably been through your purse and my pockets already. No, I never. I haven't. God's honour. Let's sit down and eat our tea before it's burnt to a frazzle. Do you want a beer? No, 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 I'm fair not. I've got my supper to frost. Go on, then. What's he been up to? Mm. Nothing as much. He just, uh, he came into the salon for a trim. God. I told him to keep away. <laughs> it's a fat lot of good talking to Stephen, isn't it? No, it wasn't a problem until Alan picked that very moment to walk in. Oh, I see. Oh, all right, that'll be what Maud was on about, slamming and banging doors and all that. Yeah, trust her to be there when it all happened, eh? No, he didn't. He just wasn't very pleased about it all. Ah, well, he had every right not to be pleased with Stephen wandering about stirring things up. Yeah, well, maybe Alan's been doing a little bit of stirring himself as well. Yeah, Steve's yeah, he told me Alan had threatened him. Yeah. Well, that's his tale, anyway. Do you believe him? Tell you the truth, I don't know what to believe anymore. I mean, my son is my own flesh and blood, you know, but I wouldn't know whether to trust Alan like him out of his gob half the time. What does Alan say about it all? He says that he hasn't even spoken to him, never mind threatened him. Mm hmm Well, one of them's telling lies, anyway. Look, I'll have another word with Stephen. Is that what you want? Oh, please, could you? Mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm stuck right in the middle of all this, and I hate it. How much do you put in the flow these days, Jack? Fifty, usually. Well, that's nowhere near enough. You need at least seventy-five. Oi. Oi. What's this? Well, we've got to keep some back for emergencies in case people have to dash off. Still need to double the flow. Dash off. Pack, please, Jack. <coughs> right. Thought you two were off to outer Mongolia. We are when we've finished these. Still not too late to come with us. No, thank you. Oh, no, you'd rather stay here on your Todd and have a grievance. What's that supposed to mean? It's just that you've been a right pain since you came back. You'd never believe he used to be a good lad in his youth. You've heard of jet lag. I've got boat lag. I'll be all right once I've settled in. Time for another one before you go for your curried yak. Make that three pints, Jack, will you, please? Right. No, 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 I'm not new to the game. No, I was landlord here for many years. Always had a special relationship with the local constabulary, I might add. <laughs> well... Long may that continue. No, oh, no reason why it shouldn't. If the place is properly run, which it will be now, they've got someone at the helm who knows what he's doing. <laughs> uh, same again, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, scotch and water with no ice, thank uh, you. On the house, officer. Oh, that's very simple of you, thank you very much. A uh, glass of vino for your charming fiancé. Um, uh, no, she won't be joining me. Oh, I hope I don't detect a slight rift in the lover's loot. Nothing that won't get sorted. I don't like that, Alan. He's got shifty eyes. He's a police officer. There's rotten apples in every barrel. That last deserves better. Well, I hope he don't go telling her that. I keep my opinions to myself, me. Not like some. So, where was it again that you went to? Zambia? Rwanda. Rwanda, right. And you are 20? 20. 22. Hmm. The thing is, you see, I was talking to this bloke in the pub the other day, after you did your disappearing act, you know. Anyway, he reckons you've got to be 25 to get into this VSO lark. That's to be sent to a war zone, right? How come he got shot, then? No worries. It's a valid question. <laughs> thing is, in a volatile area, how do you define a battle zone? What's behind the lines yesterday? It's today's flashpoint. And as the bullets whiz past, they don't ask how old you are before they lamb into you. All right? Satisfied? We're not jealous, are we? Angie's a mate, all right. Just don't like to see a waste of time on a creep like that. But talk to me, Sam. At least listen to me, then. Hey. How did you know I was in here? I didn't. 
I just came in the off chance of seeing a friendly face. What category does man fall in at the moment? You tell me. Friendly, but more for sensitive where you're concerned. Well, and it's not funny. No, I know. Look, I run a business. It was a customer, that was it. All right. Go on, then. Slap me. I'm behaving like a jealous kid. Next time. Have you eaten? Uh, no, I haven't. It won't take me long to finish up the pasta I'm making. I don't deserve you. No, you don't. Shall I uh, pour that glass of Vido now? No, no, I'm not staying. Um, why don't you finish your drink and then come over? OK. Uh, shall I bring uh, red or white? Red. You shouldn't pander to him, Fiona. You want to let him run after you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Maud. Well, sometimes you have to speak out. I sometimes wish he'd stuck with her and left poor Vicky alone. Wish who'd stuck with her? Steve MacDonald. So who's Vicky? Oh, she's my granddaughter. I conned her into marrying him and then took her for every penny she had. She was an heiress, you know. Came into a fortune when her parents got killed, God bless her. Killed? Yeah, car smash. It was tragic. I do a turn up for him. He waited till she was 18, dumped Fiona, and then went for the jackpot. Well, I did not know that. You should have her doing this. Oh, she's worn out. Don't think she's slept in a proper bed for three months. Give the poor kid a break. I've said she can stop for one night, but that's it. It's not like you to be hard. Jude, she conned and lied to us. Oh, and she's explained all that. And I believe her. It's obvious that Liam's a nasty piece of work. And you also believe her that she's got nobody else in the whole entire world to turn to, only us? She hasn't, apart from social services. Well, let her go to them, then. That's what we pay our taxes for. I can't just turn me back on her. Well, why not? What do we owe her? It's not a matter of owing. It's a matter of common human decency. Anyhow, if we help her, she might be able to help us. Oh, I can't see that happening. Oh. No. You think I'm potter? Oh, go on. We want a baby and we can't have one. She's having one and don't want it. I can't get it out of my head, Gary. It's like it's fate. This could be the answer for all of us. Well, say something. What do you think? I think you're potty. So, cheers. Where is she now, your, uh, your granddaughter? Oh, Switzerland. Doing very nicely, thank God. But I'll not forgive that little toe rag for what he put her through as long as I live. Oh, I'd feel exactly the same if I were in your shoes. Yeah, no question. Right, look, I'd best be up and, uh... Well, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> hey, you never paid for that. No, I know. No, the scotches. No, it's all on the house. Oh, look so worried, Jack. It's good PR. Leave that side of the business to an old handbag, me. <sighs> What's with the face on you, eh? You just get him right on my nose. Oh. Vera, love. Is it your turn now? There's a little prezzy on the hall table for you. It's nothing very much. Just to show my appreciation of the way you've rallied around. A, a present for me? Oh, Jack, isn't that nice? <laughs> Sam. I told you, get lost. Give me five minutes and I'll go. Right, you got one. Look, you'd every right to make a fool out of me. I asked for it. But I need you to know, I didn't just do it for a quick thrill, or because I thought you were easy, or to get one over on Sean. OK, if I hadn't have been high from that jump, I probably wouldn't have tried it on. But that doesn't mean I didn't think about it. You scare the hell out of me. But there's something... You know what you were saying about me wanting to be loved by everyone? Well, you were wrong about that. Most of them I couldn't care less about. Those I don't respect. But you, I do. In spite of what you did to me. Maybe because of it. It matters that you don't hate me, that's all. I can't figure you out. Don't exactly try and be Miss Lovable, but I still think you're a great girl. Finished? Yeah. Good, because your minute's up. 
Can't say I didn't try. Oh, Alec. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> I don't know what you're whinging at. It's all right. When did you ever buy me up like that? Very nice. Yeah, it's a strap of uh, peace lily. Strath, uh, I know. Yeah, it's a peace offering from Alec. Oh. He's all heart. Job lot, was it? Hmm. Ain't you think it'll catch on? This, yeah, it's in with a chance. No, the Mongolian barbecue. What are the among cosmopolitan world travellers like us? Mm, really cosmopolitan. Mm, very cosmopolitan. That's it. I've had enough. What's your problem now? <laughs> my problem is I didn't expect to come back off my trip to find my house taken over by some randy kid who thinks he's Indiana Jones. Now, I'm sorry if that interferes with your love life, Petal, but he's got to go. I took her a cup of tea, but she's dead to the world. I don't know why you let her over doorstep. I knew she'd be trouble. Trouble? Gary, this could be the answer to all our prayers. The offspring of low-life Liam, who've you been praying to? The baby can't help who its father is. No, but I'm not picking up where he left off. I don't know why you're so against this. I mean, it's no different to adoption. It's totally different to adoption. When you go up for adoption, you've got to go through the proper channels. They do all sorts of checks. You can't just wander in and say, I've taken in this teenager, is it all right if I keep her kid? All we'll be doing is giving an unwanted baby a loving home. What is wrong with that? It's a crazy idea. I don't want to hear any more about it. I suppose I'd better get a paper on my way to work, see if there are any bedsits going. Oh, don't worry about Des. I can wrap him round my little finger. You still here? Oh, give us a chance, will you? You serious, then? I thought perhaps it was your perverse sense of humour rearing its ugly head again. No, I'm dead serious. Of course, we could always go legal on this. After all, Chris is a sitting tenant. No, in which case, I'd have to go illegal and he'd become a flying tenant. I'd like to see you try. Sorry, I'd better be careful what I say. You've probably killed men with your bare hands out in the Zambezi or whatever it was. Rwanda. Anyway, surprised you can bear to be cooped up in a little house like this. Thought you'd prefer to sleep under the stars. Don't worry, he'll come round. I'll talk to him at dinner time. Save your breath. The sooner I get out of this place, the better. Anyway, you don't know the baby is unwanted. We gave her money for an abortion, remember? She didn't go through with it, though, did she? Oh, come on, Gary. She's 15. She can hardly look after herself, let alone a baby. Social services will give her all the help she needs. She can't cope! If she has a baby on her own, in a year's time, they'll come and take it off her. As if nothing terrible happens to it before then. You don't know that for sure. And if something does go wrong, then the baby can be put up for adoption properly. It just seems such a shame when we can give it a loving home from the beginning. Truth, it's none of our business. Do you want a baby or what? Of course I do. I want one of my own. Well, you're going to have to find someone else who can have one then, aren't you? Our own. A baby of our own. Anyway, you don't know for sure that you can't have kids. I know it's pretty unlikely after what doctors said. Well, even if you are right, that's no reason to go grabbing someone else's. Well, why not? I want a baby more than anything else in the world. I know. But it's not that simple. It's just so unfair, Gary. So unfair. It is, sweetheart. It is. Oi, what are you doing? Yeah. Measuring the bar up for a header shelf. Which one you do that? Alec Gilroy. Do it. Just hang on a minute. Alec! Uh, yes, Jack. Yeah. What's all this about a new header shelf? Oh, yes. Well, you know the old cock in Bessie Street? Yes, the one they're doing up, aren't they? Yeah, well, they're getting rid of theirs, you see, and I thought if it'd go all the way around our bar, we should have it, and Georgia is measuring up. Do you know, I'm sure there used to be a, a shelf up there. Mind you, I'm going back to Annie Walker's day. Never mind Annie Walker's day. You can't be doing things like this off your own bat. You never asked us. Well, I'm asking you now. No, you've got to ask us first. Jack, it's a shelf for putting glasses on so we don't have to bend down. I thought you'd be pleased. That is not the point. You cannot do alterations to the premises without asking the consent of the shareholders. Well, lucky for me, we're all three here. What do you think about putting a shelf on? No, there? no, 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 no. We've got to do it properly, like we do with Betty's hot shot, haven't we? We've got to have a shareholders meeting. Is that strictly necessary? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And then you put your suggestions, and then we have a vote. What, do I carry on measuring up then, or what? No. Yes. 
you want a bit more toast? I won't be able to move if you eat any more. Yeah, you will. You need feeding up anyway. Think of the baby. I couldn't, honest. Um, I wouldn't mind having another bath, though. Of course you can have another bath. Don't use all the hot water. Oh, ignore him. Use as much as you like. Thanks. Go on. Oh. You OK? Yeah. It's just the baby kicking. Honest. It's always doing it. I don't think it likes me. <laughs> uh, can I have a feel? Hmm? Why do you call it it? Do you not think of it as a boy or girl? I think of it as one big hassle. Hey, you can feel it. Gary, it's kicking. When are you going for this bath? No. Yeah. Sorry. What are you looking for? There's an exercise book in here somewhere. Here it is. Here it is. Well, what do you want it for? To write the minutes of the meeting. It's going to be a proper job this year, isn't it? Well, I still think it's a daft idea having a shareholders meeting just to decide whether to put a shelf up or not. It's not about the shelf. That's what I've been trying to tell you. It's about who makes the decisions in here. Me and you are Alec Flaming Gilroy. Well, it was you that sold him half at Flaming Business. Half? Yes. There's only one of him. There's two of us. So? So, any time he tries it on, like today, for this instance, we have a shareholders meeting and we outvote him. So we're not having a shelf oh, put up? The shelf is not important. What matters is showing him who's boss. Ah, oh, we have a quorum, I see. We've got a what? These aren't our usual meat pies. No, Ashley Peacock brought them round. You mean they're Fred Elliot's? Well, Maureen says they're cheaper. And he lets us have them on sale or return. I bet he does. One of the perks of going out with a butcher, I suppose. Our Maureen should know better than mixed business with pleasure. I don't approve. What, Fred or his pies? Either. Just these, is it? Please. Not been in for a few days. I don't know how Chris and Kevin have caught without you. Well, I like to leave them to fend for themselves from time to time, you know. Makes them appreciate me all the more. It won't end with pies, you know. It'll be sausages next and then chickens. And before you know it, he'll be behind this counter. That's 2.30, please. There you are. Thank you. And 20 change. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 You were watching her like a hawk. Have you got her down as a shoplifter? Right. Now, about this head of Oh, shelves. hang on. You can't just go on with the agenda. You haven't even decided who's going to write the minutes yet. The minutes? Ah, all has to be above board shareholders' meeting. Saves arguments later, do you see? All right, well, you write the minutes then, Jack. You happy with that, Vera, love? Well, as long as you print it, or else nobody better read it. Right. I'll print it. What's the date yeah. again? It's the 27th, Jack. Shareholders meeting June was it at twenty seventh twenty seventh present here with Jay Vera, do you do you find you get back out bending down, you know, to pick up the glasses? Yes, a matter of fact I do. Listen. It's very nice woodwork. A and it'll blend in beautifully, I'm oh. sure. Right, yes. item one, proposed at a shelf. Jack, do you think we could dot the I's and cross the T's later? Only we're going to have folk hammering at the door. Yeah, it is right. Come on, get on with it. Right. Are we going to put up this header shelf? I'm against the idea. Why? I think it's an unnecessary expense. Let's put the matter to a vote. Oh, voting now, is it? Oh, this is very formal. All in favour of the header shelf above the bar, raise your hand. Well, I think it's a champion idea. Right, that's settled then. Now then, can we get out there and start selling some ale, please? 
I've been a very good girl. I've not been near you all week, so I think I deserve a reward. Oh, I. What have you got in mind? Come round to my house tonight and you'll find out. Not tonight. Oh, you're starting to sound like Napoleon. But you knew it wouldn't be easy when Sally got back. Oh, come round tonight, Kevin. Please. All right. Just for a couple of hours. Are you prepared? Yeah. I was just leaving. I'll um, see you back over the road then. Yeah, OK. I'm not disturbing anything, am I? No, no. He's just talking shop. Yeah, so, uh, so George, what are we talking about then? 500 quid, the lot. What, for cash? Oh, 450 for cash. <laughs> Go on, then. You drive hard bargain. Yeah, you can start on Monday. <laughs> right. Vera, Vera did, did you hear that? Look, it can start on Monday and it'll be 500 quid all in. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. Now, what can I get you to drink? Can I have a double whiskey? Look, come on, face sake. Look lively. You know, I can't believe you siding with the enemy against your own husband. I've done nothing of the sort. You've made a rod for your own back, you know that, oh, don't I you? Oh, well, well. Because you have shown him how to get his own way in future. Divide and rule. You may well get his name over the door now. Oh. Jack, we're running out of port scratchings now. Will I order some more, or shall we convene another shareholders meeting? Hiya. Hiya. Have some salad stuff for lunch. There's enough for two if you fancy. If that's a feeble attempt at bribery, you can forget it. All right, then you can starve. Look, Ange, I know you think I've got it in for Chris, but it, it would never have worked, three of us in a tiny little house like this. I suppose not. It's a recipe for disaster. We'd be at each other's throats all the time. You're absolutely right. Well, as me and you, we're mates. We go back a long way. I'm sure we'll get on like a house on fire. What makes you think I'm staying? Well, are you? Of course not. If Chris goes, I go. Yeah, we're seeing a couple of places tonight, in fact. I see. I have to say, Des, I think it's very sad you couldn't have been a bit more grown up about this. Travel obviously didn't broaden your horizons. I only went to Norfolk. And what do you mean, grown up? Oh, come on, Des. The real reason you want Chris out is because you can't bear to see two people in a happy relationship. I can't bear to see two people in a happy relationship? That's complete rubbish. I admit, I don't happen to like Chris very much. Oh, and you've really given him a chance, haven't you? Well, why should I? It's my house. And you're welcome to it. Hang on. Hang on. Maybe I have been a bit unfair. Sit down a minute. And already the Dolly Tub's proving to be a success, and they don't owe anyone a penny. It's like the old days when they had the laundrettes, yeah. you know, and it was like it. The jury gone work. I've got some good news for you. I found you somewhere to stay. Where? I rang social services this morning. Let me finish. And I told them that I thought it was a disgrace that someone of your age was sleeping rough. And they said if I take you down there this afternoon, they'll try and sort you out. I see. I thought you'd be pleased. They'll only put me in a kid's home. Well, surely any sort of home is better than sleeping rough. Especially for someone in your condition. Can't I stop here? No, that's not possible. I'll be no bother. Zoe, no. It's Judy said I can't. It's not up to Judy, it's up to me. Anyway, she's got enough on her plate looking after me and Scamper. She's not been too clever lately. She looks OK to me. Well, she's not. And having you here is making matters worse. So you can't stop, do you understand? You've got two choices. You either come with me down to the social services and we'll try and sort you out, or you take your sleeping bag down to the precinct and you fend for yourself. Well, what's it going to be? Any joy? They're either too far away or cost a bomb. I don't understand why you got to move out anyway. I mean, you're sharing a room with Angie, aren't you? Yeah, I'll freeze a crowd. Me and Des haven't exactly hit it off. Mm, join the club. There you go, Jim. Ta. Thanks, Tommy. Out there, son. Listen, I think you need your head examining anyway. I'll turn it in. Dad, give it a rest. I'll tell you what, there's this wee girl at the house we're working on. She's absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Fancies a pants off him, so she, she does. Doesn't. She does so. She's been chatting you up all day. She has not been chatting me up. Here, I should know, man. Well, he's been doing your work. Come here. Aye, well, I still say you should ask her out, so I do. I'll give you good money, she'll say yes. Oh, yeah, but I'm not interested, I've told you. 
Oh, see. Would you rather I asked her for you, eh? Is that it? <sighs> Look, Dad, you've done a lot of good things for me since I came out of prison, and I appreciate it. But you don't have to organise my social life for me, you know. Yeah, well, I just think it's about that time, you know, um, that you should uh, have yourself a girlfriend, you know yeah, what I mean? Well, I don't want a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, behave yourself, Stephen, eh? You've been in the big house for a year and you don't want a girlfriend? <laughs> Look, if you're saving yourself for Fiona, you're peeing in the wind, as they say. Oh, what do you know about it? Well, I know she's engaged to a policeman for a start. So what? Loads of people that engage, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, right, she's just playing hard to get, is that it? Well, I know she still fancies me, if that's what you mean. No, she don't. Be of yourself. She does! She's just too proud to admit it. Look, it'll take a long time to get her back, I know it does, but I will. Stephen, she doesn't fancy you, and she hasn't fancied you since you dumped her for Victoria. Look, I was an idiot for marrying Victoria, I know I was. Well, she'll be an idiot if she marries Alan. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, when you were doing a lot of thinking in your cell, shall I tell you what she was doing? She was looking forward, she was getting on with her life, forget her. You don't know what you're talking about. She asked me to have a word with you, Stephen. Well, what do you mean? She's fed up with you hanging around. Matter of fact, the way she puts it, she's starting to get annoyed. She wants it to stop. Where are you going? Got a job to do, no you well. Stick your job. You all set then? Here, take this. What for? To help you get back on your feet. I was thinking, maybe you should leave Jude or not to say thank you. Can't you thank her for me? I could, but it'd be better coming from you after she was nice enough to let you stay. Maybe. Just a few words. Like I said, to say thank you and not to worry about you. That taxi's late. It were ordered half an hour ago. Well, shall I give him another ring for you? Give him another couple of minutes. I see all Elliot pies have gone. Yeah, they've been very popular. Aye. Well, don't you let on to our Maureen. Well, what am I going to say when she asks me? Well, tell her... Tell her someone found a toenail in one and I made you sling the rest of them out. I can't say that. Well, you saw it yourself. But don't blame me when you're wearing a butcher's apron. Oh, there he is now. I'll see you tomorrow, Sally. Yeah, bye, Maud. Bye, love. Bye, hey, Maud. Oh, hello, Bill. <laughs> oh, goodness, it's you, Bill. I've got to talk to somebody. I'm going mad here. Hey, Maud, it doesn't have that effect sometimes. No, it's not Maud, it's me. I'm putting two and two together and I'm coming up with five. I know I am, but I just can't <laughs> seem to stop myself. Hey, slow down. You're going too fast for me. Right, now what's on your mind? You're probably going to laugh when I tell you. Well, try me. <laughs> you know, I told you that me and Kevin had that heart-to-heart -heart last week. Yeah. It was about him and Natalie. Something Rosie said made me think that they might be up to something. I see. Anyway, I confronted Kevin about it. I asked him about it. And what did he say? Well, he denied it, but then he would, wouldn't he? So you don't believe him? Yeah. No. I, I wish. I just wish I knew what to believe. <laughs> you think I'm balmy, don't you? I'm probably going daft. No, 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 I don't, no. But I just find it a bit hard to take in that somebody, like Kevin, could be so stupid. <sighs> yeah, of course he wouldn't. I should put the idea straight out of my head. But that's just what I can't seem to do, Bill. There's definitely something up. He's been funny with me ever since I got back from Scarborough. In what way, like? Well, just not himself. He seems to be working every hour God sends. Yeah, well, that recovery truck that he's just bought, I mean, it's not going to pay for itself sitting on the forecourt, is it? You ought to be happy that he's so busy. I mean, maybe that's why he hasn't been himself lately. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. And you know you were in Scarborough a long time, weren't you? It's going to take a farewell before things get back on the normal footing, innit? <sighs> I feel terrible now. You're right. I should be making more of an effort instead of letting all this get to me. Well, it's easily done. Do you know, I went into the Rovers today and for one minute I thought I saw Natalie's hand on Kevin's. It's my mind playing tricks with me, I know it is. But it's my worst nightmare, Bill. I don't know what I'd do. Well, like I say, I'm sure our Kevin's got more sense. Yeah. 
Uh, can I have a packet of pear brankies, will I be? Yeah, of course you can. I'm yeah. sorry, Bill. Hey, hey, hey speak of the devil. Uh, look, I'm sorry, Sal. I'm going to be late tonight. I've been called out on the way down. There you go, Bill. Thanks. Right, I'll uh, see you. Yeah, see, see you. Dad. It's all right, I don't mind. Yeah, well, you've not heard the best bit. It's in Oldham. Oldham? No wonder I ever see you be doing call out work in Oldham. Well, it's a one off, isn't it? It's a regular. So, what time are you going to be back then? No idea. The car's in a ditch. Probably hit the rush hour traffic on the M62. It's not going to be much before nine o'clock, I don't think. Well, I'll dig out one of my recipe books and I'll cut you something special for your tea. Yeah, don't bother. I want to. Get back as soon as you can, eh? She came looking for sympathy in her bed for the night. She got both and she moved on. But where? She ain't got anywhere else to go. I don't know. I just came in and found a note on the table. Should we phone police? Why? Because she could end up anywhere. Jude, you gave her money. You gave her a bed for the night. That's more than most people do for a complete stranger. Flipping heck. You'd be talking about adopting her next, never mind a child. You're right. It was a daft idea. It just felt like the easy option. I never considered it for one moment. You know why? Why? I won't adopt anybody's child. Not yet. Gary, you're going to have to face up to this one day, you know. Why? There's all sorts of treatments for couples like us. Yeah, but none of them are guaranteed, though. Well, they're all worth a try. I've just been reading in the paper about this couple who were told that we're never going to have kids and have just had twins. I just don't want us to be disappointed, that's all. When all else fails, then we'll try adoption. Not before, eh? Not while we've still got hope. I've got the Gazette and there's about half a dozen places worth looking at. That won't be necessary, will it, Des? Hmm? Um, no, I've changed my mind. You can stay. Both of you. And what's more, Des is going to stop making wisecracks every two minutes, aren't you, Des? Provided there's no frolicking in the communal areas. In fact, we're going to have a house meeting tonight, establish a few ground rules. But first, you're going across the road to buy me a massive bar of chocolate as a thank you. What did you say to him, then? I told you I could wrap him round my little finger, didn't I? <laughs> Don't you believe it. I need the rent, that's all. Right. Just waddling along, you know. Oh, I thought you'd flood the country. Oh, I just went out of town, had a bit of a wander about. You want a beer? Uh, fine, please. Sir. Fine, please. Sir. Sorry. Have I uh, blown my job then? No, I told Willie you want to see your probation officer. Just this once, mind you. Thanks. It's all right. I'm sorry about uh, what I had to say. Sorry the way it came out, you know. Well, oh, I deserved it. Thanks, sir. Cheers. Good luck. So you and Billy get that job finished then? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That's a pity. I want a chance to watch that girl out then. <laughs> what can I get you? This is a very special man. Well, yes, it's true. I have just taken him round every single clothes shop in Manchester and he still wants to marry. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to drink? I'll treat you. Yeah? Not helping Kevin on the breakdown then? No, didn't need the two of us. And even your Kev can find his way to Kitchener Street on his own. Kitchener Street? Yeah. I took the call. Regular customer. He said he was going to Oldham. He wouldn't be back until nine o'clock. Well, maybe the call came in afterwards and uh, he didn't tell me. Or maybe he lied to me. And he's going somewhere after Kitchener Street and he doesn't want me to know where. So, look, there's probably a perfectly simple explanation for this. Yeah. I'm sure there is. And I think we both know what it is. Said he had to go to Oldham. Did she believe you? She believes anything, Sam. 
Good. So, how long have you got? Well, that's all I know. But I can make it later. Is she not bothered? She'll be putting the kids to bed. May as well leave her to it. Well, as long as she's happy. She is. Rosie, take Sophie upstairs. Mom! Do as you're told. Yeah, be a good girl, eh? Do as Mummy says. Come see if I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah, I was worried about I'm you. I'm far from all right. Look, Sally. He's with her now. What? You know. No, no, I don't know. I don't know where he is, Sally. He's with her. And you said nothing. Look, I thought there might be a... I wasn't sure. What else does he have to do? All right, look, he had a fling. But it's finished now. It's all over. It's not. Look, why don't you give him a chance to explain himself, eh? I mean, I might have got the wrong end of the stick. An hour ago, you were telling me there was nothing to worry about. Now he's saying give him a chance to explain. I didn't want to upset you, right? So you let him carry on behind my back? Look, I told him to get shut of her. I told him to sort himself out. And you told me everything was fine. You rang me up and all you said was that he missed me. What else could I have said? You could have said, come on, your husband's having an affair. I couldn't say that. Why not? He could do it. <sighs> Look, Sally. Get away from me. Go away. What are you going to do, love? You can't be on your own. Well, I am on my own, aren't I? Because Kevin's with another woman. Do you want me to have the kids? Do you want me to look after them for a bit? I don't want you anywhere near my kids. Sally, hey. Leave me alone, Belle. Look, if you do change your mind, right, you know where I am. Another three hours, and I'll have to give you back. How much longer would you want me for? Oh, I don't know. I could stay like this forever. Come away with me again. To another hotel? To anywhere. For the weekend. This weekend? No. Next, or the one after. I'll get Sally to take the kids to her mum's. <laughs> She's only just got back. Nobody's that fond of Scarborough. She likes it. She must do. She stayed there long enough. Yeah, I suppose she did. So what do you say? I would go anywhere with you, Kevin. Or I'd stay here. Whatever you like. I just want to spoil you. Try new things. Yeah, Sally permitting. Look, don't worry about Sally. She can't leave a sick woman week after week. Anything could happen. Rosie, are you ready? Will you look after the girls for me? What, you mean now? I've got to go somewhere. I can't, Sally, love, I'm sorry. I won't be long. I'm just off to the pictures with Liz. She's due any minute. Please. Yeah, well, her shift starts at eight. We've got to go to the early <gasps> showing. 
Sally, what's the matter, love? What's wrong? Kevin's seeing somebody. Kevin? I know where they are and I've got to go to them. And I can't take the girls. I don't know who to ask. Yeah, you go. I'll keep them. They'll be fine with me. Thanks. I can't believe it. Got to talk to him. Will you be all right on your own? Do you want me to come with you? No. I don't want the girls to see me like this. You look fine. Don't worry about them. Come on. Can I do anything else for you? No. Rosie, Sophie, um, Deirdre's going to be looking after you because Mummy's got to go somewhere. Yeah, we'll have some fun, eh? Do you want to come and have a look at my new flat? Yeah. Come on, then. Let's go and say goodbye to Mummy. Good luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Watch you nice. Hiya! Are you ready? Uh, yes, but... Wait till I tell you. Oh. <laughs> oh. Who needs a luxury hotel, eh? <laughs> you would. You've been lying underneath a car all day. <sighs> you know what you ought to do, don't you? No. Tell me. Let Chris light under cars. You should stick to repairing breakdowns. <laughs> every afternoon and every <laughs> weekend. <laughs> yeah, there's not that many call-outs. Who's to know? This would for the start. When I got back with an empty truck. Well, tell him you fixed it at the roadside. Mm. Do you think he'd believe me? You're a very good mechanic, Kevin. You've got all the qualifications. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I might try it sometime. You're trying it now. I know. And I'm enjoying it. I could give you a very good recommendation. You know, pass on your name. Don't bother. I'm only interested in working for you. That's what I wanted to hear. Some of the papers are very nosy. Kevin. What? We've got a visitor. Who? How did she know? Get dressed. Put your shirt on. You're not letting her in. I have to. You weren't going to stay the night anyway. She'll go away. She won't. She's seen us. No, don't. You've got no choice, Kevin. Face her. Sal. Listen! 
Don't go, please! Sally! Sally! Sally, don't go! Sally, please, stop it! Yeah! I want to talk She's to her. She's better on her own! I want to explain! Kevin, leave her! What can you do? Kevin! Kevin! They're all right. I've given him some magazines to look at. Magazines? Nothing else. <sighs> what do you think she'll do? Shout and scream. What else is there? Hey. Of all the men in this street, Kevin Webster. Well, you never see it coming. I would look at him. He's a nice fella. Works hard, cares for his family. Loves his wife. I feel sorry for the girls. They won't know what's going on. Well, they'll know something. Rosie will. Why do you think people do it? Oh, you just... You get drawn into it. You don't realise the consequences. Of course you do. You know who you're married to and who you're not. You may believe nobody will know. You, you go to any lengths to keep it secret. So you won't get found out. So nobody will get hurt. You pretend you're protecting your family. From discovering what a liar you are. I never thought Kevin Webster were like that. Well, maybe he's not. Maybe he just wasn't happy with Sally. I mean, you don't know how people are. You get bored, envious. Sometimes it doesn't take much. Anyway, it's their problem. And how is this? We're going to miss the film. Oh, yeah, it starts in 20 minutes. Give her a ring, see if she's back. Sorry. Hear me out. No. I could have told you so. I didn't like doing it behind your back. Oh, you wanted me to watch, did you? You was away, so. I know. I was looking after my mum. She'd had a stroke. I got lonely. <laughs> I should have come home and left her to die. Look, I told you it was missing you. Oh, yes, it's all my fault. You only have me at the weekends. I should have made myself available all day and every day at your convenience like she did. Oh, don't talk stupid. Stupid isn't the word. Stupid doesn't begin to cover it. Look, I fell for it, OK? Yes, OK, Kevin, it's perfectly all right. A man like you can't be expected to do without a woman five days at a time. Oh, sorry, it's sorry. a long stretch. No wonder you fell for her. I asked you to come home and you wouldn't. I couldn't. I was washing and dressing a sick woman. I was feeding her with what bits of food she could eat. You know you were there. You forgot about me. You only thought of her. You're able-bodied. You can see to yourself. I missed you. You liar. I missed you. I worried about you. Whether you were working too hard or not eating properly or if Rosie was playing you up. Didn't think I could cope on me own. Thought it was some little boy who needed taking care of. I thought you were my husband, and I trusted you. And it never entered my head you'd be looking for another woman. I wasn't looking. It just happened. It didn't. Don't take me for a fool. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done it, but... But you enjoyed it. That isn't what I was going to say. No, you were going to tell me another lie. Look, I haven't lied! You told me you were going to Oldham. Instead, you went to Tony Horrocks' house and you got in bed with his mother. We weren't in bed. I saw you! We weren't in bed when you came now. We was just... Pretending? Like Sophie? Playing mothers and fathers? No! Not mothers and fathers! Husbands and wives! What's the difference? I'm stupid. You're going to have to tell me. I will! Husbands and wives put one another first. They don't ignore each other half the time. Ignored you. They don't get bogged down with kids and housework. They're your kids. This is your house. They don't.
don't make you feel guilty. I've never made you feel guilty. You stare me in the face and tell me lies. You're doing it now. Where's the guilt in that? No. I've never looked at another woman before. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you for being so kind and thoughtful. I wasn't interested in anyone. I'm so lucky. Talk sense, Sal. This isn't all me. This isn't all my fault. You're the one who lied. You're the one who brought a total stranger into our home. Yeah. But I've never done it before. But you've done it now! Has she been in our bed? Has she? Yeah. So what? Uh. <sighs> we can't leave it much longer. Well, if she's not back. Well, we're safe, Billsy. Here's the granddad. I don't want to go dragging him around the streets. Well, there's only so much we can do, Deirdre. And if we get a move on, we might still make it. She said she wouldn't be long. Sympathy's all very well, but... But what? Well, Sally wasn't exactly on my side. When? When that maniac broke loose with a shotgun. <laughs> Sally wasn't there. What did she do? She gave me a right mouthful for putting her kids in danger for a start. As if Jerry were aiming the gun at them. A mother will fight for her kids, Liz. You should know that yourself. Maybe that's Sally's problem. She's put kids first. Everybody objected to having an armed criminal in the street. You and I exchanged a few words on the subject, if you remember. I do. Didn't mean to say we weren't still friends. I'm being oversensitive, aren't I? You always were a tender soul. <sighs> That's what Jim used to say. <sighs> Look, we don't know what's gone on between Kevin and Sally, but whatever it is, Sally's reeling from it, and I feel sorry for her. Yeah, I suppose I do too. But I still want to see the film. It comes off at the end of the week. Mm. Let's go to Bill's and... Well, if we can't find somebody to take him, we'll bring him back here and watch a video. Give us the coats. How many times? I don't know. You do, you remember every one. We didn't always come here because I didn't want to. Because of me? Because of Rosie. You had Natalie in this house while Rosie was here. When I had to, yeah. When there were customers in the garage, you mean? When Chris was in the way? When you couldn't wait to get your trousers down. When we couldn't think of anywhere else to take her. Well, didn't you ask the neighbours to take her in? That's what I've had to do. What are you talking about? You don't care about the girls. You haven't even mentioned them. Because I know they're OK. You don't know what I've done with them. You're not bothered. I am. I love my daughters. But you don't love me. I do, Sal, I do. But you want somebody on the side. Are you bored with me? No, Sal. I love you. You don't. You walked on me, you spat on me, you can't stand the sight of me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sal. I won't do it again. I wanted different things too, Kevin. I wanted more than a little house in a back street. I had my dreams. I love you, Sally. But you meant more to me than all of them. I could have done without Rosie and Sophie. I love them, but I'd rather have had you. I'll never see you again. I'll dissolve the partnership. We can move away. Move where you like. I don't want you anymore. I'm not going anywhere, Sal. See, she wants you. Oh, no, Sal. Get out. Go away. Sally. It's what you want. I've just been standing in your way. Why didn't you ever tell me? We can work it out. I'll make it up to you. She's my height. She's my weight. She's got blonde hair. What do you see in her that you don't see in me? I don't know. I could dress well. I could run a business. I'm not stupid. You don't have to hide me behind some kitchen table where nobody ever sees me. I wanted a wife. But you don't want that now. I don't know what I want, Sal. But you don't want this. And this is all we built. This is about as far as we got. It's a nice house. Go away. 
You never were much good with words. You don't need to be your deeds speak for themselves. So who told you? Me dad? Chris? No. Was it Rita? <sighs> Look, I've said I'm sorry, Sal. Does everybody in this street know? Other men do it. Get out! All right, if that's what you want. Rosie, Sophie, come here. Go on to you, Daddy. Having a good look, are you? Rosie, Sophie, come here. Go on. Show's over. Kevin, listen, don't do anything you might regret. Go upstairs and wash your hands. What's happening, eh, with you and Sally? You weren't home last night, were you? Because you were seen this morning coming into work in your van. She says she's finished with me. Well, what did you expect her to do, Kev? Give you the flaming medal? You're gonna have to get down on your knees. You're gonna have to go across there and say, well, whatever it takes to get her back. And by hell, you'll have to believe every flaming word of it. I've been here all day. It's up to her to make a move. Don't give up, Kevin. It's down to you. You're the one that's in the wrong. All right. I've admitted it was out of order. I said I was sorry. But it's not all down to me, is it? She shouldn't have gone away. You are? Oh, don't give me that excuse. You were the one who played away. And what about your kids, Kevin? What about them? Look, Kev. Get across there right now. Yeah? And beg with Sally to give you another chance. She knows where I am. She'll come and tell me if she wants me. I give up. You're a fool, Kev. You're a bloody fool. I'm sorry, Deirdre. Oh, it's all right, love. I just came to see how you are. I see Kevin's at work as usual. Is everything all right? No. He's been there all day as if nothing had happened. He was with her last night. Oh, God. Is Daddy coming over? Is Daddy coming home now? Rosie. Is it coming for his tea? No, go upstairs. Keep an eye on Sophie for me. Yeah, he just rolled up this morning, started work at the garage. He's not been near us. Has he... Uh, has he left you, then? No, I chucked him out. I told him straight he's not wanted. I can't believe you mean that. I do. If he wants her, then that's fine. She's welcome to him. Well, I got a good look at him just now, and he doesn't look to me like a happy man. Why don't you talk to him? I'm not chasing after him. I've been humiliated enough as it is. If he wants us, he'll come to us. But he doesn't. He wants her. Look! He's going to a sea. That's what he wants. I told you, didn't I? No, we're just closing up, as you should be, Maureen. Then I'm taking our Ashley to a golf club for his lesson. His lesson! Then I'll meet you at the restaurant. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Yeah, mmm. Yeah, I do it here. The fresh air will sharpen me appetite. Bye bye. Now then, by rights, we are shut. But for a pretty lady, I can always produce some a choice. <laughs> Is Ashley in? Yeah. I'm Ashley. Hiya. Yeah. I just wondered whether he fancy going out tonight. He can't. I can't. Why can't he? 
because this evening I am giving him his instruction, teaching him the rudiments of the royal and ancient game. Well, I'm already giving him lessons myself. Now then, Miss Bold, no golf lessons, that's got. So that one day, when all this is his, he'll be able to keep the lady of his choice in the best of Weatherfield social circles. It's all your range, you see. But I can see you later, can't you, Uncle Fred? Oh, aye, I've got to date myself. Nine o'clock at Rovers. I suppose you'll have to do, but don't be late. And don't tie yourself out on the golf course. Ah, oh, hell, Ashley. It's a good job you work in this shop. A vegetarian will be no use to her. I don't know why you want to come dragging here. And on an evening shift, I mean... Well, it's part of the job. Anyway, I don't get many evening shifts. Oh, did I tell you? I'm on checkout now. No, brilliant. Come on, Alma. I bet you'd rather be coming to play golf with me. No, I happen to like this job. You just have to find yourself a new partner. Hi, Hi Curly. I have a new partner. Him. What, Curly? Yep, oh. I'm going to be teaching him the game. Well, you see, Eric's always on at me, you know, to start playing golf. And he's quite right. And I will be giving you brilliant lessons. Uh, just in golf, I hope, not personnel management. All part of the wonderful game, sweetheart. Happy till bashing. Kevin, I'm so glad to see you. I've been sat here all day wondering if I was ever going to see you again. Have you? I've been imagining all sorts of things ever since you left this morning. One of them being that you decided not to come back. Oh. Here I am. I nearly got in my car and followed you down to the garage. Yeah, well, it's a good job you didn't. Why, what's going on? Has Sally been making awful scenes? She hasn't been near me all day. Oh. We haven't been near her. Oh, see. So you haven't talked to her at all today, then? Said all I could think of yesterday. She didn't seem too interested. Would you like a beer? I got you some cans in. I mean, I know you would rather drink at the pub. Kevin. It'll be all right. I know it will. Is that what you want? Yeah. All right. Do you want me to carry that? Oh, look at this. What's what you doing? Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Oh. Thank you. Yes. Oh, hello, Audrey. Hi, Sarah. Hello, Louise. Hello. So it's true, then? What? Well, somebody told me you were drudging away in here, but I thought they was having me on. No, no, this is the genuine me that you are seeing. Oh, wow. Well, I'd heard that Mike's new business wasn't doing terribly well, but I hadn't realised it was no, this No, actually, his business is doing quite nicely, thank you. Do you know, you are wonderfully loyal. I've always said that. Well, if you must know, Mike is dead against me doing this job, or any other job for that matter. It's just that, well, I happen to like working. I uh, don't know if you can understand that. <laughs> Frankly, no. I mean, there's not a enough hours in the day as it is without trying to fit a job in as well. <laughs> Actually, I think Alfie prefers me to be a lady of leisure. <sighs> I'm very lucky, I do say. Oh, yes, you are. Wonderfully lucky, Audrey. Yes. I've always said that. Is Sophie's seatbelt fastened properly? Yeah. Right. Is that the lot? Yeah. For now, anyway. Thanks, Deirdre. Is there anything else you want me to do for you, Sally? No. Oh, there is one thing. Could you pop in the cabin for me, if you wouldn't mind, and just cancel our papers? What, you mean you haven't told Rita? She doesn't know what's happening? No, I can't face it. Explaining everything. I don't want any of that. All I want to do is just go. Will you phone me? Yeah. Bye, girls. Take good care of your mum. Listen, Curly Tops, I want to tell you. If you have to make Alma redundant, it won't affect our beautiful friendship. Well, that shouldn't happen. She is very capable. Eric Furman thinks so, and, well, I agree with him. No, you're missing the point, Sunshine. If you have to sack her, I won't be upset, OK? <laughs> well, this is a small world. I said this is a small world. <laughs> Hello, Fred. I didn't see you there. I didn't know you were a golfer. I'm not. Uh, not yet. Michael here has given me a starter list. Well, that is amazing. I'm giving young Ashley here his daughter lesson. <laughs> Steward! 
I think this calls for a drink. Well, cool some more on that. How about a foursome, eh? And uh, a little wager on the side to make it interesting. You and your novice against me and my novice. You're on. Fifty quid too much for you. Oh, yeah, hang on a minute, though. Uh, my handicap's 24. What's yours? Oh, same as yours. I play off 24 as well. I thought you said you was 18, Uncle Flat. No, no, Ashley, don't be stupid. 18's me collar size for them shirts. He doesn't understand the game. I'm not playing for money. You're not? Neither's, neither's Mr. Watt. Good. No, it's just Mr. Marvin and I play for money. 50 quid not too rich for your blood? Nah, it's only money. Ah, ah, that's right. Uh, steward! Listen, Michael, you do realise that I'll be totally useless to you. Don't fret, it's only a game. If we can't beat a couple of butchers, then I'm going to hang my clubs up. I might be hopeless. You will be hopeless. But you'll be more use than Curly Watts. I know him, no eye for a ball, and about as much coordination as a newt in a barrel of bitter. Steward, we want some lubrication down this end. Your father. He was at our house with us. He used to. He doesn't want to anymore. What are you doing? I've come to let you say goodbye. Hey? That's what I'm doing here. You've made your choice and it's not ours and I've come to let you say goodbye to Rosie and Sophie. Go on, God. We're leaving. We're going to Scarborough and we're going to be living at my mum's. You can't do that. Oh, can I not? You can do what you want, can you? But I can't. You don't have any say in what we do anymore, Kevin. Say goodbye to your dad, girl. Bye, Dad. Look, listen. That's it, Kevin. Fred. Just pay attention, lad, and do what I tell you. Right, yeah, but I just thought to remind you. I do have to be back at Rose in time, ain't Maxine? See? Get your mind off trivialities. This is important. There's money at stake. Now you're here to enjoy yourself. Just relax. I hope you're not relying on me to help you win some money. Look, never mind about the money. Now, we're going to take alternate shots, right? Whatever you say. So I'm going to hit the ball up the fairway. When we get to where it is, you hit it. Then me again, all right? I've never even held one of these things before. Oh, you're a natural. I can tell by the way you're holding it. Hmm. Let's get this show on the road, right? Where do I go? Over there. Right. Wow! Good one! Yeah. And when you can hit one as sweet as that, which you will be able to do very soon, you'll be hooked for life. <laughs> Let's go get it. If that fella's got an handicap of 24, my name's Rupert. I expect that's his cap size. Something like this was bound to happen sooner or later. She's upset at losing you, so she's lashing out. Everything's gone wrong. It's all my own fault. You're upsetting yourself because she's hurt. But she'll get over it, Kevin. People do, you know. And what about me? Will I get over it? Yeah, you will. Because I'll make sure you do. Kevin, I know you used to think you could have us both. But you must have known deep down that you'd have to make a choice in the finish. Sally made the choice, not me. No, no, come on. That's not really true, is it? Sally has had to behave as if she chose to leave you, just to, to save her pride. But she's not left you. She's lost you. How come you're such a big expert on the subject, eh? Because I understand how she feels. I've been through this kind of thing myself. No, you don't. No one's ever taken your kids off you. She hasn't taken them completely. She only said that to hurt you. Yeah, she succeeded as well. Yes, but you'll get access to them. All that'll be sorted out in the divorce. Oh, come on, son, hit it. Oh, this is hopeless. No, no, you're improving all the time. Keep at it, keep at it. You've blown it! Ha ha ha! 
Now, this is where we're getting frogged, Ashley. Now, watch this. Watch and learn. You hooked that, Fred? Be in the rough, that. You cracked it here, Curly. See you on the green! <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what I'm doing now, Uncle Fred. Only I don't think I'll be as brilliant as you. That wasn't quite what was intended, Ashley. It was your fault, you moved when I was swinging. Oh, sorry. Did you see where the ball finished up? No, not really. I was studying your swing. Come on. All right, Mrs. Baldwin. Oh, yes, fine. You've not had a break yet, have you? I'll uh. send Sheila to take over this checkout, then you can get a cup of tea. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, by the way, Mrs. Baldwin, it's Alma, isn't it? You don't mind if I call you that. Oh, no, feel, feel free. I feel I ought to tell you I'm very pleased with your performance. I believe in telling people. The good ones deserve it, and so do the bad ones come to that. You're one of the good ones. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Baldwin. Some of the young girls I take on, well, breaks your heart, they know nothing and they care less. But you, you're a... Efficient, you're pleasant, you're well-mannered, and you know how many pence there ought to be in a pound. <laughs> These are all rare qualities nowadays. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. No, no, you deserve it, and I shall be putting your money up to suit. Oh, do you know, it'll give me great pleasure to give my husband that news. Yes, I expect you'll be pleased. Please? He'll be beside himself. The game's slipping away, lad. It's time for brilliant strategy. Found it! Hey? Our ball, it's in this long grass here. It's sort of stuck under a twig. Put it in your pocket and come here. This is our ball. Oh, see, it was there all the time. That's cheating. It's no such thing. It's strategy. This game, lad, it's like life. You can be too nice for your own good. Now grab hold of this club and give it a good belt in that direction. I have to say this, I don't like it. This life, lad, you have to do things you don't like. You think that fella Baldwin is playing by book? Huh? This is self-defence. I said self-defence. Now, like I said, give it a good whack. All this I'm showing you, it's all part of your lesson. What a lovely surprise. I didn't think I'd be seeing you two for ages. It's not a Sally, there's nothing wrong, is there? And girls, go up to the bathroom. I know you're both bursting to go. Oh, Something's happened, I can tell. <laughs> it's awful. Oh, love, come here. <laughs> come here, the girls. Can we stay with you? Well, of course you can, you know that. But tell me, what's happened? It's Kevin. He's got another woman. I've left him. I'm never going back to him. You're not going to make me think that as good as in. Nothing's in until it drops. The old's ours, man. Admit it, old four hours can't, can't get it in from over there. He might, and you might miss. I could never be a bad loser, me. Come on, Curly Top, roll it in. He can't even see the Do old. you mind? A waste of time, if you ask me. Game's ours. Yes! Great shot! This is a brilliant game, Michael. This is a brilliant game. How much I think, Fred? 
Like any it is, I've got a port yet to have the match. Not in my arithmetic. It is in mine. I think this, and we're all square. <coughs> Can I have square dealing? Is that too much to ask? Sorry to tickle through. Hurry up, Uncle Cuffton. I've Keep got me, Maxie. Short, lad, I'm trying to concentrate. Oops. Oh, <laughs> hard luck, mate. Funny old game, innit? 50 quid. Mind you, what's 50 quid? A far sight less than you paid for that putter, I bet. <laughs> Uncle Fred. What? Can we get going? I'll be late for Maxime. That's your bad luck. I'm going to have a couple of stiff drinks before I do out hills. Do you want to lift home, sunshine? Yeah, please, Mr. Barwin. Yeah, but then. Hey! Hey! Aren't you going to take me loose for me, Potter? Traitor! The last free lesson you get off me! Come on, Kevin, have a drink. Things won't seem half so bad. Probably gone straight to her mum's in Scarborough. I bet she's gone back to Coronation Street. No, she hasn't. I've rang. No reply. Probably sat by the phone laughing at you. Have a drink. I don't want a drink! Sorry. I didn't mean to shout. I want my kids, Natalie. Going after her. I think that's a very bad idea. Yeah, well, maybe, but it's what I'm doing. Chasing after it is exactly what she wants. At least leave it till the morning. Kevin! Come on, where are you, you useless thing? Uh, oh, my back. Well, I find you. I'll, 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 I'll fling you. Oh, f ah! There, gotcha! Ah, gotcha! See what you've done. Oh, 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 oh. Hi. Oh, you're all dressed up, I see. Where are you going? Nowhere. I've already been. To this restaurant to meet Fred Elliott. And he didn't turn up. Oh. Well, he, he wouldn't just stand you up. I mean, there must be a good reason. Oh, yes, I know there is. He stood at that bar, that silly old golf club, knocking that drink back. Well, if he thinks that I'm going to sit there and wait all night, he has got another thing coming. <laughs> Help! Help! Oh, dear Lord. Oh! Oh! Oh, I think I've broken my leg. I've, uh, I think I've broken my leg. Oh, Someone! Someone! Help! Hey! 